So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto neglected by family and Mokuten prodigy. Part 3. If you guys enjoy this, what if? Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 21 I miss this bed, Naruto muttered happily as he laid on his large bed and rolled around on top of the covers as he wore his sleepwear. Since returning a few days ago he had been given some time off since he just returned from the Guardians and had been enjoying seeing everyone again. Tsunade, Hiruzen, and Shizune had pretty much locked him down in the Siratobi Manor as they wanted to know everything that happened while he was away and all the new stuff that he learned. Though when they got to how his Mokuten was developing he simply tapped his nose. That is a secret. After that he went to see Mikoto who hugged him near to death, having missed her student greatly, and did the same with him that the others did and pushed him for information. He saw little Rhea who looked exactly like Mikoto. It was frightening. Though Sasuke had seen him once and snorted before walking away towards his compound's training ground. His guest, Itachi's little brother, still had that stick shoved up his ass. Though he was a little bummed out that neither Anko nor Itachi were around. Both were out on missions as was Hana and Yugao. Both girls had advanced in his time away with Hana being a Jonin now. Yugao joined the Anbu and was under Itachi's command. Though when he asked Mikoto where Itachi was Mikoto just giggled into her hand and said he was busy with another personal matter and did not go into any detail. Seeing it was around 11 o'clock and that he had slept in enough for one day, Naruto got up and went to enjoy his breakfast. Cereal or toast? He wondered aloud before going with cereal. With his breakfast in hand he sat down at the table. Just as he was about to take a bite the door slammed open and two figures came barreling in. It took every ounce of willpower he had not to blush because what he was looking at was probably the hottest scene he had ever seen in his life. Anko who had grown a little taller and was definitely more womanly than before, had kicked the door open and was locking lips with none other than Hana Inuzuka, who like Anko had grown taller, was more womanly, and had grown out her hair into a long ponytail that went down her back. Neither girl even noticed he was there sitting at the table, since both were too preoccupied with feeling each other's bodies. Anko threw her tanned coat off before she growled and ripped Hana's top off her body, revealing white tape around her breasts. Anko quickly ripped those off before her hands began fondling Inuzuka's breasts. Hana moaned loudly before she felt Anko twist them around and pushed her onto the table where Anko then bit down on her breasts, making a wave of pleasure hit her. After a moment of playing with Hana's breasts, Anko took her top off and began trailing down her body and was about to pull off her pants when Naruto finally voiced up. What do you know? Breakfast and a show. Both girls stopped completely and snapped their eyes open. They scanned in front of them and saw Naruto looking at them with a smile as he raised a spoonful of cereal at them before eating it. After a moment of not saying anything both girls screamed. One in shock and one in joy. Hana got off the table and quickly wrapped her arms around her breasts, trying to cover herself before grabbing a cushion from the sofa. Anko meanwhile had lunged over the table and pressed herself against her best friend and hugged him tightly. Naruto could feel Anko's wonderful assets practically smacking him in the face. Anko still didn't know how to be subtle. You bastard when did you get back? You don't know how much we've missed you. She said as she leaned out and looked at him with a watery smile. Just a few days ago. I guess you guys were on a mission. Hello by the way, Hana-chan. Hey Naruto, Hana said, chuckling nervously as she scratched the back of her head. If I knew you were coming back I would have stayed. You should have told us, Anko said as she broke the hug but did not get off his lap. Sorry but I wanted it to be a surprise. My family was happy to see me as was Sensei and everyone else. Now I'm just looking for that Ichiha we all know and love. Ah yeah good Ole Itachi, I'm sure you will see him at some point. He's not here much other than to sleep and when he is not at the Anbu station or on patrol, then he would be at the Ichiha compound since he is the heir. Still as stoic as ever? Naruto asked. Of course this is Itachi after all. Though you will be getting a surprise when you see him, she said making him look at her in confusion, but knew Anko was not going to spill the beans. He was wondering what she and his sensei were hiding. So you too huh? Must admit Anko I am not surprised since I saw this coming, but you Hana? I did not know you swayed that way. I didn't until a year ago. Anko got me drunk after a successful mission and we spent the night together. I remembered most of it and I found myself enjoying it. So we hooked up more and more until eventually we just decided to become girlfriends. Hana said as she took Anko's hand into hers making Anko smile at her. It's not a problem is it? She asked as Naruto shook his head. No Hana-chan, it's no problem. I am very happy you two found love with one another. How is your mother taking this relationship anyway? She took it pretty well actually. 
shocked at first as you would expect, but she said as long as one day I can give her a grand pup to spoil by some means, then she is all for it. In fact a lot of my clan are okay with it, as are a lot of the other shinobi, and we have not had many people act hatefully towards us which is very fortunate. The only person who is in pain is my brother Kiba. Naruto snorted. That's probably because you landed a hot piece of ass like Anko where he didn't. He said as Anko grinned and gave them a thumbs up. Damn right. So do you have a girl in your life, Naruto? You must by now. Anko asked as Naruto shook his head. No, not right now. There was a girl or two that caught my eye I guess you could say, but nothing came of them. Naruto lied as Anko shook her head. Well hurry up and get one unless you were hoping to get a go on this again. Anko said as she pointed to her body. Sorry Naruto, but I'm Hana now. I am heartbroken Anko-chan, but I think I will survive. But now it's been great seeing you again, and I am glad you are home, but it's been a week since I last had sex, and I got to get my desires out. Anko said as Hana yelped beside her as Anko picked her up in a fireman's carry before slapping her ass. You might want to leave since we won't be stopping until tomorrow morning, Anko shouted as she ran down the hallway and went into her room. And that is my cue to leave. He said as he quickly finished his breakfast, got a fresh change of clothes and left the apartment just as Hana's moans began to echo through the house. That's it my hebe Haim, put it right there. But Naruto, since he did not have much to do, Naruto made his way towards his parents' house where he knew the twins would currently be. Since the twins both graduated they had a week off from the academy until they had to go back to find out what teams they were going to be. Well both wanted to be with one another Naruto did not think that was a good idea. They both needed to learn to be independent and grow without the other always beside them. He knew that for twins that was a difficult process and a hard one, but it was necessary in the world of being a shinobi. Walking up towards the Namaka's household he could sense that both his parents were out and that Mina was currently at the academy. Mido, IG you guys here. He called out and very quickly and a torpedoed blonde slammed into him. Nai-chan. Mido called happily as she hugged her brother while Laiji came out of the kitchen at a more sedated pace. Well you seem happy to see me. What's the occasion? His sister looked up at him with sparkles in her eyes. Kachan has been teaching me some really cool techniques with the sword you got me. Really? Well that is good. How are these kunai coming along Aiji? He asked as his little brother gave him a thumbs up. Good. Tusan is showing me how to use them in his spare time. I think I am getting the hang of them. That's very good as well. I'm glad you are both using the gifts I gave you. If you are not doing anything, do you two want to go to one of the training grounds with me? I want to see just how far along my cute little brother and sister have come in their shinobi skills. Unless you're scared to battle me that is. He said, taunting them a little and internally grinned when he saw Mido and Aiji get a passionate fire in their eyes. Hell no, we can kick your ass Nai-san. Both twins shouted at him as they raced upstairs to put on their shinobi uniform and gather their equipment. They are too easy. Naruto muttered but smiled all the same. They might have been twins, but you could see how different they could be when you watched them closely. Aiji was the calmer of the two and was more of a thinker just like Minato was. Meanwhile Amido was a little hot-headed but very spirited just like Kashina. Though those two combined and you could have a strong little duo on their hands. Leaning against the wall he waited a few minutes as he listened to Mido and Aiji get ready as both shouted out what to bring with them and what not to forget. It was not very stealthy of them. Since they were both now 13 years old and were among the oldest in their year, since few others were still only 12. Mido and Aiji now had separate rooms. Aiji kept their original room while Mido was given his old room. After a few minutes both twins came barreling down the stairs equipped and ready and proudly wore their new headbands on their heads. Aiji was wearing dark blue pants and black shinobi sandals while wearing a grey mesh top and a whitish grey jacket over it. He had his kunai holder strapped to his right leg that contained his new three-pronged kunai. On the side of his jacket was the Yuzumaki symbol. Mido meanwhile had her long blonde hair tied into a braid while her bangs framed her face. She wore black shinobi sandals with black bottoms along with a dark orange shirt with black outlines with a light mesh shirt underneath. On her back was her new katana along with the Yuzumaki symbol. Orange interesting color. Naruto commented since it was certainly a bold color to go out in. Don't you start too, I like it and that is how it will stay. She pouted and Naruto put his hands up as a sign of surrender. It's fine. It looks very nice. He said as he opened the door and ushered them both out. Nai-chan, won't you need your gear? Aiji said since Naruto was only wearing civilian clothes. Don't worry Aiji, I won't be needing it. He said playfully which only made the twins want to kick his ass even more. As they walked all the civilians smiled as they watched the twins tell Naruto how badly they were going to beat him, while Naruto just let a little grin stay on his face the entire time. Training ground 11. Here we are, this should do nicely. Naruto muttered as he looked around at the spacious field as Mido and Aiji stood a little in front of him. 
No one else was using this training field, so it meant they could use the entire width of it. Now are you both ready for this? Naruto asked as both nodded. Well since you two have just turned genin to make this a bit fairer, I will only use tojutsu and kenjutsu. You two though can use whatever tricks you want, he said as both nodded again. I want you both to treat me like an enemy. If you don't come at me with the intent to kill then you might as well walk home now. He said in all seriousness as both gulped but muttered a small yes. Good, he spoke as he went to his right hand and unsealed a katana neither of the twins had seen before. It had a green handle and a guard with a four-petal design, while the sheath had green on one half and white on the other. I have never seen that one before Nai-chan. Is it new? Nido asked as she looked over the blade with curious eyes. That's right. It was a gift the fire daimyo had made for me just before my time as one of the guardians was up. As a way of thanking me for my service and for protecting his family, he presented me with this katana he had made from Iron Country, just like your weapons and my shusui. I have had some practice with it, but I think it would be better to use now than shusui. Trust me when I say shusui is not a blade you two are ready to go against yet. He said as both gulped. Are you both ready? He asked as both Mido and Iji got in their fighting stances, and Mido flew her sword out while Iji ready to try pronged kunai in his hands. The wind breezed through the field as Naruto stood there with one hand in his pocket while the other was clutching his new blade shigure. He smiled as Mido and Iji narrowed their eyes at him. Begin. Not surprisingly Mido was the first to go forward and came towards him at high genin level speed. She swung her blade down at Naruto who easily side stepped out of the way. She swung at him again, but this time he ducked the slash and stepped out of the way again. The next strike though Naruto spun and went behind Mido and gave her a light whack on the back of the leg with the sheath of shigure. Mido stumbled forward a little when he did. Moments later he sensed Iji coming from behind him with his kunai poised towards him. Naruto easily moved out of the way and grabbed his younger brother's arms before throwing him in the air in the direction he was aiming it. Iji managed to flip in the air and land on his feet. Iji threw a few standard kunai at him, but Naruto easily blocked them with his blade, which at this point was still sheathed. Sensing Mido coming from behind him he jumped into the air, dodging a sword strike before landing next to her, grabbing her shoulder and throwing her over to Iji. Iji now threw a couple of shuriken at Naruto, who simply caught the shuriken in between his fingers. Meanwhile Iji caught his sister in his arms and set her on her feet as Mido huffed out in annoyance and rubbed her shoulder. Together? Iji asked his sister who nodded. Together? Now both twins came at him as they went in and out in a zigzag pattern, obviously trying to confuse him about who was going to strike first. He was not surprised when he saw it was Mido first who again tried to take him down with her blade. Naruto though sent a smirk her way before blocking the strike with the sheath of his blade and twisted her around before he poked her in the back pretty hard with the sheath making her tumble forward again. Grinning at his little sister as she fell to the ground and pouted at him, he quickly saw Iji appear a couple of meters above him, making a few hand signs. Break you. Iji called as a ball of lightning about the size of his fists formed in between his hands. He stabilized quickly before he fired the ball of lightning towards Naruto. Lightning affinity huh Naruto thought since he expected Iji to have either wind or water, but he guessed that was not the case. Iji and Mido grinned thinking they had their older brother, but the look was quickly wiped away when they saw an aura of wind wrap around their brother's katana before he made a single slash towards the ball of lightning. The slash cut the ball in half and caused it to dissipate. As Iji was coming down Naruto appeared in front of him and landed a strike to his gut with the handle of his katana, causing Iji to become winded. Before Naruto could lay another strike on him, Mido appeared behind now with her katana sheathed and about to engage him into jutsu. Alright little sister, show me what you can do. Mido focused on her older brother before she began throwing punches and swift kicks towards him. She aimed for the point that her mother had told would do the most damage, which was the head, stomach and chest areas. However she became increasing frustrated when Naruto either dodged the strikes or caught them, stopped dodging all the time. Mido said getting more and more frustrated without noticing that her strikes were getting slower and sloppier. She was getting so mad that she did not notice Naruto setting up a wire strap around her. Mido pays attention to what he is doing, Iji called since he just noticed what Naruto was doing. What? Mido called in confusion before suddenly she became weightless and was hanging upside down in a tree. As she tried to attack Naruto she did not notice that he had led her over towards a tree and was subtly wrapping a ninja wire trap around it. Oh so that's what you meant. Mido said as she gave a nervous grin as she scratched the back of her head. You need to pay more attention to your surroundings. Naruto said as he poked his sister in the stomach, causing a small giggle to come from her. Mimi. She said as she crossed her arms before her eyes widened when a flurry of shuriken suddenly came out of nowhere and struck Naruto in the back making him fall forward. Ani-chan. Mido called out as she watched her brother fall to the ground as Iji looked a little gobsmacked. He did not think that it was actually going to hit. However before either could do anything Naruto suddenly poofed away revealing that it was just a clone. 
A bunch and they both said, realizing that it was a trick. Yep and you fell for it little brother, Naruto said appearing behind Aiji. His little brother reacted as quickly as he could as his tri-pronged kunai surged towards his brother. However Naruto quickly grabbed his arm and twisted it behind him and pinned him to the ground as he sat on top of him. You did not think it would be that easy did you? He said as he patted his brother's head as Aiji gave him a pout and a small glare. It only made Naruto chuckle more. Not bad for the first round. Naruto said as he got up, freeing Aiji and throwing a kunai towards where Mito was strung up. The wire snapped and Mito fell comically to the ground, making her yelp. Ani-chan. Mito shouted angrily as she glared at him as a bump appeared on her head. The Ka-chan flows strongly in this one. Naruto muttered, making Aiji laugh and Mito to glare at him more. Aiji quickly went back over to his sister as they tried to formulate some kind of plan against their brother. Well at least they have teamwork down he thought as he began unsheathing Shigure and revealing to Aiji and Mito the cold hard steel of his blade. Right you too. Since round one is over, let's go on to round two, he said as both Mito and Aiji gulped as they readied themselves. An hour later, I can't feel my legs. Aiji called out as he lay on the ground beside Mito looking exhausted with a few bruises and cuts covering his body and with a few tear marks in his clothes. Mito was in a similar state. Despite being Uzumaki's and having amazing stamina their brother was too much like their Kachan when they trained with her. Earthless. They looked up to see Naruto looking the same as he did earlier, not even looking winded and without a scratch on him as he grinned down at the twins. We hate you. They both said as Naruto laughed. Well, I love you guys too. He chirped as sat down right in between them and placed his hands on their heads. They watched as Naruto activated the Shosen and began healing them. Both felt a lot better than they did moments ago. So how did we do? Mito asked nervously as Naruto looked at her critically before smiling. You two did pretty good actually. You lasted longer than I thought you would and your skills are definitely up to genin level. You both have a decent sized arsenal for ones your age and while you're tojutsu and could use some work, I think you two are well on your way to being great shinobi, he said, making both of them smile at him for the praise. But I do have some advice for you. Aiji tries not to overthink every situation. If your gut is telling you to do something then most times it's right. Sometimes you need to take risks instead of always playing it safe. He said as Aiji nodded since Kashina had told him the same thing some time before. Mito you need to work on that temper of yours. The more frustrated you get the slower and sloppier your moves get. Try and stay calm even if someone is taunting you. He said as he flicked her nose before the girl smiled up at him. After a few minutes Naruto stopped the Shosen and both twins stood up. They still felt exhausted and could not wait to just go to bed and rest, but they looked fine now, so he would not get chewed out by Kashina. You guys want me to walk you both home? He asked, but both shook their heads saying they knew the way and that it would not take long. After saying their goodbyes and a few hugs Aiji and Mito left the area and headed home. As Naruto watched them go and saw them disappear from sight Naruto turned around. You can come out now. He felt a fast approaching familiar signature heading straight towards him. Gripping his blade tightly, Naruto spun around and intercepted the person as a tanto struck forward. Shigure lay in between them as it blocked the strike. The person was an Anbu with a raven mask and long black hair that was tied into a thick ponytail behind him. It was not difficult for Naruto to figure out who it was. Nice to see you have not got sloppy while I was away. Itachi. The same could be said for you. Naruto. Spoke in his usual monotone voice, though there was an edge of happiness to it at seeing his longtime friend. Unlocking weapons Itachi took his mask off and an older Itachi was looking back at him. The only difference was the tear-shaped marks on his face were a little deeper than before. The two smiled and hugged one another. I heard you have been back for a few days. I saw Kasen a few hours ago and she told me about your return. Yeah, Makoto-sensei was one of the first I went to see too. Little Rhea has grown up well. She looks just like sensei. He said as Itachi nodded happily. Rhea-chan has grown up beautifully just like Kasen. I am afraid I may end up beating away boys with a stick. Itachi said as he did not like the fact that boys would gain interest in her in a few years. Ah don't worry. I'm sure Rhea will be tough enough to keep them away. Besides I am the one with two sisters here, both of which are going to be beautiful as well. Two sticks will be required. Though, I see little Sasuke's mood has not changed. Itachi just sighed as he shook his head about his little brother. I don't know what to do with him. He has clearly taken after my father more than my mother and his obsession with one day defeating me and taking over as clan head has become his life goal now. He says that the Achiha need to be feared and everyone must bow down to us like we are royalty. He has been getting out of hand lately. How is he towards Rhea? Naruto asks since he remembers before he left Sasuke was very hostile towards his younger sister. It's not too bad now since Rhea mostly stays away from him or myself and Ka-san is close which stops him from trying anything hostile towards her. 
he rarely speaks to anyone and doesn't have many friends due to isolating himself. Though from the few conversations I have had with Aiji, Sasuke may have a bit of an obsession with Mido. You don't say, Naruto as his eyes narrowed as Itachi nodded a little reluctantly. Aiji has told me that he stares at her a lot in class as well as out of the academy. At home Sasuke mumbles about needing a strong wife and children one day and about marriage contracts. I think he has Mido in mind as a future spouse. No offense here Itachi, but if the only reason Sasuke wants to marry a girl, especially my little sister, is because he only wants a strong wife and someone to pop out children for him, then he and I are going to have a problem. Yes I know I will make sure he knows those are not good reasons to go into a marriage. Ka-san is too soft with him sometimes, since she still wants to think he is just her little baby. But someone needs to be tough with him. If he steps out of line again then I may have to be the one to push him back. Makes sense, Naruto said as they walked beside one another as they chatted about what they had been up to, and the topic of Danzo came up briefly. While the old warhawk had not tried anything yet, Itachi had been keeping a very close eye on him, and the minute he slipped up he would act. Itachi Ichiha where have you been? A loud voice called and Naruto saw to his surprise Itachi go a little pale and gulp. Naruto turned around as did Itachi a little reluctantly to see a young woman standing behind them. She was a fair-skinned girl around average height with green eyes and waist-length black hair and a heim style cut tight in a high ponytail with short bangs and chin-length strands framing her face. She was wearing regular clothing with dark grey pants and a light green shirt that matched her eyes. Though Naruto could tell she was a shinobi by the way she held herself. Okami, how did she find me? Itachi whispered. I have been looking for you everywhere. Stop running off all the time. You and I are taking Rhea to the park remember, and then we are getting ice cream. She said, closing the gap between them and to Naruto's complete shock, she grabbed Itachi by the collar and kissed him. Naruto almost dropped to the ground in surprise. He watched Itachi kiss back a little before they broke apart. Itachi turned to look at his friend who was looking at them with a WTF face. Who the hell was that and who is this? Naruto asked as he wondered if this was what Makoto and Anko had both meant earlier. Naruto allowed me to introduce you to Shizuka, my. His fiancé and future wife. Shizuka said proudly as she stuck out her hand to greet Naruto who shook back in a daze as he just looked at Itachi, who had a tinge of red on his cheeks. After a few seconds of silence Naruto quickly broke as laughter came out of his mouth and he fell to the ground laughing and pointing at his friend. The emotionless Itachi Ichiha who always said he would not get a girlfriend until he was 25 is now engaged at 18, Naruto laughed as he struggled to breath. Shizuka raised an eyebrow while Itachi gained a tick mark on his head. Shut up Naruto. Itachi shouted which only made Naruto laugh more. Grumbling about blonde-haired Bak as Itachi grabbed Shizuka's hand and the two walked away as Naruto chased after them after he finally stopped laughing so he could get the whole story. That evening, walking towards his apartment and hoping Hana and Anko had finally stopped their lovemaking, Naruto mused over his day and could not help but smile at his friend Itachi. The story went that Itachi was out on a mission six months ago and he came across Shizuka who challenged him to a battle. Itachi tried to get away, but Shizuka left him with little choice. They fought and Itachi won. It was only afterwards that Shizuka dropped the bombshell on his that she was from the Natashiko village. Since Itachi defeated her, their law depicted that Itachi had to marry her. Not knowing what to do, he went back to Konoha with her to get this sorted out. He went to Makoto who immediately began questioning the girl, but to his annoyance an hour later, Shizuka and Makoto were laughing and drinking tea with one another, with Makoto telling him to marry this girl right now. Not only that but even Rhea and the other Ichihas that remained like the girl, since she was very spirited and could lay down the law. Seeing no way out of it, Itachi came up with a compromise. Since they were too young in his mind to get married, he said that he and Shizuka would be in a relationship with one another for at least a year to get to know one another and to see if that spark was there. Shizuka was skeptical but went along with it, after months despite Shizuka being a very confrontational kind of woman, Itachi began having budding feelings for her and vice versa. Naruto was happy for his friend for finding love in the most unlikely places or situations. Plus he liked Shizuka. She was very bubbly though could be a little clingy to Itachi. She was a strong Kanoichi and was a jonin in her own right. Plus apparently his father and the village were okay with it since it meant the heir of the Ichiha found his future wife and the relationship would improve relations between Kanoha and the Natashiko village. All in all he thought it would be a good fit since with every strong man was an equally strong woman to keep him in line. His own parents were aware of that. Speaking of his father, he could sense his father was still in the Hokage office. Since it was unlike him to be there this late, Naruto Shunshin and arrived in the Hokage office. He found Minato sitting at his desk as he had a roster of Jonin and the new Genin in his hands. Minato looked up and smiled at his eldest. Hey Naruto, what are you doing here so late? I was actually going to ask you the same thing. Minato held up the two rosters. 
I'm trying to finalize the new teams for the Genin. Something just does not sit right with me about them. Naruto curled an eyebrow up. You want some help? He asked as Minato looked at him in surprise before nodding. Pulling up a chair he looked the team over. The first half were the civilian born who he knew would most likely not be passing the Genin secondary exam. With the amount of clan heirs there were this year he knew the council would be pushing for them to pass. He looked them over and stopped when he saw his mother's name. He showed it to his father who just sighed. Your mother was very adamant about this. She said with the whole masked man being out there, Nido needs to be safe at all times. She wants to be the twin Jonin sensei for that sake. And what do you think? I'm not against the idea, but putting them both on the same team would make it look like we are playing favorites. Your mother is one of the strongest Kanoichi in the village, rivaled only by Tsunade and Makoto. Naruto bit his lip as he looked them over. He guessed he could see the logic in that, but again he did not think the twins always had to be with one another. They needed to learn how to act separately rather than always being together. And I make suggestions. He said as Minato nodded. By all means do, it would be nice to get a second opinion on this. Then I think you should split the twins up. He said as Minato looked a little surprised. They might be twins, but their fighting is much different. IG is a more technical fighter, while Mido is a head on close combat type. Mido is a mix of a brawled and Kachan style, while IG is like a mix between you and Kakashi. This is what I think you should do. He said as he began mixing some of the names around on the roster. For about an hour, Naruto and Minato sat discussing the teams as well as mixing them around. All from whether or not the second gen Ino Shikacho trio was a good idea and who they thought could survive Kashina, which made them both laugh. They were both so into what they were doing that neither noticed Kashina peeking through the door and laughing and gaze adoringly as her husband and eldest bonded before she quietly sneaked off back home. Chapter 22 Student BS Teacher Do you both have everything you need for this morning? Naruto asked Mito and Aiji as he enjoyed his breakfast round at his parents' house. It was not often that he ate breakfast at his parents' house anymore, despite Kashina always telling him to be over every day. The twins looked ready to burst into hysterics as both nodded eagerly, Nido especially, and could barely contain her excitement. Next to him Mina ate her toast as she listened to her older brother and sister talk about all the cool things they were going to know that they were shinobi, while Naruto just laughed at how the twins thought they were going to go out saving princesses. They are going to be heartbroken Naruto thought, since all genin had to submit to the torturous D ranks. It was like a coming of age requirement, especially that Hellcat tour. Naruto shudders at the thought of that cat. Are you sure you both have everything? It would not be wise to leave anything behind, especially on team assignment day, Kashina prodded repeating Naruto's question as she fraught back a smirk. Only a few people were aware that Kashina was taking another team, and Naruto wondered how Mito would take it. Since they were similar in fighting styles Mito would thrive under their mother's tutelage, since now that she was a genin. She could really learn the good stuff now. We have everything Kachan, the twins both said in unison, though it sounded like they were more annoyed since Kashina had asked them three times already. I'm just making sure it sinks in. I want my babies to be prepared for what's to come, she said as stood behind the twins and kissed the tops of their heads, making them both pout. We are not babies anymore Kachan, they said in unison, again making Kashina laugh and Naruto and Mina smile. You are always going to be my babies no matter how old you get, she said, stroking the tops of their heads, making their posts disappear as soft smiles now graced their faces. It's almost 11. You two better get going. Remember to be nice to your teammates, do not complain about who you are with, and do not disobey your sensei's orders, understand. Naruto told them as both nodded and quickly hopped out of their chairs. Both wore their uniforms from their day sparring with Naruto and had their gifts from him strapped to their bodies while they had their headbands worn proudly on their foreheads. At going munchkins, he said as they both hugged him from his seat before going over to Mina, who gave them both sloppy good luck kisses. Then after their hug with Kashina who held them both in a hug for nearly half a minute, they both went towards the front door and left the house. They grow up way too fast, Kashina muttered since three of her four babies were now shinobi. She turned to look at her youngest. Don't grow up too quickly Mina-chan, she asked as Mina giggled and kissed her mother's nose. Okay Ka-chan, Mina said, making Kashina laugh and began to gush over her youngest before she sent her upstairs to wash. Leaving just her and Naruto in the room she began making her own breakfast, since she didn't need to be at the Hokage's office until 11.30, giving her a bit of time with her eldest. She sat down just off to the side of him and watched as he finished his breakfast and pulled out a little pocket book from his pocket. He pulled out a brush and began writing and drawing in it. Kashina bit into her toasts and leaned over. What are you doing sweetie? You look like you're concentrating hard, she said trying to look at the page. Naruto chuckled. It's a little ceiling book. It just has stuff on ceiling and ideas of potential ceiling I come up with. I'm currently working on one at the moment and hopefully it will prove to be a success. He now had his mother's full attention. Anything to do with her attention was yours. 
what's the idea? Let me see, she said trying to look at the page though Naruto kept moving it out of the way. Kishina pouted and started climbing over her son to try and get to the book. Just to annoy her some more, Naruto stood up and put the book above his head. Since his mother was not very tall, she immediately growled in annoyance before she took a few steps back and used the chair to vault herself. She slammed into Naruto and as she went down grabbed the book. Aha, she said in triumph, and quickly began looking at what he was currently working on, while Naruto pouted beside her. No fair kach and, he said while Kishina stuck her tongue out at him. As he sat back up Kishina's eyes began gliding over the page. It was piquing her interest more and more, since she saw that the current seal design had traits of a trap seal, along with an attack, defense and sensing seal incorporated into it. She tried to figure out what it was but she was coming up blank. What is this exactly? She asked since she was very curious over it. Naruto who finally sat up scratched the back of his head. Well I know that for a Kanoichi one of the worst traumas is rape while out on a mission. So lately I have been trying to develop an anti-rape seal, he said as Kashina looked at him in surprise. Rape was the fear of every Kanoichi all over the world. Having it taken from them by four stayed with them for life, and Kashina knew many past Kanoichi that unfortunately had that unfortunate experience. It caused some to quit while others took their lives from the shame of it. It works like this, he said as he took the book from Kashina. The seal has chakra poured into it and is then marked over the woman's virginal area. If an enemy shinobi tried to enter her forcefully then the seal would pick it up. With the sensing seal incorporated into it, it can sense whether they have good or bad intentions. If they have bad intentions then the attack and defense seal part of it will activate. The defense will create a thin layer of chakra to protect her womanhood, while the attack seal sends out a sharp pulse of chakra, which should in theory dismember him of his manhood, Naruto said as Kashina looked at her soon in amazement. Her looks went from Naruto to the seal then back to Naruto. This. This seal could be revolutionary for Kinoichi everywhere. This could change everything for us as she thought. How did no one think of this before? The concept is so simple and with the right skills and it could be very possible. She had to tell Minato about this later since he would be feeling the exact same thing towards him. What do you think? He asked as Kashina gave him a proud look. This. Naruto is incredible. You could potentially have a seal that protects women everywhere. This seal is simply incredible, and it shows how far you have progressed. What level are you at because this work is as good as it gets? Naruto blushed a little at the compliment but answered her question. I'm halfway through level 8, he said, and once again Kashina was gobsmacked. Level 8. I only reached level 8 by the time I was 20. At this rate he is going to surpass both Minato and I when it comes to, she thought as the proud look on her face just grew even more. What else do you have in here? I would like to hear some more of your ideas, Kishina said as Naruto smiled at her and huddled closer as they went through the book. Hour later, Naruto walked down the path and wore his shinobi gear as he walked towards the Chunin exam arena. He had gotten a letter from Harizen just after he left his parents' home, telling him to come to the Chunin stadium at this time and to not be late. His interest peaked and Naruto was curious about what his Jiji wanted. He spent a good 20 minutes with his mother talking and he could see she was deeply impressed with his work and his ideas. She gave him some advice with a few of them and told him a few variant seals that would work better to create other seals, something he listened to closely. When it came to seals, his mother surpassed even his father in that regard. She was a true Yuzumaki when it came to the only person who could surpass her was Mito Yuzumaki, the Shadame wife. She told him that if he ever needed help, then he was always welcome to ask her for either help or to run ideas by her. Coming up with new things was like porn for an Yuzumaki. She is probably at the Hokage office right now getting ready to welcome her new team Naruto thought, since Kashina looked quite excited at the prospect of having a second team. Though internally she was doing it to gloat that she had more teams than Makoto. Their rivalry was never going to end. Approaching the stadium Naruto went on inside through the open doors which the guests were left open just for him and began walking up the stairs towards the setting area. Once he entered he saw the giant field in the center of the stadium. It looked just like the training grounds and had a rocky terrain with trees, grass and a pool of water in it, making it an ideal training location. Though he stopped in his spot and could not help but let a grin appear on his face when he looked down at the center of the field. Standing dead center in the field was the Sandema Hokage Hiruzen Siratobi, decked out in his full battle gear with a concentrated look on his face. Despite his age the man was intimidating as ever and Naruto could feel the power that radiated for him. He jumped from the stadium and landed a few meters in front of Hiruzen. I take it you want that spar we promised one another now. Naruto said as it was now Hiruzen's turn to smirk. It is. I want to see just how far you have come in these three years of Naruto. I have been eagerly waiting for the moment to take you on one on one like this and I don't plan on taking it easy on you like I did when you were younger. Naruto's grin stayed on his face as he took off his jacket and threw it to the side, revealing his muscled and powerful arms. 
Giji I would not have it any other way, he said as Naruto and Hiruzen began doing a few stretches. Are both warriors ready? A loud voice called out as Naruto looked over to see Tsunade standing in the cage box with a grin on her face. She had wanted to see this match for a long time as well and hoped she would get her turn against her student in due time as well. Naruto gave her a nod and thumbs up which Hiruzen gave her as well. In that case get ready, she said as Naruto and Hiruzen both got in their tojutsu stances and both now had a focused look on their faces as they examined each other's stances. From up top on the stands two Izumo and Katetsu who were currently off duty saw the doors to the stadium open and went to check it out. They saw Sandame Hokage and the son of the Yandame about to square off with the slug Sanin being the proctor of the match. They both had one thing in their minds. We need to tell everyone, they said before making a few clones each and began spreading the word of this to the entire village. I think we are going to have company, Naruto said as he quickly took a few kunai with barrier tags stuck to the bottom and set them around the arena. A thick blue barrier erected around the field to try and keep damage and attacks contained as best as they could. Once up, Naruto turned back to look at Hiruzen. After a few calm and silent moments Tsunade's voice sounded out. Again. Both Hiruzen and Naruto shot off from their spots at extreme speed and slammed their fists against one another, making a strong shockwave suddenly hit the area as the teacher and student began to battle. Academy, Mido Yuzumaki Namika sat proudly as she sat beside her best friend Ino Yamanaka and had her blade from Naruto resting in her lap. The two chatted about trivial things and listened as Ino began saying who she would like to be team-wise and hoping they were not complete bakas. But she noticed her friend kept glancing over towards her brother. It was no secret, at least to Mido anyway, that Ino had a big crush on her twin Aiji, who was unfortunately as dense as their father when it came to seeing that a girl liked him. She looked around the room to see her other peer members. Shikamaru Nara was sleeping, and Choji Akamichi who was eating chips, were beside one another as usual, since it was rare to see one without the other. Just in front of them was her brother who sat with Kiba Inuzuka and his puppy Akamaru who rested on top of his head. Shino Aburam, the ever-quiet member of class, sat at the back with the shy Hinata Hayuga beside him. Then in front of them was Yukumo Kurama who was a nice girl, but she did not know her much and a pale boy she did not recognize. Then glancing at the table in front of her twins was where Sasuke Ichiha and Sakura Hirono sat with said girl trying to get the Ichiha's attention. Sakura Hirono was Sasuke Ichiha's number one fangirl, and she got on Mito's nerves. They used to be friends before Sakura went all fangirl. She really did wonder how on earth she managed to pass. Then there was Sasuke Ichiha. The boy was always broody and constantly miserable in Mito's eyes and caused her friendship with him from when they were younger to deteriorate completely. Now he enjoyed letting people know he was stronger than they were and that everyone should bow down to him due to being from the Ichiha clan. He was nothing like Itachi who Mito liked since she had known him ever since she was little and was always nice to her. But she stayed away from Sasuke since the look he gave her sometimes freaked her out. It was like he was going to walk over to her and drag her away with him and have his way with her. While well, she could hold her own perfectly, the way he looked at her made her feel uneasy. As she shook her head Aruka walked in and everyone's attention focused on him. They listened in boredom for a good 20 minutes until eventually Aruka got to the part they had all been waiting for. Now for the teams, he announced as everyone suddenly sat up straighter as Aruka began calling out everyone's names. After a few minutes of announcing the first six teams, he got to the main group. Team 7 will be Iji Namikas, Sakura Hirono and Sasuke Cha. Your Jonin sensei is Kakashi Haddock, he called Sakura whooped loudly at being on her crush's team, while Sasuke just grunted. Iji meanwhile groaned at the thought of being with the emo and the fangirl. Kiba patted him on the back. Well at least it's with Kakashi, Iji thought since he guessed that was not so bad. Though he and Mito were surprised they were not together, he guessed he could deal with it. The mate will be Shino Aburam, Yakumu Kurama and Hinata Hayuga. Your Jonin sensei is Kurana Yuhi. Said three genin looked at one another and nodded, being happy with the outcome. Team 10 will be Ino Yamanaka, Choji Akamichi and Kiba Inuzuka. Your Jonin sensei will be Asuma Suratobi. Ino quickly cried out in horror since she was stuck in her mind with the fatty and the kid with fleas. Choji didn't mind and gave a thumbs up to Kiba who happily gave one back. Team 9 is still operational, he said before getting to his last team. The final team is Team 11 consisting of Mido Namikas, Shikamaru Nara and Sai. Your Jonin sensei is Kashina Yuzumaki. Both Mido and Aiji had their jaws dropped. Why Kachan Mido's my sensei? The twins thought both clearly surprised as was the rest of the class. They all knew the twins' mother was one of the best in the village that was on par with the Sanin. Sasuke seed the little, both at not getting such a powerful teacher and not being on Mido's team. Mido meanwhile looked around the room at her two teammates. Chikamaru I can work with though the lazy ass is going to need a push every five minutes she thought, since she knew how lazy Nara could be. But she was a little stumped at the pale kid with a smile on his face. 
As they chatted amongst one another they all saw another come into the room and whisper into Rick's ear. Everyone's attention was on them since they saw Aruka's look of disbelief on his face. Right now in the stadium? Aruka asked as he nodded vigorously. Aruka sensei what's happening in the stadium? Hino asked as everyone's attention was peaking. Aruka turned to them looking a little conflicted, but beside him tapped him on the shoulder. Come on Aruka, when are they going to see a battle like this again? It might do them some good to see it, he said before he left the room. Aruka saw the eager faces on their faces and spoke up. I just got word that the Sandei Mahokage is in a sparring battle in the stadium with the Hokage's eldest child, and it seems to be getting quite heavy. Many shinobi are going to watch. Since you're all genin now, maybe it would be good for you all to see this battle, Aruka said, and saw Mito and Aiji look at him in disbelief, before they got excited looks on their faces and jumped out of their seats and ran out the room. Quickly everyone else ran out of the room after the twins. Okage's office, unknown to the genin Thehokage and many of the jonins, had been watching their reactions to the team assignments. Kishina got a little annoyed that only Mito was given to her, but after hearing the reasoning she understood while the others were happy with their charges. But they also heard Aruka's announcement and looked out the window to see many shinobi and civilians heading towards the stadium. The Sandane was taking on Thehokage's eldest. Kishina and Minato looked a little gobsmacked while Asuma whistled, clearly none of them saw it coming. Well I don't know about all of you, but I want to see this. I want to see how strong little Neru-chan has become, Kurinai said, since she always had a soft spot for the blonde and was the first to leave quickly followed by Asuma and all the other jonin. Ishina and Minato took a moment to process what they heard before Minato flashed them both out of the room and towards the Chunin Stadium. Chunin Stadium, Hain. Gariuka no Jutsu. Suiten. Hidoro Panpu. A huge blast of fire and water shot out of the mouths of Naruto and Hiruzen and collided into one another as the air rank techniques fought for dominance over one another and steam began to pour into the air. The stadium got very warm all of a sudden from the attack. From the steam Hiruzen jumped forward with his adamantine staff in hand, having summoned it moments earlier and twirled it around in his hands. Naruto watched the staff come down and dress Shigyu from its sheath and stop the powerful weapon where it was, though he felt the attack in full force as his shoulder buckled a little. Naruto tried a leg sweep, but Hiruzen saw it coming and quickly dodged the attack. Seeing Hiruzen in midair Naruto quickly made more hand signs. Futen. To Tapa, he shouted and blasted a strong burst of wind at Hiruzen which slammed into the old Okage and slammed him into the ground. However the previous Okage burst into smoke. The clone Naruto thought as did many others as Naruto began looking around. He is not to my right, left, front or behind. No way would he try the air after that attack which leaves one place. Takra swirled around Naruto's right fist before he slammed his fist to the ground, causing a shock wave to hit the ground and making the earth all around him to explode upwards, as well as causing cracks to form along the walls and barrier. From the left of him Hiruzen was forced out of the ground from the attack, but again he disappeared in smoke. Naruto was about to look right before a strong impact from the adamantine staff slammed into his head and threw him across the field and through a tree. Naruto shook his head as he felt his brain rattle from that one and saw Hiruzen standing where he was previously standing you into a piece of rubble. He said as Hiruzen nodded, making Naruto chuckle. After three years you're still taking me to school. Hiruzen smiled and they both saw the stadium fill up with shinobi and citizens. Naruto saw the twins with their classmates with the twins having stars in their eyes watching their brother battle. Up in the cage box he saw his parents with Kakashi, the elders and some of the clan heads. Since we have an audience, let's take this up a notch, he said as Hiruzen nodded eagerly, as Naruto lifted his sleeves up to reveal weight seals around his wrists and on his ankles. I, he said as they broke and immediately felt a lot lighter and cracked his neck. Let's go Jiji, he said as both Naruto and Hiruzen leaned back before they sped toward each other at speeds that only the strongest jonin, clan heads and cage level shinobi could follow. They watched as loud slams and felt shock waves hit the arena as they tried to follow Naruto and Hiruzen's movements. After a minute they saw Naruto and Hiruzen appear on top of the wall by the edge of one of the barriers and watched as Naruto slammed right fist into Hiruzen's face and Hiruzen slammed his left fist into Naruto's. They stepped back and then both did a high kick connected with one another and caused the one beneath them to completely collapse. For the next 10 minutes everyone leaned forward in awe as they watched the Sandeima Hokage and the eldest of the Yandane duke it out with one another as they threw fist after fist, swing after swing and after it one another. His parents were barely able to comprehend what was happening. They knew he must have gotten stronger, but to such a degree was just incredible. Tsunade grinned meanwhile, knowing she helped create this fine shinobi in front of her. In the stands the genin were all in awe as were they and many of the jonin and all the civilians. Mito and Aiji could stay in their seats since watching their big brother fight such a powerful shinobi was the most awesome sight they had ever seen. Neru-chan is incredible, Kishina whispered in awe as Mikoto stood next to her in a similar state. 
Minato was lost for words as was Tsunade before Minato put his hand in pocket and pulled out a bingo book and began looking for Naruto's page. When he did his eyes almost rolled out of their sockets. He handed it over to Kashina who had Tsunade and Makoto look over her shoulders. They read the page in front of them and looked ready to faint completely. Name? Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Age? 18. Gender? Male. Origin? Kanahagakur. Shinobi rank? Jonin. Halibur rank? S. Known alias? Kanoha no Tsubasa Akuma, Kanoha's Blade Devil, known clan affiliation. Yuzumaki clan, known element affinities. Fuitan, Doten, Suitan. Skill list, Ninjutsu. 4.5, Ninjutsu. 4.5, Ninjutsu. 1, Intelligence. 4.5, Strength. 4.5, Speed. 5, Stamina. 5, Hand Seals. 4, Weapons. Katana made of black metal with a purple guard and black sheath. Katana with a flower-shaped guard with a white and green sheath. Physical description. Stands at 6'3 and weighs 205 pounds. Golden blonde hair and violet eyes. Tan skin and is known to wear traditional leaf shinobi attire with a red scarf and red cloak with black flames. Special abilities. Known to have chakra sensor-like abilities. Despite age he has enough chakra for two cages. Known family. Minato Namikas, Yindama Hokage Kairoi Senku, Kishina Yuzumaki, Benahem. Other information is known to have defeated and killed seven swordsman members Raiga Kurosuki and Kushimaru Kuraiar, as well as Yukichi of Kiri and Gari of Explosion Release. Bounty. 65 million Ryo dead or live stationed by Iwa. 65 million Ryo live stationed by Odo. 60 million Ryo dead or live stationed by Kiri. Not only was Kashina, Swanade and Makoto reading it, but many of the clan heads and the elders were reading the bingo books they kept on them and began to realize just how much potential and how powerful this young man really was. He could be a real benefit to this village, Inoichi stated as Shikaku Nara and Choza Akamichi all nodded in agreement. His strength is indeed impressive. He would make a fine tool for this village, Hamura said, but did not see the glare from Kashina for the tool reference. As they fought in the air both landed a strong kick to one another, making them both fall towards the ground. How strong is this Hiruzen? Enma complained to his summoner though Hiruzen did not answer. He was enjoying the battle too much. Naruto barely touched the ground before he pushed himself back into the air, and with his hand on Shigyur and his other hand on his wrist, he swung down. Hear you. Keen, he called as he slashed down with so much force that a powerful slash of chakra rocket from the blade and towards Hiruzen. Oten. Dorakeki. Pain. Karyu no Jutsu. Hiruzen performed the two in rapid concession as a large boulder of earth formed from the earth to try and block the strike, while from behind it, a large dragon head made a fire shot over it and towards Naruto. The strike destroyed the wall of earth, showing how powerful it was, but being weakened by the earth wall, Hiruzen struck the slash with his adamantine staff and destroyed it, while the fire dragon was still heading towards Naruto. Suiten. Sujin Heki. Taking a deep breath a large torrent of water shot out of Naruto's mouth and formed a large wall encampment around Naruto, creating a strong shield of water to protect him. The dragon hit the water wall, and the wall managed to do its job, as steam was all that was left as the dragon disappeared. As Naruto landed on the ground Hiruzen appeared next to him and did more hand seals. Doten. Doric Taiga. The ground beneath Naruto suddenly became soft and clumpy and found himself skidding as mud now covered his legs. Kaden. Karyuenden. With another the dragon fired bullet shot forward and hit Naruto as his body engulfed in fire. Many in the arena looked worried and thought it was over, but watched as Naruto poofed out of existence, showing it was just a clone. Before they could scan where he was they watched as Naruto dropped out of the sky with his right fist with chakra rounded. He was coming down too fast, and Hiruzen would never have been able to dodge it, so with his adamantine staff, Hiruzen blocked Naruto's powerful strike. The amount of power was evident when a strong shockwave slammed into everything that was behind Hiruzen and destroyed what remained of one of the walls. Meanwhile Hiruzen noticed that a very tiny crack appeared in his staff. The fact that his staff is supposedly indestructible, it shows how strong that strike was. Putin. Fukunai, Naruto said as kunai's made of wind formed around him and shot off towards Hiruzen at a very quick speed. Painton. Dukaku no Jutsu, Hiruzen said as the fireball engulfed the kunais, getting rid of them completely before Naruto shot forward, and everyone that could see him move saw him draw at Shusui, as he now gripped his two swords in his hands. Two swords huh? Many thought since they guessed Naruto must have picked that up during his time away. Hiruzen held his staffs in his hands as he readied for the blades to him, but to his and everyone, surprise Naruto did not aim at him and instead spun around him. It was only as he watched Naruto spin around that he noticed his chakra and wind element were gathering. It's not meant to strike, it meant to push, Hiruzen suddenly realized, but before he could get away a powerful gust of wind suddenly picked up and slammed into Hiruzen, throwing him high into the air as he spun around out of control. 
Akanami, Naruto said as he watched the wine through Harizen into the air while Kishina looked impressed at them. Using swords and rotation to pick the wind up and slam it into the opponent. It's very effective and very creative, Kishina applauded as everyone else nodded. On the ground Naruto watched as Hiruzen went into the air and began to fall back down again. He jumped and landed on the wall and caused the familiar swirling sound of it to sound out. Everyone watched as they formed into his hand as Naruto jumped from the wall towards Hiruzen and slammed it into the old Okage's gut. Rasengan, Naruto called out as it hit its mark and threw Hiruzen from the air right into the wall back on the ground, making a loud crash ring out as a small dust cloud formed. Whoa, the twins both said as did many of the other students and civilians. The shinobi looked a little awestruck at how this young shinobi was faring against a former Hokage. Naruto grinned and landed on the ground, but before he could do anything Hiruzen's staff suddenly extended and slammed into his gut, forcing him back and slamming him into the wall as well. That sucked, Naruto complained as he felt the wing get completely knocked out of him. Everyone was on their feet as both shinobi were looking down at the arena. Naruto-chan and Hiruzen are really going at it. The arena is almost destroyed, Kishina said, and looked down at the spot where her son landed. Well I am not all that surprised. Sensei has wanted to test Naruto ever since he left to join the Guardians. I know he has been looking forward to this bar for some time, Tsunade stated. I don't think we can really call it a spar since the stadium is almost gone, Shikaku Nara stated with many nodding in agreement. As expected, Itachi said as Shizuka, Anko and Hana all sat with him in the stands having heard about this matchup earlier. He was bound to get stronger, but to go against a former cage is nothing short of incredible, Kurenai stated as Asuma nodded his head with the other jonin. Safe to say I think little Naruto has surpassed us all, Shizun said with many of the jonin grumbling, but knowing it was true. I think there are only a handful of people that could beat him now, and they are all in the cage box. They looked up at the cage box where Minato, Kishina, Tsunade and Makoto were standing, and they quickly all nodded. The chatter quickly died down when they saw both Naruto and Hiruzen get out of the holes in the wall. Hiruzen's helmet was gone as was the bit of clothing where he hid. A scorch mark was present on his stomach and had multiple bruises and cuts forming on his face and arms with a small trickle of blood going down his forehead. Naruto was in a similar state with bruises and cuts over his body, but saw a large gash on the side of his face, where he impacted the wall which was bleeding profusely, and most of his shirt was gone, revealing his muscles. Many of the females in the stadium blushed at his physique, while others winced at the gash, since it looked like a nasty one, as blood kept leaking from it. I think you should get that gash seen to Naruto-kun, Hiruzen said, but Naruto shook his head. I will afterwards. If I tried to use them in a real-life battle, then the enemy would not give me a chance to heal myself, he stated as spat a bit of blood out of his mouth. Many agreed with the statement since it was very true. Hiruzen just nodded to him as Naruto sheathed Shigure and just had Shusui out. Quickly the two stormed forward and clashed again as the adamantine staff met the black blade. Vittoryu. Shishido. A single long slash pushed towards Hiruzen as Naruto swung his blade down, but Hiruzen blocked the strike with his staffs and caused it to vanish. Hiruzen swung his staff around his head before his hands went into his pouches, shuriken cage bunch and no jutsu. Hundreds of shurikens suddenly appeared in the air and sped towards Naruto, who knew there were too many to count. It was rare to find someone who could create clones of ninja weapons in such a way, but then again Hiruzen was the professor for a reason. Futen. Danjekanami, he said, slamming his hands on the ground as a strong shockwave of wind hit the arena and forced the kunai away as Hiruzen held his hands in front of his face. As he did Naruto appeared and kicked him in the guy sending him towards the wall. However he landed on the wall and punched Naruto right where the gash was sending a strong wave of pain through Naruto's head and making him stumble back as more blood poured down his face. Hiruzen gave him an apologetic look, but Naruto understood. In battle you use injuries to your advantage. Hiruzen nodded as the two began a match between Bajutsu and Kinjutsu. As sparks flew between them for the next five minutes those Jonin or above noticed Naruto moves had gotten slower and saw his face had gone a little pale. The wound on his head was now taking its toll on him. Though looking at Hiruzen they could see he had taken quite a beating, and with his old age, he was beginning to slow down as well now. Okajama, we might want to stop them before one of them gets badly hurt or before we lose the stadium completely, Shikaku offered as Minato nodded. Kishina looked at Naruto worriedly, and she could see how nasty that wound on his head was. Minato gave the word to Tsunade who nodded and held her arm up for everyone to see. The match is over, she shouted as Naruto and Hiruzen's fists stopped just inches from one another's. Since we have no victor or loser this match is a draw. The whole stadium was silent as the declaration, but to Naruto's surprise no one booed, but instead cheered and gave a round of applause for the amazing match they just watched. Ani-chan is the best, he could hear from Mito and Aiji as well as Mina who was sitting with Shizun. He looked up to see his mother clapping wholeheartedly shouting praise for her baby as was Makoto, while Minato was sending him a proud look.
he looked over at the Jonin and saw Kurinai give him an appraising nod and Asuma give him a thumbs up for being able to keep up with his old man. Guy and a mini clone of his were shouting about youth while Kakashi was too busy reading his Icha Icha. Naruto sighed happily to himself as he let himself fall to the ground with him landing on his butt as he took a breather. The throbbing pain in his head was horrid and it made him feel like he had an Anko hangover with no sleep. He felt Hiruzen sit down beside him as Enma changed back into his regular form and rubbed his shoulders. I don't think we have fought like that in nearly two decades, he said as Hiruzen quickly agreed with him before Enma returned to his home. Naruto enjoyed the rest as he looked over at his Jiji. You weren't going all out, were you Jiji? He said as Hiruzen shrugged and smiled at him. Maybe not, but we both know you weren't either, he said referencing his Mokuten. Hiruzen was using a good 70% of his strength and Naruto was around the same. If the match had gone on any longer, then Hiruzen would have been the victor due to having more experience and Naruto's head injury. Despite that he was proud of his surrogate grandson since he had become a splendid shinobi and now knew without a doubt Naruto would surpass him very soon. As they sat down talking, Tsunade along with Kishina appeared in front of them as Kishina began fussing over Naruto and telling him how proud she was of him. She gave him lots of mother kisses which made him blush a little and those still watching to laugh. Look at the state of you too Tsunade said, shaking her head at both of them as both Naruto and Hiruzen just gave her a cheesy smile. She rolled her eyes before she looked over at Kishina. Let's get them to the hospital and get them patched up, Tsunade said with Kishina agreeing completely as she took her son's right arm over her shoulder and helped him up, while Tsunade did the same with Hiruzen before leaving. Later that day Naruto sat at Ichiraku's raiment with Hiruzen both covered in bandages in various spots as they enjoyed their raiment. Nido and Aiji were talking excitedly with Naruto and Hiruzen asking all about their match and if they could teach them some of their. Kishina was right next to Naruto as she kept checking his bandages were secure, with Naruto telling her he was fine. She didn't seem to get the hint. Minato meanwhile shook his head at his wife's actions as Mina sat on his lap and peacefully ate their raiment together, ignoring the overbearing Kishina and the awestruck Mito and Aiji. They left that to Naruto to deal with. Chapter 23 How are you doing Mito-chan? Are you having fun? Naruto called as he sat on top of a low-leveled roof with his elbows propped up as he stared down at his sister, who was picking up trash around the Hokage Monument. Oni-chan stopped bothering me, Mito whined, which only served to make Naruto laugh as he watched her team complete another D-rank mission. Her teammate Shikamaru was lazily tossing some trash into the black bag in his hands while the pale boy Sai got on with the job quietly. Beside Naruto was Kashina who was reading a magazine as she watched her new team complete their mission. This is stupid. How much longer are we going to be doing these stupid chores? Mito called out in a huff as Shikamaru rolled his eyes. Don't roll your eyes at me lazy ass. Then stop complaining. You have done this for every mission for the last three months, he said as he yawned and scratched the back of his head. But it's insulting to do this, and it's embarrassing. You know if you keep complaining it will cause you to get wrinkles. Flatty, Sai said as he gave Mito a creepy smile. Ah bastard. Mito shouted as she went to lunge at Sai, but Shikamaru stopped her as he tried to keep her from killing their teammate. Come here and say that again. I'll kick your ass. Kashina called Mito-chan, lowering her magazine to look at her daughter and making Mito stop and look up at her mother. These D-ranks all help build up your credit and it will get you closer to obtaining the right to go on a C-rank mission. A Koch and Mito whined but a quickly stern look from Kashina quickly shut her up. Grumbling and kicking the dirt she went back to picking up litter with a scowl now plastered on her face. Naruto watched them with an amused expression but got a flick on the ear from Kashina. Don't you have anything better to do than rile up your little sister? She said, raising an eyebrow at him. The response she got was a shrug. It's too much fun and she is so easy to tease. Besides, it's the job of the older shinobi to tease the freshies. You probably did the same when you were in my position, he said to her as she got a faraway look on her face. That was true since she could remember teasing Minato's students Kakashi, Abito and Rin when they were a team together. Even though Kakashi graduated much earlier than the other two, they still had to do D-ranks. Don't you have a mission today? She asked as she looked down at her son again, who went back to teasing his little sister, who was trying to give him the scariest glare she could muster. Yeah but it's not for another hour. Besides I already have everything packed, he said as he pointed to the scrolls on his hip and the seals on his arms. I'm okay then, Kashina said, going off the topic before she went on to a completely new one. So are there any girls that interest you? She asked as Naruto looked up at her in surprise. That was not something he really wanted to discuss with his mother. It was a little too weird. Where is this going? He thought before answering her. Erm no Kachan, no girls right now. I'm happy to just be on my own. Oh come on now there must be someone to catch your attention. I hear Makoto's son is still with that girl from the Natashiko village. I can't let Makoto outdo me again, she said with a fire burning in her eyes that made him shake his head. So that's why. 
Sorry to disappoint Kachan, but there is no girl right now, so you will have to wait a little longer, Naruto said, making Kashina huff a little before nodding in acceptance. While the idea of some harlot trying to sink their claws into her eldest made her frown and want to bring the pain, she knew if she wanted grandchildren one day that she would have to suck it up. It didn't mean though that she could not help pick and push him in the direction of a girl she approved of. As Kashina looked down at the genin in front of her Naruto felt a familiar presence sit down beside him. Turning his head he saw Anko sitting there looking down at the new squad while twirling a kunai in her left hand. Breaking in the new blood. Anko said grinning which just made him roll his eyes at his teammate. Thought I would see how they are doing. They have promise but Mido-chan is being impatient, he said loudly to make sure his sister could hear him. Mido glared back at him with a red face while Anko chuckled. It used to Mido cause it's not going to change for a while, Anko told her, making Mido huff in annoyance just like Kashina did moments earlier. So I thought you had work today. Was there not enough prisoners to keep you happy and contained? He teased making Anko slap his arm playfully. I'm on my break and I thought I would come see you before I see Hana-chan. I won't get to see my two favorite people for a couple of days, she told him pouting. But I feel there is another reason that you wanted to speak with me. He asked, seeing the hidden message in his friend's eyes. Anko nodded and leaned in closer towards him. Make sure my girl comes back safe and sound. I don't like it when she goes on missions without me. You know Hana is more than capable of looking after Anko-chan. She is a jonin after all. I know and I am not saying she is weak by any means. But she is not like you, Itachi and I. She is not quite at the level we are at and I don't want her to get in over her head. You know she can be a little prideful. Hell, I know she can be prideful. In the bedroom it's always a struggle to see who comes out on top and who gets to be submissive and who gets to be dominant. Naruto waved his hand. Too much information, but I see where you're coming from. He muttered before putting his arm around his longtime friend to reassure her. Normally Anko would have been fine with Hana going on a mission, but he guessed that since they were going to Kiri, where a civil war had only just finally ended, it made her a little anxious. I will make sure your girl comes back home safe and sound. It's a promise on my way to the shinobi he said putting his pinky finger out in front of him. Anko understood the gesture and wrapped her pinky around his. She then leaned in and gave him a peck on the cheek, showing her softer side to one of her true friends. Thank you. Anytime Anko-chan. I don't make promises I can't keep. The two longtime friends sat and spoke with one another for five minutes, with Kashina occasionally leaning in to try and hear what they were saying. Though all the two spoke about was the training schedule for their spars worth Itachi, Hana, Heiate and Yugao. Once Anko left to see Hana, Naruto left 20 minutes later after saying goodbye to his mother and sister and headed towards the south gate where he would be meeting with his team. Four days later, Naruto jumped off the edge of a wooden boat and landed on a small wooden harbor where other small boats were docking and leaving with their various trade goods. He took a look around his surroundings and frowned a little since there was a lot of mist currently covering a lot of the small harbor town. Without his sensor abilities he knew they would be walking blind. Though I don't sense anyone harmful at the moment, we get moving while we can. He thought before he motioned for his two partners behind him to follow after him. Hana quickly followed after with her three walking closely to her side and on constant alert, while on her other side was their teammate Heiate. Though Heiate was still sickly and probably always would be, he had really stepped up as a shinobi and proved that he could fight just like everyone else in his age group and quickly became a prominent member of their generation and someone that many other sickly children could look up to as a role model. While not quite as powerful as his blonde-haired friend, Heiate was well versed in kinjutsu and had a talent for fire and tojutsu. It made him a strong ally and a problematic enemy. The village hidden in the mist is said to be about five hours from the stock side, and we will have to cross a lake on foot to get there, Naruto said as he walked forwards. If we get there before mid-afternoon then we should be able to avoid needing to stay in the area for too long. Right, that's probably for the best. They may still be antsy with the civil war only just having ended. Hana spoke up. Remember this is simply a delivery mission. We give the given message scroll to the new Mizukage, wait for the response, and then we leave. We will be in and out of the village within an hour. Could this not be something the Hokage could not just send by Hawk? Heiade asked thinking it would just be easier, but he quickly saw Naruto shake his head. Normally it would be but seeing as my father has three of his delivering it personally, we can only assume that whatever message it contains is of great importance. Both of his friends nodded before the trio checked around them, made sure they had everything before they took off into the nearby trees and traveled along the top of the branches at great speed. Naruto was perched at the front, Hana in the middle and Hei covering them from the back. They stayed in that formation for two hours as they traveled to the village hidden in the mist. Naruto was surprised just how true that name was as they traveled towards their destination. The mist was everywhere and it was so thick that you could barely see in front of you. You barely had at least two or three meters of clear vision until the mist would set in. Sometimes it was even lower than that. 
I can't let my guard down for even a second. An ambush or any kind could be waiting for us at any moment. I'm starting to think sending a hawk might have been the better choice. When they estimated that they were at least two-thirds of the way there to the village, both Hayate and Hana stopped immediately when they saw Naruto stopped right in his tracks and had a focused look in his eyes as he scanned around them. What is it? Hayate asked before he noticed Hana and her were growling and sniffing the air. They had smelled something and whatever it was, it was making them get ready. Hey, Hana, Manji formation, he called as the trio quickly got back to back while they were stationed left, right and center by Hana, with their jaws snapping at the air. How many? Naruto scanned his surroundings and felt six people all around them. From what he could tell they were all stationed at various points and at different heights. Six at least. Be careful. They have the home field advantage here and they know how to use the mist. No action unless given cause to. When he finished speaking something twirling through the air could be heard coming towards them. Before Hana and Hei could react, Naruto had already drawn Shusui from his back and struck a large demon shuriken that was aimed right at him. The broken parts of the shuriken split into two and embedded themselves in a nearby tree. Whoa, Hei said at how quickly his friends reacted before they heard quick steps coming towards them. Attack. They looked up to see a shinobi wearing an anvil-like mask drop down right in the center of them with a blade drawn out. I got him, Hei said as he unsheathed his blade and clashed with the shinobi and managed to push him away. From the front Naruto's attention turned in front of him and sensed three people coming towards him while two more were headed for Hana. Suda no he heard before he slammed his hands onto the ground and made performed his own. Oten. Dorokeki, he called as a large wall formed in front of him. Hana too coming for you from your left, he called as Hana nodded and quickly spotted them with her enhanced sense of smell. Her eyes became more canine-like and her nails got more feral as she went down onto all four with her stationed with her. Fang over fang, she whispered before lunging through the air as Naruto engaged a three hunter like shinobi that jumped over the earth made wall. The attack made Hana twirl in the air with her, and it looked like a horizontal tornado was ripping through the air. She drew closer towards the two attacking shinobi and slammed into one, successfully hitting him in the chest and destroying his lungs and heart, while the other managed to sidestep out of the way and drew a sword. Hana landed on her feet and gripped a kunai tightly in her hands. Above them Hayate was battling previous attacking Kiri Ninja and was holding himself well and was making ground against his enemy. Cough dot who are? Cough dot you? He asked, but the shinobi chose not to answer and continued to attack. Their swords caused sparks to fly off when the metal connected. Hayate ducked from a swift strike from the shinobi and brought up his blade to block another strike. Hayate continued to dodge and could see from his opponent's movements that he was getting more and more frustrated at not being able to land a hit on his foe. His movements were getting more sloppy, and his swings were getting slower. Are you with Kiri or the new Gade Mizukage? Hayate asked, but all he got was angry strikes back at him. Cough. So be it. Meanwhile Naruto glared at two of the enemy shinobi who had a sword each gripped in their hands. The third meanwhile was currently stuck in a headlock in Naruto's right arm. Both arms were broken from where he tried to rush. A strong punch to the gut quickly incapacitated his enemy before he snapped their neck with an extreme amount of force. Since I'm trying to get to Kiri quickly I'm going to make this quick. I really don't have the patience to deal with you right now, he said as he drew out Shigur as well and held both blades in front of him. He then watched as the two Anbu doubted him and flew forward. His swords clashed with his opponents and watched as they tried to push him back. Their other hands came up to take a swing at Naruto, but he easily dodged them with a bored expression on his face. Have to do better than that, he told them as his foot glowed green and he slammed his foot into the ground. Cracks formed on the ground as a mini earthquake suddenly hit the area, making everyone stumble in surprise, especially the two Anbu that he was fighting. A huge crater formed from where Naruto had slammed his foot and cracked all along the ground around six inches wide and began to form. Taking the opportunity, he brought Shigure up into the air. He jumped up into the air as well and slashed down on the surprised Anbu. Hear you. Keen. The moment he slashed his opponent and watched them fall back as the attack did its opposed damage, the Anbu member burst into flames as he choked out blood from underneath his mask. Bastard, he heard the other Anbu call out as he pushed forward as a dragon made of water shot forward towards Naruto, with its large red eyes boring into Naruto as it raced forward. Naruto narrowed his eyes and gripped both Shigure and Shusui tightly in his hands and held them to the side as he closed his eyes. Yakadori. He muttered as he swung both his swords together at the same time, as a large slash of compressed air formed from the slashes that were so dense that the slash made a crescent moon-shaped object that sailed towards the attack at great speed. The moment it connected, the water dragon split right down the middle and dispersed to the sides of Naruto, narrowly avoiding him and destroying the few trees that were behind him. Naruto then pushed off from the ground and appeared in front of the Anbu as he was in the middle of performing hand signs. At least he was until Anbu suddenly found his hands flying in the other direction courtesy of Naruto cutting them off. 
Before the Anbu could even say a word Naruto brought his right foot up and kicked the Anbu high into the air, breaking his jaw in the process. Pumping chakra into his legs Naruto jumped high into the air and was back to facing the Anbu who looked in incredible pain. Checkmate, Naruto told the Anbu before he pumped chakra into his right leg and with a powerful super strength kick. The kick connected with the man's head and sent his head sailing through the air and into the mist-filled valley while his body dropped to the ground lifelessly. Naruto then fell to the ground doing a backflip as he did and landed on top of a tree branch before he casually walked down the tree and placed Shigure and Shusui back into their sheaths and back to being sealed into his arms. He dusted off his jacket as he looked up into the air and watched Hate flip through the air, still battling his foe while to his left, he saw Hana performing a second fang over fang on her opponent and saw that it connected. The attack sent the Anbu flailing through the air and slammed right into a tree hard. Naruto whistled and nodded before he felt two new signs appear around them. One felt hostile like the other Anbu, while another felt curious and more calm than the others. The hostile one however he sensed appeared behind Hana. A glint of metal caught Naruto's eye from the mist and saw a barely visible human shape appear. Hana thought none the wiser as she checked her foe's pulse, and Naruto pushed himself forward, intent on keeping his promise to Anko. Hana knelt by the Anbu and checked his pulse and sighed when she felt he was definitely dead. It happened so quickly she was not even sure what happened. The moment she turned around she saw the familiar shapes of shurikens and kunai get thrown towards her at a fast rate. She wanted to move, but using multiple fang over fang had taken it out of her along with the triplets who were each panting a little. Doing what she could she brought up her arms to protect herself while the triplets tried to pull her out of the way by pulling on her bottoms but were not having any luck. Before they could hit however, she watched as the back of Naruto's head appeared in front of her and watched him catch the shuriken in midair before throwing them right back towards the hidden enemy at an even faster rate. The kunai he blocked with his sword shigure and sent them so they were embedded in the trees. Be alright Hana-chan? He asked, turning around seeing Hana's stunned look on her face and watching her nod her head as she took deep breaths. I'm okay. Thank you Naruto-kun, she said with Naruto nodding back at her. She was disappointed in herself that she froze up that way and let someone get the drop on her. She should have smelled him coming, but she was captivated in making sure her opponent was dead, that she and triplets let their guard down. Try to keep your senses open at all times Hana-chan. I would hate to have to tell Anko-chan that something happened to you, he told her and saw her nod looking upset with herself, but that quickly changed when she noticed that Naruto had a kunai embedded in his left shoulder. Hold still, she said softly as she walked close towards him and pulled out the kunai from his shoulder. She saw his hand get brought up to heal the wound, but he was stopped when she placed her own on there first. Her hands glowed green and Naruto felt the wound slowly begin to heal up. It's the least I can do. Just because I can heal animals doesn't mean I don't have some skill in healing people too. Tsunade Sama was nice enough to show me a few tricks. Naruto nodded and turned his head when he saw Hei sheathing his sword away with a few cuts on his body, but nothing serious. Behind him though Naruto saw the man that he had felt earlier and now looking at him, Naruto had to admit he looked and felt strangely familiar. A familiar mask covered his face with familiar navy blue hair that stood up with tags pierced onto each of his ears. He stood looking at the man before he walked over to him and stopped just in front of him. Are you friend or foe? Naruto asked, tensing his body, if this man was a rogue like the other shinobi they had just faced. Behind him Hana and Hei stood closely behind Naruto and kept a close eye on the man in front of them. Are you the leaf shinobi that the Hokage sent to meet with the new god Mizukage? He asked and saw Naruto nod his head. Yes we are. So you're a friend then? Now the Anbu nodded and removed his mask revealing a man in his late thirties with an eye patch covering his right eyes. My name is Ao, Anbu captain of Kiri and right hand man of the new Mizukage, he told them. I was told by Mizukage-sama to meet you before you got to the village, but I see you encountered problems. Naruto examined the man and he felt what was behind the eye patch. A Byakugan. With that discovery he remembered where he saw this man last. The day he fought Raiga Kurosuke, he was the Anbu that Naruto gave the twin swords to, as long as she got to keep the body of Raiga. Yes you could say something like that. Naruto said, looking around at the bodies before telling Hana and Hei to pile them up and burn the bodies. Who are they? They are remnants of the Yande Mizuka Jigura's forces. Despite Yagura being dead, he still has troops loyal to him and believing in his cause to wipe out those with bloodlines. There is a team out looking for these people as we speak, but I will have to send a messenger hawk ordering them back. Naruto nodded and they watched as Hei performed a fire and set the bodies ablaze. Hum I will guide you the rest of the way to Kiri. These paths can be treacherous as I'm sure you youngsters have already noticed, he said before he took off through the trees. Try to keep up otherwise you might take a nasty fall. The three raised their eyebrows at the older shinobi before they took off after him along the trees. The journey with Ao leading them took about half the time, with the veteran shinobi leading the way and taking them the safest way towards Kiri. 
Once they got to the end of the island they were on, the water ran the rest of the way towards Kiri, and eventually they came across the village hidden in the mist. This was the first time any of them had gone to the mist village, and they quickly deduced it was definitely one of the more naturally protected by the elements around it and deserved the title hidden in the mist. The name was well earned, and despite its eyes they could still barely see it. As they got closer the visibility got clearer, but with the mist and the cold temperature it felt like they were walking into a completely different world. Walking through the gates the mist seemed to clear and the people and the building became clear. Men, women and children were walking about the village going on with their day while Shinobi patrolled the roofs. Taking the leaf Shinobi to see the Mizukage, Ao stared towards the two gate guards who lazily nodded to the man. Naruto had to guess this village had their own versions of Izumo and Kitetsu. Damn upstarts. Ao complained as they ventured their way through the village. Looking at the village the trio were surprised at how familiar to the leaf village it was. The building's designs were very familiar and the civilians wore similar clothing, though thicker due to the cold weather. They saw some of the shinobi looking at them from the rooftops, obviously keeping an eye on them. Naruto couldn't blame them since the leaf village would probably do the same thing when they visit other villages in their homes. Along the buildings Naruto saw a lot of the buildings had been damaged and were currently under reconstruction, along with new construction sites in various places. Many were being made out of stone and large rock-like materials. From what he could gather it looked like apartment buildings were being built for their shinobi. They were still rebuilding and gathering their strength after the civil war had ended six months ago. With the new Mizukage, whoever they were, Kiri had managed to set up a new council and government, as well as bring in the civilians and shinobi that fled from the village at the start of the civil war. Eventually after a 15-minute walk they came to a large building similar to the Hokage building, and they knew they had arrived at the residence of the Mizukage. Entering inside Ao nodded to the guards before he took them up a flight of stairs and stopped at the third floor. Kijuro is Mizukage-sama in? Ao asked as they entered a reception's office, and they saw a blue-haired teen with a large sword covered in bandages just exiting the Mizukage's office. They guessed he was either their age or at least a year younger. He looked a little nervous and timid when Ao began speaking with him, and it looked like he had a blush on his face when he walked out the office. H. Hi, Ao Senpai. Are these the leaf shinobi? He asked nervously looking over at the trio who gave him a small wave, trying to be polite and friendly. They are Chijuro, he said before turning serious to the younger shinobi. Chijuro I need you to go to the messenger Hawkpay and send out a message to Squad 5. Tell them the group they are tracking have already been found and dealt with and they are to return home. They saw Chijuro look over at them and saw him focus in on Naruto before he yelped back in surprise. The Indama Hokage's son, he said, panicked to their surprise before Ao got his attention back to him with a glare. Hi senpai. I'll get right on it, he said and hurried out of the room, nervously avoiding Naruto as he went by. What was that all about? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow before hearing Ao snort. Why do you think so? Did you not see the giant sword on his back? Ao asked, further confusing them before Ao knocked on the door in front of them while nodding to the receptionist behind the desk. Naruto, Hana and Heid all heard a soft voice telling them to come in as Ao pushed the door open and ushered them to come in. Stepping both Naruto and Heid understood what a Chijuro so red and flushed in appearance. The Mizukage who was sitting behind a desk doing paperwork was easily one of the most beautiful women that either of them had seen. She had a slender build with green eyes, an ankle-length auburn hair styled into a herringbone pattern at the back, a top knot tied with a dark blue band and with four bangs at the front. Two bangs are short, with one covering her right eye and two are long, crossing each other on her bust, just below her chin. She wore a long-sleeved blue shirt that left her shoulders and the very top of her breasts exposed. Underneath, she wears a mesh armor and leggings with a dark-colored pair of shorts covering everything above the thighs. Naruto did everything he could to hide a blush, but it was not working out too well. Hei did not even bother trying to hide it and looked ready to faint at any moment. Even Hana looked a little hot and bothered by her. However despite his blush when Naruto looked at her he felt like he knew her from somewhere. She resembled a certain someone in his life and it was intriguing. Thank you Ao. She said in a silky voice as Ao nodded and took his spot behind her and leaned against the wall. She then turned to face them with a polite smile on her face. Despite appearances this woman was the Mizukage for a reason and knew that they should be on their guard just in case. My name is Mei Terumi the Gaudi Mizukage of Kurigakur. I hope you all had a safe journey to our village. I would hate it if the leaf found out any of you were hurt in any way. I formally welcome you to our lovely village, said politely as the trio gave her a bow. Especially Naruto-san. I am surprised that Hokage sent his eldest to come and see me. So you know who I am then? He asked as she motioned for him to take a seat while Hana and Heid stood up behind him. Behind her desk the Mizukage chuckled. Naruto-san you will find that in Kiri you have become something of a legend here, she told him. In the last five years you have fought and killed two of Kiri's seven swordsmen. 
one of which was a low A-class and the other a high A-class shinobi. You have many of our shinobi tense and nervous when you enter through the gates I'm sure. He nodded before realizing what Ao meant with Chijuro. He guessed Akiti met was a seven swordsman in training. Though he was unsure which sword it was he was carrying. Is that why Kiri still has a dead or alive bounty on my head? He asked and just saw Mei continue to smile at him. I may have forgotten to get rid of that, she said sweetly. That was mainly Yagura being paranoid. He didn't like the idea of youngsters like you becoming so powerful at such a young age. He nodded though was unsure if he believed her. He guessed her shinobi side was being covered up by the sweet and sultry mask she had created. As true as that may sound we won't have a problem here will we? I don't feel like losing my head anytime soon, Naruto stated with Mei just continuing to smile at him as his hand rested on the seal that Shusui was sealed in. Behind her Mei knew Ao was tensing and preparing himself, but she waved him off, signaling that it was okay with Naruto doing the same for Hana and Haid, who were on guard and preparing themselves. I'm glad that we understand one another, Mei-sama. I hope you don't mind me calling you Mei-sama. He said with Mei shaking her head. Not at all Naruto-san. I have never been one for honorifics. She stated as he nodded though Ao rolled his eyes, thinking his Mizukid should not be acting so nonchalant with the foreigners. That's good to hear. Well in any case we should just get this over with, he said as he put his left hand over his right wrist and channeled chakra into a small storage scroll. A small pop sound was heard and a bit of smoke before Naruto revealed a scroll in his hands. This is from Aryande Mahokage for your eyes and your eyes only, he said seriously as he handed the scroll over to the Mizukage. Mei readily took it and everyone watched her take on a more serious look as she opened the scroll and slowly began to read it. The team of Leaf Shinobi sat quietly in the office as they waited for a response from the beautiful Mizukage. Behind Mei, Ao was trying to look over her shoulder and Naruto even suspected he was tempted to use his Byakugan to read what it said. But one look from Mei made him go pale and look away. Five minutes later Naruto, Hana and Haid watched as Mei finished writing a response back to Thehokage in a similar looking message scroll before sealing it up and handing it over to Naruto. This is my response to Thehokage. In short you can tell him I accept the proposal but give him the scroll for a more detailed answer. Naruto nodded and watched as Mei leaned back in her chair and stared at him. Staring right back at her as he sealed it away into his wrist, he narrowed his eyes as his earlier thoughts about her came back. Why does she look so familiar? He thought as he looked at her. The hair and the jade green eyes were entirely new to him, but it was the skin tone and the shape of her face that bothered him. It was on the edge of his tongue, but it kept evading him. Namaki-san, I ask that you stop staring at the Mizukage. Ao spoke up roughly as Naruto was brought out of his thoughts, while Mei had a small grin on her face, mentally cheering that at 36, she could still make young men fall for her looks and charms. Her generosity of being partners with a leaf will only go so far so don't get any ideas. He spoke not noticing Mei's hair suddenly falling in front of her eyes, shadowing them over. Partners. As in a wife and husband. She thought glumly before turning back to look at Ao. Shut up Ao. Or I'll kill you, she told him in a bittersweet voice that made Ao look like he had just been kicked in the crotch and have an aura of fear wrap around him like a blanket. Scary everyone thought while well, unbeknownst to everyone else, Naruto's eyes widened in size as realization hit him and began realizing who this woman reminded him of. The hair and eyes might be different, but some of the mannerisms and the way she speaks are the same with her. If I have her grow her hair out like Mei sends then they would almost match. He thought before he decided to put it to the back of his mind for now. If that will be all that, perhaps it's time we left, Naruto spoke as he stood up, trying to stick with the plan of not staying in the village for more than an hour. Of course Naruto-san, Mei responded as she too stood up. Just as she did though they all heard a tap on the window and turning around they all saw a Kanoha messenger hawk by the window. Confused and surprised, she opened the window and took out the little message the bird carried before offering it to Naruto. It's addressed to you, she said surprised as did Naruto and the other leaf shinobi. Taking the message he opened it up and scanned the contents laid out by his father. Everyone watched as they saw a confused look turn from an angry look until it settled on a grinning look as he nodded his head. Do you have a piece of paper and a pen I could use Mei-sama? He asked with Mei nodding and handing over some paper and ink from her draw. Quickly writing a response he replied back the message and sending the hawk back off to Kanoha he turned around towards Hana and Haid. It seems Kakashi and his genin team ran into some trouble in wave country. I was instructed to go help them. He said with Hana and Haid quickly nodding. They were both about to leave but saw Naruto staying put and turned to look at Mei. My father wrote in the message that this could be a good chance to test out the possible alliance between Kiri and Kanoha. He stated as he handed the note over to a surprised looking Mei Turumi who began to examine the message. A moment later a look of realization came to her face as well as surprise before she turned to look at Naruto with a big smile on her face. Yes, Naruto-san. I think this will work out perfectly, she stated as she grinned at one another, leaving the others in the room to wonder just what they were talking about. 
A few minutes later, Naruto stood in an alley just outside of Mizukage Tower. He bites his thumb and goes through some familiar hand signs before saying. No. A small white tiger cub with bright green eyes appeared in a puff of smoke, who purred the minute it saw Naruto. Naruto, sending another message to SHH Gaia, I still haven't told anyone about that yet, but yes I am. He replied putting a scroll in the cub's mouth before she disappeared again, leaving a smiling Naruto behind. Chapter 24, Wave, standing in front of a nice little three-bedroom house, Naruto knocked against a wooden door as Hana and Hei stood on his left and right side. The triplets were stationed between Hana and himself, all three sniffing the area and making sure there were no enemy signatures around to cause problems. Since Wave Country was not all that far from Water Country, it only took them about two days to arrive at the Merchant Country. Wave Country was a country where they had no shinobi of their own, since they had their own natural defenses. The country was a simple trading country that many of the minor countries and a few major countries did business with. It was not often that they got requests from Wave Country, since the country overall was normally a very quiet yet peaceful place. From behind the wooden door Naruto heard a few voices suddenly cease and go silent. Light footsteps were then heard coming closer to the door until stopping with the door sliding open. Standing in front of him was a beautiful woman with dark hair that looked to be in her early thirties, dressed in a pink blouse and dark blue skirts. Behind her he could see an older man in his sixties sitting at a small table with a glass of sake in front of him. May I help you? She asked politely looking at the newcomers, but having an idea of who they were given their headbands. Hello miss. My names are Naruto, and these are my teammates Hana and Haid. We are from Kanoha and were told to arrive at this location by Er Hokage, after receiving a required backup letter from Kakashi Haddock, Naruto told her, and saw the recollection appear in her eyes before she nodded. Please come in, she welcomed them stepping to the side and allowing them entry into their home. The home was cozy and comfortable, and was definitely one of the better looking houses from what he had seen from the town so far. It showed that the area had fallen on very hard times. As soon as they walked in and entered the small dining room, Naruto saw Aiji sitting by the small table, reading one of the books their father had given him about. Hearing their footsteps Aiji looked up where his face brightened tenfold when he saw his older brother walk into the room. He got up and quickly hugged his older brother tightly which was reciprocated by Naruto. I'm glad you're here, he heard Aiji whisper while Naruto patted him on the shoulder. While well, Aiji would not admit it freely, he had been spooked big time by the arrival of one of the seven ninja swordsmen. Zabuza had scared the life out of him. The man was the definition of dangerous and was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kakashi of all people. They had only managed to still be alive because he and Sasuke were lucky enough to free Kakashi after he got caught. The other two members of the team Sasuke and Sakura were both sitting around the table as well. Sasuke was looking out the window with a brooding look plastered on his face, while Sakura was staring at Sasuke with an adoring look. Hand girl was the only thought that ran through the heads of Naruto, Hana and Haid, as Naruto put his arm over his little brother's shoulder. Are you okay? It scared my little to hear my little brother encountered Zabuza Mamachi of all people. Are you hurt anywhere? He asked and saw Aiji shake his head negatively. I'm okay, but Kakashi Sensei is upstairs in bed. He overused his Sharingan in the fight and has been bedridden for the last two days. For the next 10 minutes he listened to Aiji as he explained what had happened when they left Kanoha for their supposed C rank mission. Only three hours after they had set off they had been attacked by the Demon Brothers, two well-known thugs of Zabuza. They were only C-rank criminals in the bingo books, but it was more than enough for a couple of genin. IG and Sasuke had managed to protect the client until Kakashi appeared and took them out after observing who they were after. Though Naruto had wished Kakashi had taken his brother and his team back to the village, he couldn't fault them for wanting to continue the mission. Though Kakashi should have known that someone like Zabuza must have been lying in wait. After three days had passed and arrived on the banks of Wave Country, where they were met by Zabuza who immediately began to battle Kakashi. From what Aiji described to him it was intense before Kakashi fell into a trap and got himself caught, only to later be freed from the combined teamwork of Aiji and Sasuke. Naruto wanted to berate Aiji, but he knew he would have done something similar if the situation had been reversed. So he just patted him on the shoulder, getting a happy grin from Aiji. He swore even Sasuke's mouth twitched upwards for even a moment. Kakashi then fought Zabuza again before eventually defeating Zabuza with his own move. But before he could land a final blow a masked nin who apparently was a hunter nin from Kiri, arrived and took him out before leaving with the body. Naruto too looked at Hana and Haid, and he could see that both knew something was wrong with what they just heard. Considering where they just came from he knew there were no Kiri hunter nins currently out looking for Zabuza. The Mizukage had already told them that this was the first time they had heard from Zabuza in over a year, and that all their hunter nins were still stationed in Kiri, helping to train the next generation of hunter nins. That was no hunter nin, Hana told them as she patted one of her three dogs on the head. Aiji Sasuke and Sakura turned their heads towards her. 
We just came from Kiri and had a meeting with the Mizukage. She has no hunter nins currently searching for Zabuza. They heard Sakura gasp. But then who was that person with the mask? Most likely. Cough. Someone working with Zabuza, Hade answered. He has been gone a long time. It's not surprising Zabuza may have found some new additions to his little group. Ig Kun where did the hunter nin hit him exactly? Where on the body? Hana asked with Ig telling them he was hit twice in the neck with needles. Hana feared this. He was put in a death-like state. Make the heartbeat so shallow that it masks the shinobi still being alive. Zabuza is very much alive and still out there. Naruto ran a hand through his hair and saw Aiji, Sakura and Sasuke look a little fearful at the idea of Zabuza still being alive. He had left a lasting impression on the trio, and he couldn't blame them. It was their first mission outside of the village, and they ended up running into one of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. We will need to speak to Kakashi about this. But first we need to focus on these three. No doubt they will be in the firing range since Zabuza and his accomplices will want them gone. Zabuza strikes me as a prideful person. Hana tapped her chin. She didn't know a whole lot of medical ninjutsu, but she knew enough to make her a novice. Thankfully her time with Anko helped her when it came to the human body and what certain effects can happen to them when put in specific states. Zabuza is not dead, but he will need time to heal. He will be bedridden for at least 10 days until he is back at full strength. Two days have passed since the battle, so that gives us eight days until he would likely attack again. Which means we have eight days to whip these guys into shape, Naruto muttered before turning his attention back to Aiji and his team. Have you and your team done much training since you arrived? He asked and inwardly was not surprised that Aiji shook his head, which was followed by similar head shakes from the other two members of Team 7. Naruto pinched his nose before taking a big sigh and looking towards Aiji and his team. Okay then tell me what Kakashi has been doing with you so far in terms of training. How far have you gone? Aiji scratched the back of his head nervously, obviously showing a negative sign to the trio of Jonin that recently arrived. Akashi sensei has been teaching us teamwork skills and had us work on the tree climbing exercises so far, they heard Sakura tell them. They waited for her to continue, but quickly realized she had already finished. All three of them looked at them in disbelief. That's it. That's all he has taught you in a month. He got three nods in response to his question. That's ridiculous, Hana piped up, looking less than impressed and angry at the veteran Jonin that was leading these three genin. That is something you should have done in your first week. Why is that all you have learned? Bakashi sensei is always three hours late, Sakura told them as she twiddled her thumbs on her lap. We do an hour of teamwork exercises, and then we go to D-rank missions. After that he tells us to go home. Naruto and Hana both felt like pulling their hair out while Hate shuffled away from them. Good for nothing Scarecrow, the both muttered before Naruto took an empty scroll out from one of the seals on his arm and put it on the table. He then pulled out a brush and ink. Alright I'm going to be straight with you three, he told them as the three 13 year olds looked at him. Right now you are way behind where you should be. Aiji and Sasuke might be ahead given their clan training, but you Sakura aren't where you should be. Sakura looked down, disappointed in herself as she nodded. She knew she was the weakest in the group despite being the smartest. But the three of you should be further along, and it was Kakashi's job to ensure you got the right training. Obviously he has not done that which means for the next eight days you three will be working your asses off. Understand. He told them and saw all three of them nod. Aiji looked happy, Sasuke had a tiny grin on his face, while Sakura had a determined look on her face. Have all three of you completed the tree walking exercise? Hana asked as she planned on helping Naruto with the training plan for them. All three nodded their heads which was a relief to the three jonin. Then we can start on the next exercise. Naruto told them. Hey, every morning I want you to teach them the water walking exercise. That will improve their chakra control and their reserves. You three will do that every morning until you can do the exercise without even thinking about it. The trio nodded, though Sasuke looked a little miffed that he had to listen to his brother's friends. In the afternoon we will focus on your individual skills and raise them up. If I think it's possible, we might even teach you guys a new or two. Understand. The three genin nodded their heads while Tazuna and Tsunami who had simply watched and listened for the last 30 minutes were impressed at how quickly Naruto had taken control. Tazuna stood up as he prepared to leave for the bridge and continue with its construction. Since it's still morning you three will go out with Hayate and begin the water walking exercise. Hayate doesn't let them come back until they can stand on the water for at least 30 seconds. Will. Cough. Hayate responded as he stood up and ushered for the genin to follow him. The trio left each looking excited and determined and obviously happy they were getting some real training, though Sasuke did glare at Naruto for a few moments, but quickly got moving when Naruto gave him a look indicating him to get ass moving. Being a jonin had its perks when it came to the genin. As they left, Naruto made two shadow clones. Tazuna-san, these clones will go with you to the bridge and keep guard for you. 
I promise nothing will get past them, he told Tazuna, who nodded his head in gratitude as he left after saying goodbye to his daughter. Once everyone left Hana looked at Naruto irately and slammed a hand down on the table. What the hell was Kakashi thinking? What was the Hokage thinking? They should have been sent straight back to the village the moment they ran into the demon brothers. How could Kakashi be so foolish? Let's go and find out, Naruto told her as they both stood up and walked up the flight of stairs with Naruto in front and Hana following closely behind. Hana was beyond furious. She and Kiba might not see eye to eye right now, but it didn't mean she stopped caring about him. If she found out that her little brother had run into a shinobi with the caliber of Zabuza Mamachi, she would have been irate and would be calling for Kakashi's head. She knew Naruto long enough to know when he was angry. And by the look in his eye she could tell Kakashi and to an extent his father had really angered him. Twenty minutes later a sleepy and exhausted Kakashi woke up having dreamed of beautiful girls in bikinis in a large hot tub. He groaned and went to sit up but instead felt a weight on his chest. Blinking the sleepers out of his eyes, he looked up to see Hana's three with their paws on his chest, snarling at him. He gulped before his face went pale when he noticed Naruto and Hana sitting with their backs to the wall and both with their arms crossed. Both had narrowed eyes and he could have sworn he heard Naruto's knuckles cracking. So I'm guessing you're the backup? Kakashi asked timidly. Neither gave him an answer before Hana slammed the door closed and he watched Naruto activate silencing seals around the room. Outside Hei watched as Aiji, Sasuke and Sakura continued to fall into the ice-cold water obvious to what was happening inside. He was having too much fun watching the genin fall into the water like suckers. The trio shook in their wet clothes, oblivious to the beating and scolding their sensei was being given. Next day, Naruto stood in the makeshift training field he and Hana had made for the three genin, as they stood off to the side and watched Aiji, Sakura and Sasuke run laps around the field, each looking a little different than the other. Hayate was currently guarding the bridge builder with Kakashi who was walking around thanks to the. Aiji looked relatively okay, thanks to his Uzumaki stamina with only a light sweat on his forehead. Sasuke trailed slightly behind a few paces looking a bit more out of breath than his blonde-haired teammate but was still able to keep up the pace. And then trailing behind was Sakura whom the two boys had managed to lap twice already and looked ready to collapse at any moment. Since yesterday they had watched a trio of genin and cooked up a familiar training regimen that each would perform each day in hopes that their strength and skills will be improved enough to help with the incoming threat of Zabuza. Aiji Naruto knew well enough since his range of skills and moves were similar to their father in that he relied more on speed than power and preferred to jutsu and his tri-pronged kunai in combat situations. He and Mido were alike in that they were close mid-range fighters. He had Aiji focus on his speed and used weight seals on his legs and arms. He had him spar with a shadow clone of his. Sasuke was a little different in that he was more of an ninjutsu fighter, and with his fire and tojutsu prowess, he could switch ranges from long distance to close up. So Naruto had asked him what fire he knew and had him practice too. He told Sasuke every time he mastered a he would give him one more while they were on the mission. Sasuke had tried to push his luck but got quickly put in his place when Naruto twisted his arm behind him and shoved him to the ground, reminding him who his superior was. Sakura was by far the worst in terms of physical skills. The girl was smart for sure, and her chakra control was impressive, but that was due to her reserves being so tiny. She would get tired too easily and had told them she was on a diet so she could keep her figure. Naruto had face palmed big time while Hana was left incensed. She told him she would deal with Sakura and would personally train the girl. If there was one thing Hana had picked up from her girlfriend, it was a deep hatred for fangirls. Keep moving pinky or I'm setting the triplets on your ass, Hana shouted to Sakura when the pink-haired girl had stopped to take a breather. Sakura turned her head to look at them, but quickly set off running again when the triplets snarled at her. Anna huffed in annoyance before turning to look at Naruto who was grinning at her. What are you grinning at blondie? Who knew my lovely Anko-chan would have such an effect on you? Tell me when's the wedding? He asked and saw her blush like a tomato before swatting his arm. Shut up you blonde idiot. Go and get yourself a girl of your own, she chided him as he chuckled. But you have taken after Anko so much. I think it's clear who the dominant one in the relationship is. He whispered into her ear which led to her blushing even brighter than before. Before Naruto could begin to laugh he felt Hana jump him and grab him in a headlock and drag them to the ground. Ah oh, you stupid blonde baka, Hana hissed out while Naruto had now begun laughing. Hana-chan wouldn't want Anko to be jealous of us being so close, Naruto chuckled out and felt Hana tighten her grip on him. His laughing alerted the three genin who looked over to see Aiji's older brother being choked out by Kiba's older sister. Aiji looked confused while Sasuke and Sakura were muttering something about stupid older siblings. After another minute of Hana attempting to strangle Naruto to death, she eventually ceased and the two got back up. Naruto grinned at Hana who huffed in annoyance before she let a small smile appear in her face when she felt Naruto peck her on the cheek. Big dumb blonde. Do you think they will be ready? 
8 days is not a lot of time, and let's not forget who we are dealing with, Hana asked since it had been on her mind. While she was confident they could get the genin stronger than they were, she wasn't sure it would be enough. She felt him put his arm around her shoulders, and she decided to lean in and enjoy his warmth. Wave country was not the warmest of countries. I think they will be fine. It's not like we are going to let them face Zabuza after all, he told her while Hana nodded in relief. Either I or Kakashi will deal with Zabuza. While Hana didn't like the idea of her childhood friend fighting someone like Zabuza, she had to remember this was the young man that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Sandema Hokage. If he could hold his own against someone like him then she knew he would be fine. And the others. Naruto tapped his chin in thought. From how they described the hunter Nin, he or she can't be any older than 15 to 16 years of age. If we train them up enough then they might be able to handle them. At least Aiji and Sasuke anyway. I think Sakura might be better off just protecting the bridge builder. I agree. I highly doubt she will be ready in 8 days. Hana responded as she eyed the pink-haired girl. She has potential, but 8 days won't be enough to bring it out. Once we get back maybe I could speak with Shizun. Sakura's chakra control is impressive, so she could make a fine Mednin. I hadn't thought of that. Hana said and thoughtfully agreed. Mednins were crucial and too few in number in Kanoha. Having a Mednin on any squad was a boon. You think you can handle things here for me Hana-chan? Naruto asked and saw Hana nod her head, though it looked like she wanted to know where he was going. Where are you headed? Into the town. I want to get a good layout of the place and see if I can't get any information out of some of the thugs this Gato has. Anna nodded as she watched Naruto make another clone to hold Sasuke and Aiji before he leapt away and made his way into the town. Down, if Naruto was a lesser man then he would have teared up and broken down as he walked through the streets of Wave. He could feel various emotions building up inside of him ranging from sadness all the way up to anger. Everywhere he looked he saw people homeless and starving. Their clothes were in rags and all of them looked like they had not showered in weeks. People ranging from the elderly to middle-aged, even to children were on the streets looking lifeless and hopeless. This, the so-called business tycoon had taken everything from these people. Their homes, their jobs, their food, even friends and family. And knew the man likely did not feel a damn thing as he sat on his expensive chair eating like a king. He saw in what should have been a grocery store only hand scraps of food, which all ranged from prices that were too expensive for anyone to afford. He couldn't blame the owners since they were as much victims as everyone else. These people deserve better than this, he whispered while shaking his head. As he passed a corner, his anger spiked even more when he saw two thugs, no doubt two of Gato's hired mercenaries, pushing a young woman in a corner as they stuck their blades to her stomach. Her very pregnant stomach. You haven't paid up this week Yuka-chan, the taller of the two mercenaries told the woman as his head got a little too close to the woman and stuck his tongue out to lick the side of her face. You wouldn't want anything to happen to that whelp in your belly would you? The shorter of the two said as he stuck his blade to her stomach, causing the fabric to rip ever so slightly. The woman was crying as her hands tried to protect her large stomach. Please I can't afford it. I have nothing left to give, she cried out as hot wet tears began to form in her eyes. Both of the mercenaries grinned perversely at her. Oh I can think of something you can give us, the taller of the two told her as his hands went up to her dress and began yanking it down. Before the dress could be pulled all the way down however, the taller mercenary felt a sharp excruciating pain form in his chest and saw a pool of blood forming beneath him. What? He choked out before a blade appeared through his chest and he felt a pair of hands around his neck. The last thing he saw were Naruto's violet eyes before Naruto snapped the man's neck. Bastard. The smaller mercenary said but was stopped immediately with Naruto picking the man up by the throat and smashing his head against the stone building beside them. Trash, Naruto muttered as he formed a clone to get rid of the bodies. He turned towards the woman who was looking at him in fear, desperately trying to protect her baby with her arms. It's okay, he told her reassuringly. I'm not here to hurt you. I just saw what they were going to do to you and stepped in to stop them. I mean you no harm. The woman gulped as she took one step closer but kept her hands on her stomach. You shouldn't have done that. Gato will find out and he will come for your head, she told him, but was surprised to see him chuckle. Ma'am I'm not afraid of this Gato guy. I'm a shinobi and if he thinks mercenaries and bandits are going to scare me, then he is more stupid than I already think he is. But you. Naruto stopped her before she could say any more. Do you have somewhere you can go? Let me walk you home. I don't like the idea of someone in your condition walking home with so many thugs and lowlifes around. She nodded and Naruto told her to lead the way. She tried to protest telling him she would be fine, but Naruto wouldn't have it. There was no way he would let a pregnant lady who he could tell was very close to her due date run into people like those two thugs again. Not on his watch. For the next 10 minutes he walked beside her making him look like her protector with a shigure slung across his back, as if asking people to just try and pull something. They walked past a few of the mercenaries and they did try to start something. 
but each time Naruto quickly put them in their place. They made light conversation and found out her name was Yuka and that she worked at one of the orphanages in Wave Country that she ran with a group of women and her husband. However her husband was unfortunately killed by Gato's thugs when he tried to fight back against attacks put on all of them. She had gone to try and find food, but her pregnancy wouldn't allow her to go very far. So when are you due? Naruto asked looking down towards her stomach and saw the woman rub her belly affectionately. Two weeks today. I'm supposed to be on bed rest, but with my husband no longer with us, most of the orphanage workers have had to work double time with so little food and the cold nights. It doesn't help that Gato's thugs visit every few days to antagonize us. We do what we can for the children, but there's only so much we can do with the little resources we have. Naruto nodded in understanding as they arrived at a large worn down looking house and windows with holes and patches on top of the roof. The fences around it were mostly destroyed and the grass and flowers around it were all but dead. Do you live here? Naruto asked and saw Yuka nod sadly. It used to be such a warm and loving place for the children. But now it's a shadow of itself thanks to Gato, she told him as she pushed the door open. Since Gato arrived we now have triple the amount of children living here due to Gato's mercenaries killing parents when they can't pay up. Naruto followed her inside and he quickly felt his heartbreak when they walked in a large living room with at least a dozen children inside it wrapped up in blankets and sleeping bags. There were more children in the next room and with his sensory abilities he could sense there were at least 50 children all cramped inside this one large building with Yuka and four other women. Yuka-san, he heard and saw the children light up when she appeared and saw them all come up to her and cuddle around her. He saw the warm look in her eyes and saw her wrap as many as she could in a hug despite her large stomach. Yuxan thanks goodness you're safe, he heard and saw four other women appear. Two were around the same age while the other two were somewhere in their fifties. She quickly told them about her savior and Naruto was quickly showered with gratitude and thanks from the other four women and many of the older kids. The younger ones all looked up at him as if he was some kind of superhero. Very quickly the children all crowded around Naruto and with Naruto being the warm-hearted person he knew he was, he sat on the floor and began entertaining the children with his various shinobi tricks. For the next hour Yuka and the other workers were all smiles as they listened to the children laugh and shout out in amazement as Naruto performed trick after trick, showing them fire shaped like little animals or using the hinge to look like something funny. The biggest pop though was when he summoned a few of the younger tiger cubs for the kids to play and cuddle with. They were a big hit and he was happy and smiling as watched the little children play and cuddle with them, looking far happier than they did when he first walked in. Once again Naruto's heartstrings were getting pulled when a little girl no older than four with dark hair and big brown eyes found herself being drawn more and more towards Naruto. She nestled happily on his lap as she played with one of the cubs. Despite his good deed and keeping the kids entertained, Naruto wanted to do something that lasted and wanted to do something for them to protect them from Gato's thugs and make sure these children and the brave women that looked after them were kept warm. He looked around and he knew that he could definitely do something about the house. It was a wooden house and that immediately gave him an idea. If there was ever a good reason to use it, then now would be a perfect time he thought as he stood up. The little girl who was on his lap pouted, making him laugh before she smiled again when he patted her hair. Yuka-san how helpful would it be if you had another building for the children to live in? Naruto asked and saw Yuka and the other women look at him funny. It would be extremely helpful since this one is falling apart. She told him and she watched in confusion as he got up and saw him head outside towards the back of the house. She waddled after him with the other women in tow along with the children that wanted to see where the cool new superhero was going. I ask that you keep what I'm about to do a secret everyone for the time being, Naruto asked the five adults and saw them hesitate for a moment before nodding. Can you kids keep a secret? Yeah. They all shouted, making him laugh. They watched as Naruto made various hand signs before he slammed his hands on the ground. Don't you can no jutsu. He said as everyone felt the ground beneath them begin to shake and watched in amazement as four very large houses suddenly appeared out of the earth, standing in a row and looking as if they had been newly built by the carpenters. Each house was the same size as the current house they were in only in far better condition. The adults could feel hot tears appearing in their eyes as Naruto turned around grinning at them. I figured these four houses would provide enough room for the five of you and all the children. None of them have holes in or are damaged in any way, so they will be a lot warmer than this current house. He walked up to one of the houses and knocked against it with his fist. The woods are strong so it won't be damaged very easily. It will take a lot of force to even make a dent in it. I'd say with the room sizes you could easily fit at least 30 kids in each house so you have plenty of room to spread out. Naruto's grin seemed to wake them all up as the kids who had been awestruck quickly cheered and went running towards the new homes with the adults quickly following after them, not before each gave him a hug and kiss on the cheek and praised him for being set out of heaven. He saw how happy they all looked and saw a bit of hope return to their previously hopeless eyes. Knowing there was a lot more he could do, Naruto disappeared and headed towards the ocean. 
they all hoped they would get to see him again, and they got their wish, just as the afternoon was coming to a close, and the orange sky appeared above them. Who's hungry? They all heard as the adults all came out of each house, having set up an order of who would be in which house and where the children would sleep. If they were teary-eyed before then they were bawling their eyes out now. They watched as Naruto walked alongside four of his clones that he had made earlier to impress the kids. In two of the clones' hands they saw large nets full of freshly caught fish. They didn't even wonder how he could carry such a large net of fish all by himself, since they were more awestruck at how many there were in each. There must have been at least a hundred fish in each net. Beside them the other two clones carried piles and piles of fresh new blankets. Naruto had put a favor in with Kiara and asked if she could get him some warm, comfortable and soft new blankets for the children. The white tiger summons had always been good to him and they did so again when they fulfilled his request. I've never fished before so I kind of winged it. I hope this is enough and the blankets are courtesy of our tiger friends. He told them before he found his dog piled on by the children who were all cheering his name while the adults were expressing their undying gratitude for him. There were happy tears all around. Never did they think when they woke up that morning that a stranger from another country would protect Yuka, build four new houses out of nowhere for them, catch enough fish for a week's worth of food, and bring them all dozens of new blankets for them to keep warm. He had one of his clones make a large stone pit where they could cook the fish, since there were no kitchens currently in the houses. Even he couldn't make kitchens appear out of thin air. They all sat down and cooked the fish before they began to chow down, as Naruto kept the children entertained again. So this is where you disappeared too. They all heard as they gathered around the fire as Hana appeared with her three by her side. She had gotten worried when he never returned for dinner at Tsunami's home and went off to find him with Hayate remaining behind with Team 7, Tazuna and his family. Everyone was beginning to wonder where you were. She knew he would not have been in trouble since Naruto could take care of himself. But she knew that her friend no doubt found some new project to diverge on. Hey Hana-chan, he spoke with a mouthful of freshly cooked fish, making a few of the kids around him giggle at him. Hana looked around and saw all the happy faces and quickly smirked at the blonde man. I'm guessing this is what you're doing. She asked and saw him nod his head happily as her three went and sat beside some of the children and let them pet them. Naru Naichin is the best, she heard all of the kids say as they happily munched on the fish, quickly showing how hungry they were. Each kid had at least three helpings, even the younger kids devoured their food like little monsters, and the caretaker spent a good few minutes wiping the younger ones' faces. Naruto felt one of the younger children poke him in the arm and was pointing towards Hana who by now had come to stand beside Naruto. Ani-chan is she or this? She asked as she pointed to the ring finger. She's really pretty. It took only a moment for both of them to understand what she was asking as Naruto threw his head back laughing and Hana blushed and quickly shook her head. No no sweetie, we're just friends. Good friends that's all, Hana told the little girl who just looked at her absentmindedly. Though Naruto leaned down and whispered something in the girl's ear that made her begin giggling. What are you saying to her? Hana inquired, but Naruto just grinned back and winked at her. Naruto seriously what did you say? Hana asked again, but Naruto just continued to grind until he saw Hana fear a annoyed look on her face and saw her go to swat him in the head. Naruto though ducked it and jumped away onto one of the roofs, getting everyone's attention. You really want to know Hana-chan? He asked and saw Hana nod her head and getting an impatient look appear on her face as well. I just told her you're secretly in love with me and that you've been trying to get me in your bed for a long time. He began laughing and quickly ducking and rolled out the way as Hana lunged at him with a great burst of speed, her eyes narrowed and slitted showing. Her body shook with annoyance and anger before taking off after Naruto when he began to move. Don't deny our love for Hana-chan. We can be together forever, Naruto laughed out as he dodged a swipe from Hana as she chased after him, fully intending to beat him into the ground. Around the fires the children and adults all laughed at the interaction as Naruto narrowly avoided Hana's attack as he laughed out loud. He was thanking Kami above that Anko wasn't here. Chapter 25 Are you both ready? Naruto asked as he stood side by side with Hana and Hade as they stood high above the ground on the treetops. Down below they looked down upon a large hidden hideout five miles away from the main town in Wave Country. The past seven days the trio had spent in Wave Country they had spent both helping the town and ensuring the genin team Aiji was on, was ready for a confrontation with Zabuza and his accomplice. In town Naruto's multiple clones continued fishing in the harbor and feeding the town with what he caught. It put smiles on the faces of many people and it kept them fed each day which was a step up from their previous situation. He helped with their food as much as they could but he knew money was what would ultimately help this town. And they needed lots of it. Secretly he had used his Mokuten to build more houses. A few here and there to prevent suspicion from the others. Now was not the right time to reveal the power he somehow inherited from the Shidema Hokage. At Tsunami home Hayate and Hana had helped the Genin team while Hana had focused her time on Sakura. 
the girl was truly pitiful, but was at least making steps to improve her physical abilities. You couldn't have just brains in the shinobi world. The brawn was needed just as much. For that they got Sakura's stamina up while making progress on making her chakra reserves larger. Hopefully sense had finally been knocked into the girl. At least that's what they all hoped anyway. They managed to at least get rid of the stupid diet the girl was on. But Sasuke and Aiji the two had been taught how to walk on water. Once they did so they were told to spar with one another, learning to control their chakra to keep them on top of the water while trying to focus on their opponent at the same time. It took a while, but eventually they finally got there. They would train Sakura in the water walking exercise once her chakra was up to snuff. Then the two boys were told to focus on what they knew before they were taught a new lesson. So Naruto had Hate watch over them in practice. This way they could gain better mastery over them, control the amount of chakra better, while enabling them to make them more powerful while using less chakra. Both boys grumbled at that since they thought they were good enough as it was, but a quick spar with Hate showed them how wrong they were. Naruto was confident that Team 7 could hold the duo down long enough for them to arrive at the bridge. Kakashi was ready, Aiji was ready, Sasuke was ready, and Sakura he hoped was ready. So do you think he's really there? Hayde asked, his eyes focused intently on the building. What if everything the guy told us was lies? The trio had spotted a member of Gato's thugs and decided it was time to end Gato's reign in Wave Country once and for all. They had seen the destruction that he had caused and knew that enough was enough. No one, not even a rich man like Gato would be allowed to get away with such horrendous crimes. Filling innocent lives, forcing people out of their homes and rendering people homeless and starving. Naruto would not allow such an evil person to live a moment longer. I know he is. Hana responded, her eyes going all canine-like as she and the triplets growled. I can smell him from up here. The man smells repulsive. I'm actually looking forward to this. You and I both. Naruto responded as he dropped out of the treetops and marched towards the hideout. Do you think Zabuza and the unknown shinobi are within? Hayde asked as Hana smelled the air. They knew they would have a fight on their hands if the Seven Swordsman member was inside. It was a good thing for them that Naruto was with them and had experience when it came to fighting the swordsman. Before she could answer, Naruto already beat her to it. They are not. They both would have had large chakra signatures if they were, but I'm sensing no one of that nature. It's just bandits. No ninja training whatsoever if I'm reading it right. They've gone for the bridge. Naruto nodded. It's likely. The team on the bridge will be fine. Kakashi can deal with Zabuza, and I'm confident that Aiji, Sasuke and Sakura can handle the accomplice. Are you? Are you worried? Hana asked as she touched his elbow. Despite his hard expression, she knew he must have been troubled with the fact that his brother would be in such close proximity with a member of the Seven Swordsmen. She knew if it was Kiba on the bridge then she would want to be there to protect him. Even if she and her little brother weren't seeing eye to eye right now. An older sibling couldn't help but be worried about their younger siblings. I am but I'm confident IG will be okay. He knows when he is over his head and he knows how to deal with stressful situations. Remember Hanachan was taught by our parents. IG knows how to keep himself safe. Naruto explained while taking a deep breath. Besides I left a clone watching from afar just in case. That way the clone could let me know if something was going wrong. So how are we going to do this? Sneak through the roofs and take them out one by one before we get to or just go straight for where Gato is residing. Neither. Naruto told them as he took out his swords and immediately slashed the wall to pieces, creating a large entrance for them into the building. We're going to force our way through and kill anyone who gets in our way. Both watched as Naruto jumped through the destroyed wall and began to unleash hell on all the bandits that got in his way. Behind him Hana smirked wildly and decided to let her inner beast out. Hey, it watched Hana get on all fours alongside her, her hair going wild and spiky before she charged inside and could already begin to hear her fang over fang being put to good use. Hey, it sighed and scratched his head before he took out his sword. Might as well get this over with, he whispered to himself, letting out one last cough before he joined his comrades. Inside, get out of my way you fool. Gato shouted as he pushed one of his hired bandits out of the way, a briefcase in his hand, as he yanked a painting off of the wall to reveal a safe behind it. He was a very short man who barely came up to most people's shoulders with light brown hair that stuck upwards and small green glasses that barely covered his eyes. He wore an expensive looking suit while a cane rested in his left hand. Damn that's Abusa. I should have known he would fail. He muttered angrily to himself as he opened the safe and began stuffing large quantities of cash inside of the briefcase. He didn't care if small notes fell out. All he cared about was getting his money and running for his life. He had been enjoying his day, expecting Zabuza and his apprentice to arrive with the news that they had killed the bridge builder at last. Instead he heard a piece of the lower walls get destroyed before the sounds of pure carnage made it to his ears. He quickly sent as many of his bandits towards the intruders, which was roughly around 200. 
However if the noises he could hear as well as the loud growling and barks, he guessed they were getting hacked away like yesterday's dinner. Come on, come on. He muttered to himself trying to stuff as much as he could before eventually making it to his limit. He would have to try and come back for the rest when the intruder had either left or been killed by his thugs. His head shot up when he heard the yells of death become louder and louder and realized the intruders were now on the same floor as them and were likely just outside the door to his office. His head shot around to look at the dozen thugs that were in his office to protect him. Well don't just stand there. Go and kill them. I'm not paying you to just stand around and do nothing all day. He demanded though it didn't sound threatening with the fear lacing his voice. The thugs all gulped and looked at each other nervously. None of them particularly wanted to go out there. They knew whoever was out there could easily kill them if they had managed to get past all the thugs on the lower level. After a few seconds and feeling a swirl of courage, one of the thugs nodded to Gato and ran out of the room with his sword drawn high into the air. He exited through the door and cried out a loud war cry. A second later however that cry came to an abrupt halt. They all waited and listened before a loud thud hit the door to the office and a sword suddenly appeared through the wooden door with blood laced around the steel. I need to leave right now. Gato mentally shouted to himself before he ran across the room and opened one of the windows. He looked down and gulped when he saw the long drop to the ground. There was no way he was getting out of this with some kind of bodily injury. He contemplated it for a second before he heard the door getting smashed to pieces and he saw what could only be described as three pairs of demonic looking eyes, all scanning the room before landing on them. At them. He shouted making the thugs jump before they lunged and charged at the three shinobi. Edo didn't hang around to find out what happened before he jumped from the top of the widow and headed straight towards the ground. The moment the short man hit the ground he dried in agony as he felt a loud crack in his left leg and fell to the ground. It felt as if fire had gone up his leg and was burning him from the inside out. He didn't need to be an expert to know his leg was likely broken from the fall. He rolled around on the ground for a few seconds before he remembered what was happening. Despite the agonizing pain in his leg, he managed to stand with his leg dragged lifelessly. He was mentally thankful for the cane right now as he used it to help support his weight. As glass shattered from above him and screamed when the dead body of one of his thugs landed next to him, his throat cut with a large looking blade and eyes rolled back into the back of his head. Beto fought through the pain in his leg and moved as quickly as he could through the misty forest. He didn't dare look back as he was too afraid to see what kind of destruction and carnage lay there. I gotta get somewhere safe. I have to get to one of my safe houses. He mentally shouted to himself before a scream ripped through his throat as two pairs of sharp jaws locked onto both of his legs and pulled him down to the ground. He screamed and wailed in agony and tried to claw at the dirt before his pain sensors overloaded as two swords suddenly went through his hands and pinned him to the ground. His face was a mess of emotions as he very slowly tilted his head, pain still erupting from his throat as he looked up towards his captors. Naruto stood in front of him, his normally warm eyes now cold and emotionless, ignoring the fact that his clothes were covered in blood while having splatters of blood on his cheeks. Beside him Hana and Hayate were in a similar state, though Hana was growling at him viciously, her inner beast telling her to rip this man limb from limb. Two of the triplets had their jaws on his legs while the third was near his face, his muzzle almost touching his face. Please. P please don't kill me. I I'll give you whatever you want. Money, power, women, slaves, anything your name and I can give it to you. Just don't kill me. He wailed. He was desperate. He didn't want to die. This could not be the need of the mighty Gato. He still had so much to do. Naruto's face never changed. Anything. Naruto asked, showing Gato that maybe there was some hope. Yes, anything. You name it and I can do it. Gato repeated, a blink of happiness on his face. He might just live. All was silent before Naruto said bring everyone you had killed back to life. Very quickly Gato's face dropped as fear and horror appeared on his face, his skin losing all its color. Despite the pain going through his body he felt numb as he heard those words. Of all things it had to be the one thing that was impossible. He felt as if his life was flashing through his eyes. Be but I see can't do that. Was he managed to say before Naruto turned to look at Hana. Hana you know what to do. He whispered before Hana's face lit up with wicked retribution. The retribution of all of Wave Country as she spoke the three words Gato never wanted to hear. End him boys. The last thing Gato saw was the jaw of the third dog as it lunged at him and latched itself around his throat as life was literally ripped out of him. The three shinobi just stood there as Gato was quite literally ripped into pieces by Hanas. The death might have been brutal and vomit worthy, but all three knew Gato got exactly what he deserved. A disgusting death for a disgusting person. After another minute the dogs ended their assault, all three looking pleased that they were the ones who got to kill the one who caused such innocent people harm. The dog felt great pride and happiness as the three shinobi patted their heads while Hana cooed at them for killing the bad man. Anko was starting to rub off on her in a dangerous way. 
Naruto walked towards the mutilated body in front of him and removed his swords from Gato's hands. He sheathed Shusui before he used the other to swiftly cut off Gato's head. He needed proof after all that Gato was dead. What now? Hayate asked as Naruto used a fire to burn the rest of Gato's body. He watched as Naruto created four clones and ordered them to go back into the Gato's hideout and collect as many valuables as they could and seal them into scrolls. Everything in there would go to Wave Country in order to help them get back to prosperity and peace. Go to the bridge. Hana asked as she cleaned the triplets muzzled with a few handkerchiefs while getting rid of the blood on her face and her comrades' faces too. The bridge. We have a favor of goodwill to fulfill first. After all Naruto told them before they jumped into the trees and took off, the burning body of Gato remained on the ground and became nothing but a pile of ash. The bridge. Damn it Sasuke stop trying to fight him all on your own. Iji shouted as Sasuke got pushed back beside Iji, cuts and bruises covering their bodies as they stood inside a large dome of mirrors made of ice. The Achiha's face was one of annoyance and anger the moment they got trapped inside this ice dome. Their enemy was the accomplice of Zabuza Mamachi and was proving to be stronger than they first thought. They couldn't tell whether their opponent was a male or female due to the thick clothing and the mask covering their face. All they knew was that the name of this person was Haku. If that wasn't enough then they quickly discovered their opponent had a bloodline. The Hyotan bloodline that allowed Haku to combine water and wind to create an ice affinity. It quickly made their fight all the more difficult. That out of my way idiot. Sasuke demanded as the black-haired boy quickly ducked and rolled to the side when a large spear of ice was thrown at them from one of the mirrors in front of him. Iji rolled away as well before the two watched as Haku appeared in all of the ice mirrors as if they were being taunted. Sasuke's eyes spun rapidly as he openly glared at their opponent. He was extremely pleased with himself that moments ago he managed to awaken his Sharingan. It was a sign that he was getting stronger and that soon he would be able to surpass his brother. At least that's what he liked to believe as one Tomo presented itself in his left eye and two in his right. A short distance away and hidden in the mist, they could hear the battle going on between Kakashi and Zabuza. The grinning of Kakashi's kunai and Zabuza's mighty sword could be heard from a long distance away. Both Joan and Level Shinobi were going at it with everything they had. Somewhere they also knew was Sakura doing what she could to protect the bridge builder. She might not have been very strong, but she was determined to do her job at any cost. Even if a small part hoped it would impress Sasuke. It's a shame. I expected better from the son of the Firth Okage in an Ichiha. I guess I was wrong. Haku taunted as made of ice appeared in her hands. In all of the mirrors in fact. I'm an Ichiha. There is no one superior to us. Sasuke said hotly as Iji appeared behind him, standing back to back. Shut up Sasuke team. She's trying to get you all riled up so you make more mistakes. Shut up Namikas. I don't need your help. Yes you do. We can't beat this person alone. We need to work together. Iji encouraged, but Sasuke was blatantly ignoring him. Since his Sharingan awoke, it was as if Iji could feel Sasuke's ego and pride suddenly get boosted. If they survived this then he was not looking forward to putting up with Sasuke for the foreseeable future. Maybe you can't but I'm an Ichiha. Sasuke replied, making Iji feel like he was talking to a brick wall. Why did Ichihas have to have sticks up their asses? Why couldn't he be more like Itachi and his aunt Makoto? The duo managed to dodge the next set that was launched their way and only managed to dodge thanks to Sasuke's Sharingan and Iji's great reflexes. His father had drilled into Iji's head when it came to reflexes and dodging attacks. Fighting among each other is a sign that you will not win. How can you win when you are fighting with each other? Haku motioned before she jumped out of the mirror and landed a strike on Sasuke, though Iji managed to at least block with his forearms when she got to him. Iji threw his shurikens at the ice user while Sasuke fired a fire, but Haku quickly escaped their range by melding back into the ice mirror. See? Even our enemy thinks our teamwork sucks. Iji hissed at Sasuke as he quickly went back to back with Sasuke again. Like I care what this person thinks. I will not be beaten by the likes of you. Sasuke declared as he ran through his hand signs. Katen. Msenka no jutsu. He called before shooting flower-shaped fireballs out of his mouth that collided with many of the ice mirrors. Sasuke was about to grin, but his face quickly turned to one of disbelief and anger when he saw he had no effect. His opponent was still unharmed and didn't have so much as a burn mark on the clothing. How are they so strong? Sasuke hissed. He didn't understand what he was doing wrong. He should be stronger than this. He was in a chair. You heard what Kakashi Sensei said. There are people all over the world that are our age and yet are as strong as he is. Maybe even stronger. Look at Naruto and Itachi after all. They're only 18, and Itachi is already an Anbu captain, and Naruto managed a draw with the Sandane. Iji told him even if he knew it would do nothing to change their situation. You should listen to your friend. He sounds a lot smarter than you are. Haku told him before showering them with another wave of ice. 
this time though neither were as lucky as before and found her two landing the strike. Sasuke with two in his left left arm and Iji with three in his right leg. Both winced and felt their limbs go numb, hitting specific nerve points. Now we're really in trouble. Iji muttered while Sasuke's temper was just getting worse. With his arm numb he resorted to trying single-handed hand signs, but quickly felt Iji grip his arm and push it down. Don't be stupid. You try that you could end up getting yourself hurt. If you can't use single-handed hand signs then don't try without someone more experienced. Iji told him as Sasuke growled in annoyance. Well, do you have any bright ideas Namikas? Sasuke asked and to his surprise he saw Iji nod his head. I do but we need to work together. I might be able to put this person down. But I will need your help to distract Haku. He told Sasuke who for just this once put his pride to the side as Iji whispered into his ear. Haku observed the two boys conversing and felt that she would need to keep her guard up. If either of them were like their predecessors then she knew she couldn't afford to make a mistake. More appeared in her hands and were about to unleash them when she watched as Iji made the ram hand sign and shouted cage bunch and no jutsu. Aku watched as 20 solid replicas of Iji appeared in a poof of air and watched as they all began flying around the enclosed space, punching and kicking at the iced mirrors. Your efforts are futile. These mirrors of ice are laced with my chakra, thus strengthening them. You cannot break them with fists and feet. Haku told them in a boring tone. He had thought their previous efforts of attacking her mirror's head on were evidence enough. The copies didn't listen, and they continued anyway, as Haku quickly got annoyed with these repeated efforts. Clearly she was wrong at having high hopes at having a challenge with these two genin. Sensetsu Sushim. She commanded as dozens and dozens of ice appeared in her hands and prepared to throw them again at her enemy. There were enough to put down a small village if necessary. There was no way these two boys would be dodging the amount she was about to throw at them. However before she could she watched as Sasuke threw a kunai before her towards the fighting clones, with an explosion tag lighting up behind it. An explosion quickly sounded out and caught the attention of the others. Zabuza ceased his fighting with Kakashi for just a second and grinned from beneath his bandages covering his mouth. It sounds like Haku is having fun with your student Kakashi. I doubt they will last much longer at this rate. Haku is known for being quite cruel. Don't write my students off just yet Zabuza. They are stronger than they appear. They are of the Achiha and Namika's families. Kakashi told him before the two rushed each other, sparks flying off their weapons as they met. Haku covered her eyes. The explosion as well as the smoke from the destroyed clones had caused her vision to become very limited and couldn't see her toe opponent. Staring inside the ice mirror was causing her no vision and tentatively leaned part of her body out of the mirror the real her was residing in. Where are they? She thought before she saw the shadow of Sasuke Chiha appear and saw him throw kunai and shuriken towards with one good arm towards her. Not thinking about looking for the other boy she deflected each strike with her ice maker. All except one that was off target and sailed past her iced mirrors. Sasuke was barely standing. He had been a little too close to the explosion and had black soot covering his body. The fight was beginning to tax him more and more. All you have done was slow down the inevitable. I will now end you now just as Abusa sama has commanded. Haku told them only to realize that with the smoke now disappearing, Iji was now missing from the dome of ice. Haku now leaned her entire body out of the mirrors to get a better look. Neither boys were likely in any condition to fight her properly now. It was time she landed the final blows to them before making her way over to the bridge builder and their pink-haired comrade. Where is he? Ichiha-san. Sasuke's face slowly lifted up to meet her and surprised Haku when she saw he had a light smirk on his face while breathing heavily. Why don't you ask him yourself? Haku looked confused before she heard a puff of a transformation technique occur behind her, while the sound of swirling could also be heard, making her eyes widen as a bright blue light could be seen from behind her. She turned her body around only to find Iji inches away from her with a glowing ball of chakra in his right hand. Rasengan. The attack hit straight in the stomach of Haku, causing a mixture of saliva and blood to spit out of her mouth and run from under the mask. She spiraled through the air, crashing through the very ice mirrors she created before crashing to the ground hard. Gotcha. Iji muttered as he breathed hard before he fell to the ground panting hard. He crawled over to the side of the bridge and watched as the rest of the ice mirrors around Sasuke fell and smashed to pieces as they fell to the ground. Sasuke looked a little wide-eyed at Iji, while feeling a pang of jealousy appear in his stomach before he too fell to the ground as his previous chakra exertion finally hit him. It looks like my two students defeated your Zabuza. Kakashi said as he glared at Zabuza who stood in front of him with his great sword clashing with one of Kakashi's kunai. Sparks flew off the metal as they continued to press all their strength into the attacks. Don't get cocky, Kakashi. It's not over yet. Zabuza taunted before pushing Kakashi away and went through a number of hand seals. Izubunshin no jutsu. Dozens of water clones appeared around him and all immediately lunged at Kakashi, who covered his right hand in lighting with his shidori. Just try it. 
It's time I stopped holding back. Kakashi taunted back. He zoned in on the reels of Yuza with his Sharingan, intensifying the Chidori in his right hand and preparing to land the final blow. He watched the clones rush forward and knew that they would have zapped a portion of Zabuza's chakra away. Waiting until the moment was right, Kakashi shot forward at such speed that Zabuza was momentarily caught off guard. The Jonin from Kanoha sped through the clones of Zabuza before any one of them could strike Kakashi with a mighty sword. Zabuza could only watch as the Kakashi was destroyed before he could feel the sparks from the attack hitting him from where he stood. This is your end Zabuza. Just like I said. Kakashi told him as he got within just a few feet from the swordsman of the mist. Urkiri. Wait. The Kakashi heard as he got close to Zabuza who was looking at the copy ninja with surprised eyes at how fast he truly was and seeing how close to death he was with Kakashi attacks only inches away from his chest. A bead of sweat quickly ran down his face at knowing he had almost been bested once again by Kakashi. Zabuza and Kakashi watched as Naruto, Hana and Hade appeared a couple of meters away, all still covered in the blood of the mercenaries at Gato's hideout. All three had a serious look on their faces before Naruto sent Hana to heal up Aiji and Sasuke, while Hate went to ensure Sakura and the bridge builder were okay. Zabuza Mamachi, Demon of the Hidden Mist. Zabuza took a good look at the young man beside him before realizing who he was. Kanoha's Bladed Devil. What do you want, kid? Naruto bristled at the comment of being a kid but shrugged it off for a moment. He unsealed a scroll from one of the seals on his wrists before throwing the scroll to Zabuza who quickly caught it and opened it up. What are you doing, Naruto? Kakashi questioned but got no response back from his sensei's eldest son who kept his eyes on Zabuza. The demon of the mist showed no reaction while reading the contents that were inside of the scroll. After a minute of silence he finally looked up from the scroll. And is this real? This is no joke. He finally asked before Naruto nodded in confirmation. Naruto shook his head while placing his hand on the hilt of Shusui. Zabuza Mamachi on the special orders of Mei Turumi, the fifth Mizukage, I have been requested to tell you it's time for you to go home. Kurigakura is now free of Yugura's reign and is in need of your help to rebuild. If you should decline this offer, Naruto drew Shusui and pointed it towards Zabuza. Then I will kill you where you stand. The sheer iron look that was in Naruto's eyes almost frightened Zabuza who couldn't help but gulp. Even Kakashi felt a shiver go down his spine. Aside. Now. Chapter 26. Naruto sat on his knees in Tsunami's home with Shusui placed on his lap, currently sheathed, but he did have one hand near the hilt, ready to be used if it was necessary. He was fine and completely unharmed, wearing some light clothing. His violet eyes looked as hard as steel, and his body was ready at a moment's notice. Why? Sad in front of him staring right back at him was the demon of the mist, Zabuza Mamachi, who had a couple of extra bandages covering his body after his fight with Kakashi. The Kuchibacho was resting against the wall beside him, with Zabuza's hands close to the hilt in a similar manner to Naruto. To everyone's relief and soon to be Kiri's joy, Zabuza, along with Haku, agreed to return to Kiri, knowing now that the destruction Yagura had been causing their country was over and was now being rebuilt. With their original goal now ceasing, there was no better time than to return to their homeland. But Zabuza returning to Kiri, their strength would increase, and the future generations of Kiri would have a strong mentor to look up to. A new generation of seven swordsmen would soon be born. Around the room everyone else could feel Naruto and Zabuza sizing each other up as only two swordsmen would do. Their overall aura around them was calm and peaceful for the moment, but any moment they could change and begin fighting like two alpha lions, proving who was the top predator around. Aku was close to her mentor, sitting only a few feet away with her underneath her sleeves, ready at a moment's notice. She had heard about Naruto of course through the bingo book that Zabuza would regularly get updated. With proven abilities as well as being responsible for the death of two members of the Seven Swordsmen in the past. It made a scared feeling surge through her. This young man who was only a few years older than her was easily stronger than her mentor, a strong air rank shinobi. Such power for one so young. Hana and Hayde observed from the other end of the room drinking tea that the tsunami had served them just moments before. The triplets were sitting around Hana who gently stroked the top of their heads as they ate some treats she had brought with her. While Hayate would have liked to have been a part of the two swordsmen sizing one another up, he knew he didn't have the strength nor power to match Zabuza as he was. He wasn't that good yet. Team 7, however, were currently out with Tizuna, who wanted to stay as far away from Zabuza and Haku as he could, not feeling comfortable with the two shinobi hired to kill him living under his roof. Sakura had remained unharmed since none of the bandits nor Zabuza and Haku had paid any interest to her or Tizuna during the fight. Kakashi had only minor wounds with his fight forms Abusa, while Aiji and Sasuke's were a little more extensive, given the amount of ice that had stabbed them. Either way Naruto and Hana had patched them up and they would be fine by the time they got back to the leaf village, albeit with a couple of tiny scars returning with them. I hear you're pretty good with that blade of yours. Zabuza muttered, bringing up some tea to his lips as he pulled down his bandages. 
He wouldn't let his guard down, not around this kid in front of him. I hear you're the same. The demon of the mist. Such a violent title. Naruto expressed this while doing the same. Like Kanoha's blade devil is any better. I dare say your reputation is even greater than mine. After all, you have killed two of my former comrades in the last five years. Naruto's hand twitched momentarily before laying the cup down on the ground. He pulled Shusui out of the sheath slightly, showing just a tiny amount of metal that still managed to glint light into the eyes of most. Is that a problem with you? Tabuza barked out a loud laugh that surprised most, even making the jump into the air. If anything you did me a favor. I couldn't stand those two fools. Raiga thought far too much of himself despite being the weakest of the seven, while Kushimaru was far too quiet and secretive for my liking. Even for a shinobi the man creeped me out. Interesting that you should say Raiga was the weakest. Of your generation who was the strongest? Naruto asked. He knew of many of the swordsmen and previous swordsmen. But there was one in particular who had always eluded Konoha and never had much info on. The dark look quickly formed on Zabuza's face at the mention of the strongest. Even Haku beside him gulped and looked rigid as the question was asked. That idle kid belongs to only one man. Kisum Hashigaki. The strongest of the Miss Swordsmen by a large margin. How large of a margin are we talking about? Naruto wanted as much information on the man as he could in the chance he ever met him in the future. He did seem to attract the Miss Swordsmen like moths to a flame. Zabuza quietly snorted while his hands clenched. He wields the strongest of the seven Kiri blades, Samahata. A living sword that grows stronger by feeding on the chakra of the person that wields it. Only a handful of people have even successfully wielded it due to the amount of chakra it takes. Naruto noticed Zabuza avoided the question and asked again. How powerful is he? Zabuza took another sip of his tea as the others in the room all waited and listened to his words. I'll put it this way. The man's chakra is so dense and powerful that he is more like a tailed beast than a man. Naruto could hear Heid and Hana take a big gasp of air while Haku looked away. Naruto gripped Shusui hard in his hand. The very thought of someone with that much chakra was unbelievable. Very few people in history had ever acclaimed to that level of chakra on their own. Not even some cage had ever reached that level. However, Naruto couldn't help but notice the venom in Zabuza's voice as he spoke. It meant Zabuza and Kisum had some kind of history. Do you have some kind of vendetta against him? By your reaction to just speaking his name? Naruto asked as Zabuza nodded. Kisum Hashigaki is responsible for killing my mentor, Fuguki Sukizen, the previous wielder of the Samahata. And then afterwards he fled like a coward. He has rarely been seen since. Remaining out of sight since then. Zabuza rubbed a spot on his chest. We ran into him once. It didn't end well or in our favor. He muttered while Haku rubbed her left shoulder. Any advice if I should ever run into him in the future? Naruto asked while Zabuza looked at him with full seriousness. Yeah. Run and don't look back. He doesn't cut. He shreds you to pieces. Zabuza answered back before the member of the Seven Swordsmen got up and left the room with Haku quickly following after him. Well wasn't he cheerful. Hana muttered. Naruto and Hei both nodded before Naruto noticed Hana was looking a little red-faced and was very subtly rubbing her thighs together. A smirk appeared on his face that caught Hana's attention. Why are you smirking? I didn't realize you were missing Anko so much. She must take good care of you. He told her before winking at her coyly. It didn't take Hana very long to realize what he was insinuating and had figured out. Her face was even more red than before, while her eyes turned angry with her pupils turning into slits. As Naruto began laughing Hana lunged at him with a blonde narrowly avoiding her sharp nails. Sorry Hana-chan, but I can't serve you like that. For shame for betraying sweet Anko-chan. Naruto taunted before he began running around the house laughing while Hana chased him from behind, swearing up a storm as she tried to make her friend pay for his teasing. Here they go again. Hey it whispered while the triplets watched their owner and partner in confusion with their heads tilted slightly to the side. No running in the house. Tsunami shouted at the two teenagers, a broom in one hand and a frying pan in the other. She would not have two shinobi destroying her house, especially not waking up her son who was napping after the long events of the week. While Naruto did stop, Hana did not and quickly pounced on the blonde boy. The two tumbled on the ground before they ended up with Hana on top growling and snapping at Naruto, while said boy was trying to keep her at bay. Naruto was laughing despite the situation, while Hana was becoming increasingly annoyed. They ate though blushed at how sexual their position was. Though he kept quiet since he didn't want Hana to try and attack him too. Ah you stupid blonde bastard. I love you too Hana-chan. Before anything could happen, Hana yelped in surprise as a frying pan hit the back of her head, making her see stars and tumble forward. Tsunami stood behind her glaring at them in annoyance, while Naruto scratched the back of his head in nervousness. Be sorry Tsunami-chan. Tsunami humbled before she turned around and walked away. As Naruto sat up a small puff of smoke appeared next to him, revealing a tiny white tiger kitten that he could easily pick up with his one hand. 
Hello, Narusama. The little kitten called out before showing Naruto a small scroll attached to her back. She purred and rubbed her body along his leg before allowing his access to the small scroll. She sent me here to give you this. Naruto knew who she was and quickly took the scroll and opened it up to begin reading it, his eyes going over the words written in black ink. While he read the scroll he gently patted the little cub's head and tickled her tummy, making her roll around on the ground in delight. The triplets looked annoyed at the cat but did nothing. She would grow to be bigger than all of them put together. Once he was done reading it, he looked at the clock on the wall before looking back to the little tiger cub. Thank you Mickey. You can head on back now. Bye bye Nirusama. She called before she disappeared back to the realm of the white tigers. Hana, who was sitting up and was rubbing her head, finally noticed what he was doing, while Hayate was just starting over in confusion. What's that you have there? Hana asked. Oh this. It's nothing. Just something from my summons. He lied before he stood up and slipped on his sandals. I'm going to run a boundary check on the area. Make sure none of Gato's goons have tried their luck now that Gato is gone. I'll come with. I need to run off some steam now anyway. Hana replied back and went to stand up before she was stopped by Naruto. Don't worry Hana-chan. I got it. It won't take me long. Naruto enforced as he patted her shoulder while heading towards the door. Both his teammates watched him go with Hana turned to look at Hayde in confusion when Naruto had left the room. Well that was weird. What do you think that was all about? Hana asked but saw Hay just shrug his shoulders. No idea. It was no weirder than usual. He coughed out before lifting his cup to Tsunami for more tea, who happily did so. Hana huffed before looking in the direction Naruto had left in. Just what had her friend suddenly left so quickly over? Forests of wave, Naruto couldn't help but walk at a brisk pace as he avoided sharp branches and bushes. His footsteps were silent despite his movements and had his sensory abilities on alert as he kept checking his surroundings. He had not seen the woman he was looking for in over six months and it had been killing him almost every day. Their last meeting was very memorable, since some special words were spoken as well as shared a very special night together. They had never been together for more than a day in over two years, but he savored every single moment and remembered every single glance at her. Over two years they had managed to meet a couple of times. With the help of his summons, they were able to message each other on a constant basis, which helped keep their relationship alive and keep it progressing. A couple of pictures, gifts and mementos were traded as well. I know you're here somewhere. He whispered before he stopped at the base of a large tree that was significantly taller than the others. He stood at the base of the tree and stood there for what felt like hours, though it was only about 10 minutes. Before long he felt a blip on his sensors and could feel a chakra source coming towards him. It was strong. Jonan level at best and was coming straight towards him and at a rapid speed. He turned towards the direction it was coming from before he readied himself for the incoming person. It didn't take long before a slim figure in a grey cloak bounded forward through the trees and lunged off from the top of a branch. The figure shot straight towards him and quickly barreled into him, knocking the two of them to the ground. Naruto wrapped his arms tightly around the figures as they rolled across the ground, knocking away a couple of rabbits that were passing by. Once they stopped rolling across the ground Naruto found himself on the bottom while the cloaked figure straddled the top of him with their legs tightly by his side. Before Naruto could say or do anything the figure leaned down and he felt a pair of warm lips begin attacking him. Instead of looking surprised Naruto happily began to reciprocate the kiss back while his hand came up to the hood and quickly pulled it off. Her hair had grown out a little now reaching just down to her shoulders but was still shorter than most. Her pink eyes glinted in mischief and her body had become even more womanly than before with shapely hips and a butt that Naruto couldn't help but let his hands wander around. Her chest was not nearly as big as Hana or Anko, but it gave her a beauty that added a sexual look about her. Hiritsuchi of Ai was sat happily on top of her leaf shinobi lover before being moved to his lap as Naruto began to sit up, making sure the woman on his lap didn't try to leave. Their lips were still together and were hungrily reciprocating each other's pent-up feelings. Since their meeting two years ago at the Fire Daimyo's palace, they had been meeting up whenever they could for months at a time. Feelings quickly began building up between one another before they soon became boyfriend and girlfriend though neither told their families for obvious reasons. The Kanohi ninja dating an Iwa shinobi. Both villages would prefer hell to freeze over. Kami I've missed you. It's been way too long. Naruto said in between kisses while Kurisuchi's hands began running through his blonde hair. It has. These last six months have taken their toll on me. I've lost count how many times I wanted your summons to bring me to you in Kanoha. Or you to Iwa. Naruto grinned as he momentarily broke the kiss, his violet eyes staring into her pink ones. I can't imagine our families would be too happy about that. My mother has already begun trying. Oh I can imagine. Kuritsuchi whispered back into his ear, bringing her head forward and taking gentle nips on his ear. But do you really want to talk about our families right now or just enjoy the moment we have together? 
Naruto smiled as his hand gently cupped the side of her face while his thumb gently stroked her cheek. How long do we have? Not long. An hour at most. My unit will be wondering where I am if I'm gone any longer than that. Then let's stop stalling and just enjoy the hour we have together. Naruto responded as their lips quickly reconnected and their hands began unclothing the other. Their clothing dropped to the ground before the sound of moaning and gasps could be heard from their section of the forest. Tsunami's house. Ani-chan, we're back. Iji called out as he ran into the bridge builder's home in search of his older brother. The day was pretty boring now that they didn't have a crazy missing ninja and his apprentice trying to kill them. Well they were still around but at least they weren't trying to kill them anymore. Iji ran into the living room expecting to see Naruto, but instead found Hana and Hei alone with a recently returned Haku. Said girl was in the middle of pinning up her hair with a pair of and saw Iji walk in. Behind Iji Kakashi, Sasuke, Sakura and Izuna walked in. Izuna was looking very pleased with himself with the work on the bridge. Many of the other builders in the town had begun returning to work on the bridge now that Gato was no longer around. In fact, with Gato gone, life in Wave Country was slowly returning back to normal. Wave had been through hell, but it was now finally beginning to heal. Naruto went out to do a patrol check on Iji Kun. He'll be back in a while. Hana told the younger Namikas before patting the spot next to her, making Iji cross the room and take a seat next to the older Inuzuka. When will he get back? Do you think he'd be up for a spar later? Hana laughed and ruffled his hair. I'm sure he will. Aren't you all worn out yet? She asked but saw the blonde boy shake his head negatively. I got too much energy. I don't feel tired at all. Iji responded before a challenging look appeared on his face. Do you want to spar Hanani? Hana couldn't help but let a feral smirk appear on her face at the challenge. She guessed she could humor him a little. She was a jonin after all. Alright I'm game. But don't go crying to your brother if I beat you up too bad. She warned. It'll be the other way around. I'm going to send you crying back to Anko Nichan. Iji shot back before the two rushed outside to get their spar underway. I better make sure she doesn't go overboard. Hey ate muttered while patting his chest, thankful he didn't experience another coughing fit. They all watched him leave and noticed Haku follow too. And where are you going? Kakashi asked, looking at the black-haired girl. Do many people watch them? She said before leaving the room and following after Iji and Hana. Back with Naruto, that was fantastic. Kuritsuchi muttered breathing hard as she fell backwards and landed on top of an equally out-of-breath Naruto while her hand ran through his blonde hair. Their bodies were covered in sweat as their lovemaking eventually came to an end. Their legs were tangled together as Naruto's arm lay spread out through the cool grass. Yeah. It. Was. He grinned before he began rubbing circles into her side. Your stamina has gotten better. You were able to keep up with me this time. He got an elbow in the ribs but saw her grin back at him. I won't be defeated by that Yuzumaki stamina you're all known for. I'm sure your mother keeps your father on his toes in the bedroom. She laughed when she saw him go a little green in the face. Please never mention that again. I really don't need the image of my parents doing that in my mind. The two sat there for a good five minutes as they basked in the afterglow of sex. They just stared up between the trees while Naruto kept his arms wrapped around her and kept her close to him. Their clothes lay scattered across the ground, though somehow Kuritsuchi's bra had ended up in the trees by some means. I should get going. My squad will be wondering where I am if I stay any longer. She muttered as she sat up and left her lover's embrace, noting how cold it was without his skin touching hers. Quickly though she felt him appear behind her and rewrap his arms around her waist and bring her back to his chest. I hate all this sneaking around. He whispered into her ear before lowering his head onto her shoulder. He heard her sigh and felt her nod her head in agreement, I know. I hate it too. It doesn't help that our two villages are so far from one another. And that's on top of how much they hate each other. Kuritsuchi responded back. I hate not being able to see you every day. We each have our own duty with our villages. Not to mention our families. Kami I wish life could be so much simpler. So do I. The two stood and stared at one another as they pressed their foreheads together, closing their eyes and enjoying each other's presence. When? When do you think we can see each other next? I don't know. I do know that the exam will be taking place in Konoha this year. Naruto told her. Do you think your grandfather will let a team go? I really don't know. I've told you what he's like. How stubborn he can be. She replied back. They were silent as they parted momentarily to put their clothes back on, neither felt the hill on their bodies form the cold air. Once they were clothed again they turned back to look at one another and joined hands together. I miss you. I miss you too. Promise you will write and let me know what your grandfather decided about the exams. Naruto asked her. If she was going to be in Konoha then he wanted to know. Even if it would be difficult he wanted to make as much time for them to be together as possible without prying eyes. She nodded before a coy smirk appeared on her face and placed a finger underneath his chin. 
How do I know you're not just using me to gain intel on my village? Naruto smirked back. How do I know you're not just using me for the same? He asked back before the two met together for one last kiss, their arms wrapping around each other tightly. Both savored the last kiss they would have for likely some time. After a full minute of being connected they broke apart. Naruto stood still as Kuritsuchi gave him a sly wink before she took off. She jumped up into the trees, hopping along the thick branches before she quickly disappeared. Naruto stood still for a couple of minutes, sensing Kuritsuchi's chakra signature, before eventually turning around and heading back towards the bridge builder's home. He needed a long shower. The last thing he wanted was Hana smelling a woman scent all over him. Something he knew she would likely pick up on. Days later, home sweet home. Naruto muttered as he, Hana, Hei 8 and Team 7, walked through the large red doors of Konoha's southern gate. He turned his attention towards the gate guards, saying my squad and Team 7 have returned from our respective missions. Thank you Naruto-san. The Hokage already told us of your expected arrival earlier. Head on straight to the Hokage building. They told him getting a confirmed nod from the blonde. Will do. Thanks. Naruto replied before turning to Team 7 and his teammates. Glad to be back home Aiji. Yeah definitely. The waves were cool and all, but I'm just glad to be home. I just want to go home and go to bed. Aiji admitted having missed his comfy bed more than anything. Seeing his home he couldn't help but feel some of the stress and worry he had been carrying since the mission began to slowly wash away. Only now that he was home did he finally relax knowing it was over. Yeah I know what you mean. There's nothing better in the world than home. What about you, Hana-chan? Are you glad to be home? The tone he spoke in made Hana give him an annoyed glare, understanding what he was referring to. Or should she say who she was looking forward to seeing now that she was home? Don't make me bite and scratch you. Shouldn't you be saving that for the bedroom? He whispered though Hana heard him and let a growl come from her chest, which only made him chuckle, while Laiji looked at them in confusion. What are you talking about? Don't worry. You'll understand in a few years. Aiji pouted at his older brother as they began making their way towards the Hokage building. Though before they could go too far they had to stop as a dust cloud began speeding straight towards them, with no signs of slowing down. They all squinted their eyes and all saw two human shapes right at the front of the dust cloud that must have been the ones making the commotion. All the people in the street were knocked out the way causing a lot of groans. Uh-oh. Naruto gulped when he noticed one had familiar red hair and the other dark hair. Aiji and Sasuke both quickly noticed it as well and had panicked looks on their faces. They forgot all about what their mothers were going to think about their C-rank turned A-rank mission. Hana, Sakura, Hei and Kakashi all stepped out of the way and watched as Kashina and Makoto barreled into their youngest sons, somehow managing to keep themselves standing and bringing them both in for a tight and lung-crushing hug. Both boys were looking a little blue, trying to speak as they were being crushed. Oh Iji kun you have no idea how worried I've been. Are you hurt? Do I need to take you to see Tsunidi? Kashina rambled on while Sasuke was getting something similar from Makoto. Both boys were trying to fight out of their mother's grasp, but it was all to no avail as they simply tightened their grip. Tell me what happened. I'm fine Kachan. I'm not hurt. Iji managed to say before he felt the air come back as Kashina finally began to let up. The mission was a success. We kick some serious ninja butt. You should have seen us. Kashina's expression though turned from was of relief to one of annoyance. Iji Namikas you have no idea how much trouble you're in. You too, Kakashi. Don't think I can't see you trying to sneak off. Kashina hissed out while grabbing the collar of Kakashi's shirt. I've already dealt with Minato who has spent the last week sleeping on the couch. You however. You will be getting something much worse. But I was just following orders. The masked ninja squeaked out, but Kashina was clearly not having any of it. Nor was Makoto who now shared the same look as her friend and took a hold of her son's collar now that he was released and grabbed Kakashi's with her other hand. The two mothers soon turned around with all three male members of Team 7 and began dragging them towards the Hokage building. Naruto get moving. Kashina yelled, not forgetting about her eldest. Don't you dare try to leave without our permission, Makoto shouted. Naruto looked downtrodden before slowly and silently following the two mothers while putting his hands in his pocket. What did I do wrong? He whined while ignoring the groaning of the civilians that were still on the ground. I think this is where you should run home before they try to punish you too. Hey, it whispered to Sakura who quickly complied and ran off. She had no desire to be punished by her teammates' crazy mothers. Anna who watched with a smile at seeing the loving mothers treat their sons as if they were still babies, felt a tap on her shoulder, along with a familiar scent hitting her nose. She only turned her head slightly to the right before a pair of lips connected with her own. She melted into the kiss and felt a pair of arms snake around her waist. You have no idea how much I've missed you. Anko muttered out as she tried to keep their lips connected. I know what you mean. Let's go home. We're taking a long hot shower. We're? 
Anko grinned with Hana giving her a knowing look before the two girls left as quickly as they could. Once out of sight it left only Hayate who was starting to feel a little left out that no one came to greet him. He didn't dwell on it too long before he went in the direction of his own home, thinking about maybe visiting Yugao if she was in. Chapter 27 Mido Namikas was not a happy camper. Not one bit. Her family were dining at the Akamichi Barbeque for the evening, a suggestion Minato had made since they had all had Ichiraku Raymond the day before. It had been two days after her siblings had returned from Wave Country, after Ig's supposed C-rank mission had changed into an A-rank mission and got to face off against a world-renowned shinobi and his apprentice. She had watched for days as her mother paced around their home, waiting for the news that her youngest son had returned to the village and had a shadow clone, keeping a lookout over all four of the gates. By then Makoto Ichiha had joined her, and the two family matriarchs had not been the most pleasant of women to be around. Even after Minato had informed them that Team 7 had survived an encounter with Zabuza Mamachi and got to wave safely, it had not dampened their worry. When they were told Naruto, Yugao and Hayde had gone as well they felt a breath of relief, but their worry remained. Their youngest sons who had only been genin for three months were facing a shinobi of an a rank caliber. Mido while being worried about her twin brother couldn't help but feel green with envy and made sure to hide it since her parents didn't need more problems. Her poor father was already sleeping on the couch. Not only that but since Aiji had come home Kishina had been keeping a very close eye on him, making sure there were no after effects from the mission. She wanted to know everything that had happened on that mission. Makoto had been the same. Despite anything he tried to say, Makoto would not let Sasuke out of her sight or out of the clan compound other than for team meetings and training. It was annoying the boy and had tried to set his mother straight, which led to a long argument between mother and son. Eventually Itachi had to step in since he and Shizuka could hear them from the Ichiha training grounds. He had calmed Makoto down, who in turn sent Sasuke to his room while placing seals around his room to make sure he didn't try to leave for midnight training sessions. The mother and youngest son were not on the greatest of terms right now, with Sasuke avoiding Makoto. But Mido couldn't help but think how lucky they were to have experienced a mission like they did. Battling powerful shinobi and saving an entire country. It was like something out of a fairy tale. To say she was jealous was putting it very mildly. It's still not fair. Mido courted as she bit into a piece of her barbecue ribs, ripping the meat straight off the bone and not caring about the mess it was making around her mouth. Iji got to go on one. Why can't I? Minato groaned as he enjoyed his meal, really wanting to put the negative feelings to rest over the wave mission incident. Kishina had only just let him back into their room the night before. He really didn't want to go back on the couch since it wasn't great for his back. He'd never admit it though since he didn't want people to start calling him old. Mito you know why. It was a mistake on my part and Kakashi's. I should have delved deeper into Tazuna sens request and I definitely shouldn't have allowed Team 7 to continue with the mission. It was a mistake on my part and it's a mistake I hope to never make again. Minato informed getting a stern look from Kishina as well as a nod. A mistake that could have gotten your brother killed Mido. Kishina remembered as she wiped Mina's face with a napkin, getting an irked look from the 10-year-old. She wasn't 5 anymore. If it wasn't for Naruto being on the delivery mission to Kiri and getting to Wave then the mission could have taken a very bad turn, one that results in someone's death. But you'll be with us Kachan, and you're even stronger than Kakashi Mido reasoned which means it's even more unlikely that anything will happen to us. It doesn't matter who goes with you or how strong one person might be. A mission can go wrong at any point in time. This has been a learning curve for both your father and I. Though mostly your father. Kishina explained as Minato lowered his head in shame, a depressed air around him. I said I was sorry already. Sorry doesn't change what happened to the girly man. The depressed air got worse while Kishina ignored her husband and focused on her eldest daughter. We will take a C-ranked mission in time since I feel the team has built up enough to do so, but any chance of a mission ranked higher is a long way off. I'm not letting you or IG go on to anything higher than a C-rank until you're both at least A. But. But that's not fair. Mido tried to reason but was quickly cut off by Kashina. Mido it's the end of this discussion. You know our feelings about this and I will not hear any more of it. Mido's face puffed up like a squirrel with too much food in its mouth and turned to her silent older brother who was sitting next to her. Naruto had been listening in for most of the conversation while enjoying his dinner, choosing not to say anything until being spoken to. His father, Kakashi and younger brother were already in hot water with Kashina, and he had no desire to join them. On each hand you think I'm ready right? Naruto finished on the piece of meat in his mouth before deciding to speak, noticing his mother's eyes had turned to him as well, waiting for him to answer from the corner of her eyes. I think. I want a second helping. Oh, miss. He got the attention of their waitress and placed another order while ignoring the annoyed looks her sister was giving him. He felt her hands on his arms and began shaking him. Ani-chan doesn't avoid the question. 
Yes Naruto doesn't avoid the question. Why me? I should have taken Yuga up on her offer to train. He thought before turning back to them once his order was done. Mito I don't think you're ready so you should stop asking. What? Why? Because like Kachan said you are not ready for it. You're nowhere near ready for a mission of that caliber yet. And IG was. What about me? IG asked, returning from the bathroom and seeing his twin's red face. Oh the wave mission. It's not fair. You're just jealous I got to Rasengan someone and win a battle. Iji said smugly, further infuriating his twin. Mito went to punch him but was stopped by Naruto's hand while Minato gave her a stern look. He wasn't going to let his children fight when they were out for dinner. Naruto brought her fist back and settled it on the table before he gently turned her head to look at him. Iji made a mistake. His intentions were good, yes, but he didn't think it through. Naruto told her. He should have thought about the consequences of continuing on with a mission and should have come straight back to the Leaf Village. We're lucky that he wasn't hurt or far worse. You should just be happy that he came home safe and not envious of him. But you were there to save him. Only by chance. If I wasn't there with Hana and Hei then who knows what would have happened. If you want to go on a higher class mission so badly then focus on your training, go on the missions that you're given and be patient. Good things come to those who wait. Naruto told her while his parents both nodded in agreement. Besides, would you want to scrub the house from top to bottom like Iji has had to do in the last few days? Mito shook her head while Iji shivered. Kishina had not been kind in her punishments. Would you like to get placed on guard duty for a month like Kakashi? Mito shook her head again and finally began getting the message. Do you understand me Mito? I guess so. Mito muttered before feeling a miss on her forehead from Naruto, letting a small smile appear on her face. Their parents wore smiles of their own at the little action before the family of six went back to their meals in a comfortable silence. Naruto's second helping eventually arrived and thanked the waitress who looked a little red-faced and flustered before screwing off, an action that was not lost on Kashina. It brought up the small conversation she had with Naruto before he left for water country. You know Naruto. That waitress has been smiling at you the entire time we've been here. Kashina told him as she wiggled her eyebrows. The only response she got from her son was a groan before starting with his next meal, ignoring the laugh from his father and the pout on his mother's face. Next day, Naruto-san what an honor this is. What can I help you with? Mabuki Haruno asked with a look of surprise evident on her face. The blonde-haired Haruno was not expecting the eldest son of the Yandame to be knocking on her front door at the 9am of all things and was a rare treat for being able to talk to a member of Konoha's famous family. The parents of Sakura Haruno were both shinobi like their daughter who were at the rank of both were quite content with the level they had reached and the lifestyle they got from it was enough to make them happy. Naruto had met the patriarch of the family, Kizashi Haruno a couple of times in the past while he was on patrol on the outer walls of Konoha and found the man to be pleasant to talk to. He could see where their daughter had inherited her pink hair from. Naruto bowed to the woman wearing his everyday attire of a simple blue long sleeve shirt and black pants and sandals. His swords as always were sealed on his arms and his forehead protector was tucked away in his pocket. I'm sorry for disturbing you Hurano-san, but I was hoping I could speak with Sakura. I have something I would like to speak with her about. But Yuki looked surprised but nodded. Of course. She's still asleep right now, but I'll go wake up. Please excuse me for a moment, Naruto-san. Naruto waited patiently and could hear a commotion coming from the top of the stairs, which sounded like Sakura was too pleased about being woken up. The short argument was stopped when Mibuki mentioned Naruto names before he could hear rushed footsteps and cabinets being opened. A moment later Mibuki walked down with a small look of annoyance before regaining her smile as her eyes made contact with Naruto. She'll be down in a few minutes Naruto-san. Thank you Haruno-san. I appreciate it. Like she said five minutes later a disheveled looking Sakura came bounding down the stairs whilst in the middle of putting her ninja sandals on. She stopped right in front of Naruto while pulling out a hairbrush from the cabinet beside the door and straightened her hair. She looked nervous as she looked at Iji and Mito's older brother who simply stood there waiting for her to finish. From the next room she could see her mother shaking her head before she went back to her breakfast. Sakura gulped and put the hairbrush down before meekly asking hello Naruto-san. What are you doing here? I wanted to speak with you. Come with me. There's somewhere I want to take you. Naruto answered back before he began walking away. Sakura stood there surprised for a moment before saying goodbye to her mother and walked out of her home. She jogged up to Naruto and settled in beside him and started walking at a similar pace. They were silent for five minutes as they made their way through the center of the village and not taking any notice of the civilians and the market vendors that were occupying the streets. Sakura had to try her best not to look at the clothes that were presented on many of the market stalls, some of which had caught her eyes and had made a note to check the prices for later. Already her mind was wondering if Sasuke would like her in said clothes. 
When she looked up at Naruto she saw he was just looking at the path in front of them and not acknowledging her, as if ushering her to speak first. She bit her lip before deciding to take the first step. So what did you want to talk about Naruto-san? Sakura stopped when Naruto stopped and watched him turn to face her. They were on the edge of the market now and there were not that many people around. There were a few shinobi though no one that she recognized. Sakura I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to answer me as honestly as you can. Naruto asked and Sakura looked put off before nodding her head. Why do I want to be a shinobi? The question caught her by surprise, but Sakura answered immediately without thinking about her answer. Because my parents are shinobi and I want Sasuke to like me. Her hands went up to her mouth and stood surprised at her answer. It was the reason she had told herself over and over again that she didn't realize what other people might think of her reason. If that is truly your reason to want to be a kanoichi, then you should give up and drop out of the ninja program. Naruto told her harshly and made her take a step back in surprise. The reason you just gave me is an insult to Kanoichi everywhere in the world. Do you think being a shinobi is a game? Nervously she shook her head. That's right and right now you're making a mock out of it. It's reasons like this that end up getting people killed. Not only yourself but the people around you. Do you want the guilty conscience of knowing you got your teammates killed because of what a dead weight you were? Again she shook her head. Not only are you doing yourself a disservice, but you're making a mockery of the very shinobi that protect you and everyone in the village. Naruto looked down at the younger girl and could see his words were hitting her. Her eyes were beginning to shimmer, and despite feeling horrible for what he was saying to her, he knew it needed to be said. She needed to wake up and see reality. The Sakura I saw in wave was completely and utterly disappointing. I had thought more of you and yet you let me down big time. Your skills are nowhere near the level of a genin, and if anything I think you should be sent back to the academy. The academy's three basics are not going to get you very far in this world. He gently ushered Sakura over to a nearby bench and sat her down. By now the tears had broken free and were running down her face, while her hands were clenched in her hands tightly. Her sobs could be heard, and it hurt Naruto to see anyone like that. Sakura looked at me. He asked as Sakura's sob-ridden face looked up at him. I know how much you like Sasuke. Heck I've heard Mito and Aiji go on about it in annoyance. Plus I have known Sasuke since he was a toddler. I know this hurts, but since I imagine that he is your first crush right? Sakura nodded her head. Sasuke has a lot of issues that go very deep. His issues with his clan and his brother have made him hateful and unkind. He's a good looking boy sure, but as he is he is not good for you. This fixation you have for him needs to stop and you need to start focusing on the real world and not the one you have created in your head. But I really like him. Sakura sobbed and her eyes met Naruto's blue ones as a comforting hand rested on her shoulder. I know and maybe in the future Sasuke may change and finally begin letting people in. But until then I think you need to let him go. Be his friend by all means, but don't expect anything to come of it. For now you need to let him go and focus on you. He wiped a stray tear away from her cheek and gave her a warm smile. Can you do that for me? He watched Sakura think long and hard and they sat in silence for five minutes. He gave her the time to think and watched her eyes flicker as thousands of thoughts ran around in her head. It was hard for one as young as Sakura to give up on something she believed in. But Naruto and everyone else knew it was not healthy for her to keep going down this road. No one wanted to see Sakura die at a young age. I can try Naruto-san. That's all I can ask for Sakura-chan. He responded back and patted her shoulder as a tiny smile appeared on the pink-haired girl's face. Now if I ask you again why do you want to be a shinobi? Again Naruto sat back and waited for Sakura to give him an answer. The girl really wanted to prove herself to her peers which was a good thing. She had determination and Naruto and her sensei Kakashi wanted to bring that out of her more than anything. Without focusing on Sasuke all the time she could do very well as a kanoichi. Naruto said I know what I want. Sakura said quietly as she gripped her dress tightly with Naruto leaning in to hear her answer. I want to make my parents proud and show everyone I can be a great kanoichi. That's why I want to be a shinobi. Sakura watched Naruto's face before feeling a small sense of relief when he smiled warmly at her. Better Sakura. Much better. Naruto stood up which prompted Sakura to do the same. She wiped her eyes and tried to make her look more presentable. Now since your resolve to be a kanoichi is stronger, I think we talk about your skills and strength and how we go about improving them. How do I do that? Kakashi-sensei is still on guard duty for another three weeks. Sakura asked. She wasn't sure who to go to if she wanted to train. Kakashi was still being punished, Sasuke was training on his own at the Ichiha compound, Aiji had managed to talk his mother into letting him train with Mito and their team. She didn't know where to go. Even her parents were busy most days. Well that problem I am about to solve for you. Let's keep walking. Naruto told her and the pair resumed walking. Sakura looked curious about where they were going and watched as Naruto greeted some of the members of the public as well as some of their fellow leaf shinobi. 
She could see he was very popular in the village, but never realized how much so until now. She could be beginning to see why IG and Mito talk about him a lot. Soon enough Sakura noticed Kanoha Hospital appear in the distance and saw Naruto was leading them straight towards it. We're going to the hospital. Sakura asked. Is someone sick? Everyone's fine, but this is where your training is going to begin. He told her and saw who looked confused. Tell me Sakura, have you ever thought about being a medic nin? She shook her head. I've never given it much thought of Naruto-san. They came up to the building and Naruto pushed the door open, holding it open for the young girl, before he began leading her up one of the stairs while nodding to the nurses behind the reception desk. Well Sakura let me tell you about a medical nin in case you were unaware what their role is. Medical ninja are ninja who specialize in medical treatment and use of medical-oriented techniques to heal others and accompany other ninja on high-ranking missions to increase the success rate of the mission and overall survival rate of the squad. The medical nin is trained to avoid getting injured in any way, for the reason that if they are injured, then there would be nobody to heal the other members of their team. Sakura listened closely and began to get a positive look on her face. From how Naruto was describing the role of a medic ninja it sounded to Sakura like they were very important to the village and it was not a profession everyone was designed for. It sounded to Sakura like a hard type of shinobi to become yet she found herself intrigued and even a little excited. You think I could be a good medical ninja Naruto-san? I do as Kakashi does. I spoke with him about it and he has actually been thinking the same thing lately. Having you as a medical nin would greatly strengthen the team and would help you individually a great deal. Should IG or Sasuke or even Kakashi get injured, it will be up to you to patch them up. Not only will you be learning about medical ninjutsu, but as a medic in your durability and chakra reserves will need to be increased. So expect a lot of physical exercise and tojutsu training to come along. Sakura simply nodded as they reached the floor Naruto wanted and walked down a long hallway. Nurses and doctors were going about their daily business with some light chatter coming from various patient rooms. Halfway down the hall they stopped at an office and Sakura watched Naruto knock on the door. Come in. She heard as Naruto pushed the door open. Hi Ni-chan. Naruto greeted as Shizun stood up from her chair and hugged the blonde, kissing the side of his head and being grateful someone came to distract her from all the paperwork she had to do. Or should she say Tsunade's paperwork that she had neglected to finish or even start. Shizun's eyes turned over towards the pink-haired girl who was awkwardly standing there unsure of what to do. Is this her? It is. Shizun meets Sakura Haruno, member of Team 7 and Genin of Konoha. Naruto introduced. Sakura is Shizun Kato, Jonin of Konoha, disciple of Lady Tsunade of the Sanin, and one of the best medic nins in Konoha. It's nice to meet you Shizun-san. Sakura bowed to the older woman and couldn't help but feel nervous. She knew full well who Tsunade was since she was one of the strongest Kanoichi in the entire world, if not the strongest. Therefore Sakura figured if Shizun was her student then she must have been very strong as well. The same to you Sakura. Shizun acknowledged as she greeted Sakura. Naruto came to me yesterday and asked if I wouldn't mind seeing if you had the right mindset and skill proficiency to become a medic nin. Now before we do anything I will inform you I am a busy person and I don't get a lot of free time. However, if you prove to me today that you will train hard and work constantly at joining the medical corps, then I will be more than happy to take an hour or two out of my days to help you. Sakura's face lit up in delight and held her hands to her chest. That would be a wonderful Shizun-san. I promise I will try my hardest. Shizun gave her a smile and held her hands in front of her in a patient manner. That's all I ask for Sakura. The medical corps of Konoha are always ready to take on more men and women like yourself into the healing arts. The more we have then the better chance our shinobi will come home alive. Shizun turned to Naruto. I can take it from here Naruto. I hope you remember our deal. Naruto sighed. I know. Your morning coffee and pastries every morning for the next month. Very good. Now off with you. I'm about to start my rounds in 10 minutes which Sakura will help me with and observe. Go on now, off you go. Alright, alright I'm going. Good luck Sakura. Don't let Nichan work you too hard. Naruto said as he waved goodbye to Sakura. I'll try Naruto-san. Thank you for everything. Sakura thanked before Naruto left the room. She turned to face Shizun and went to sit in the direction Shizun was motioning towards. As they sat down Shizun got out a pen and blank piece of paper before beginning to speak. Okay Sakura. First tell me about yourself and tell me what you would like to achieve here today. One month later, should we really be doing this? Hana asked, looking over at Anko who had her arms behind her head and a big grin plastered on her face. They leaned up against a large tree happily resting underneath the shade as the sun beat down on the village. It was a very hot day and most were taking shelter in their homes, in the swimming pools or under the shade of the trees. Of course. We don't get a sight like this every day. Let's enjoy it while we have it. Plus the heat just makes it even better. Anko explained as Hana rolled her eyes, but nevertheless kept her eyes on the attraction that was in front of her. 
On the other side of Anko was Shizuka who had a mix of content and annoyance. All three girls were in their casual clothes while their sandals rested to one side. I don't know whether I'm okay with the two of you ogling my future husband. Shizuka said with a miffed off tone, yet never took her eyes away from the sweat-covered Itachi. Anko could only grin, and both she and Hana could see the light blush that was on her cheeks. In front of them currently using the training field was Naruto and Itachi, who were making use of the hot day in the empty training fields. Both boys were topless having discarded their shirts early on after being egged on by Anko. Both young men were currently in the middle of Tajutsu spar, with Naruto currently on the offensive and Itachi on the defensive. Itachi had requested it since he didn't want his Tajutsu to slacken, and Naruto was the best person to keep him on his toes. Anko put her arm over Shizuka while keeping her grin. My dear Shizuka, you can't keep Itachi all for yourself all the time. You got to let us girls enjoy a piece of him every now and again. A body like the ones those two have needs to be appreciated by us girls. I thought you were only into women. Why would you care about their bodies? Shizuka pressed, still not entirely comfortable with their ogling. No, no Shizu-chan. I like both genders and while my Hana keeps me more than happy that doesn't mean I can't appreciate a well-kept male body. Hana shook her head as she knew Anko's playful and sexy side was beginning to appear. She didn't even bother stopping her from talking about their bedroom antics. It was a lost cause. Besides no offense to Itachi as muscular and defined as he is, I think we all know Naruto wins the best body award. Anko and the reluctant Hana couldn't help but look at the muscular upper half of their blonde friend and roommate. Naruto was the more physical fighter of the two, and the Tajutsu and Kinjutsu training was very clear on how big the results were. Though Shizuka remained looking at her fiancé, she would not deny he had a very nice top half. Hey, what are you three talking about? Naruto shouted over as he blocked a strike from Itachi and kicked him back, which resulted in Itachi skidding back. Your sexy top half that's what. Mama likes it. Anko shouted back which came to no surprise to the two males. Both of you come here for a second. Naruto and Itachi ceased their spar and made their way over to the three girls. Shizuka put her hand into her back and threw Itachi a bottle of water which he effortlessly caught, while Hana did the same for Naruto. What is Anko-chan? Itachi asked as Shizuka slipped her arm around his and looked glad that he didn't try to fight it. You guys heard about the Chunin exams that are happening in two months right? Yeah of course. What about it? Naruto spoke as he chugged down the bottle of water. It's all I've been hearing about at home. Mido is pestering my parents about letting her take part. Sasuke is the same with Kasan and Ayatachi added. Well I thought you guys might like to know Okage-sama has asked if I would like to be the proctor of the second exam. She revealed causing both Naruto and Itachi to spit some of their water. You're kidding. She's not. Hana revealed. I was there when he asked. Naruto couldn't help but shake his head and feel some pity for the youngster that would be taking part. Man do I feel sorry for the genin. They have no idea what they would be in for. Anko licked her lips at his words. You got that right. I plan on making this year very special. I'll give it my Anko special. That's just frightening. Itachi muttered before the group heard someone shout on Ichan. A couple of figures ran out of the woods and appeared in the training field, revealing it to be Mido in her usual shinobi gear, and with Sai and Shikamaru following along behind her at a more gentle pace. You know they were coming? Itachi asked and saw Naruto nod. I felt them coming this way ten minutes ago. He revealed before motioning them over. What are you guys doing here? Don't you have D ranks to do? We already finished them. Kachan gave us the rest of the afternoon to train on our own. Mido revealed before pointing at Naruto with a determined expression. I want a rematch with Ani Chan. I want to show you how much I've improved already. Already? But it's only been a few months. Surely you don't think you're strong enough to beat me yet. Naruto answered back trying to look high and mighty to annoy his sister. He got his wish as her face went red and angrily pointed at him, while Shikamaru shook his head at seeing her get goaded so easily. Sai meanwhile just stood there silent as always. That's it. You and me right now. Mito shouted, waving her fist towards her older brother. Her other hand rested on the sword that was on her back and was preparing to jump her brother into combat. Naruto wanted to spar with his baby sister, if only to turn the battle into a playing session that he knew would annoy her even more. But he already promised Itachi to spar for most of the day. However he did get a wicked gleam in his eye as a thought came into his mind. Well you see Mido-chan I'm already too busy sparring with Itachi. You know we Uzumaki don't break a promise right? He said and saw Mido glare at him with her cheeks puffed out. But maybe if you ask nicely Anko-chan wouldn't mind showing you a thing or two. She's not too busy at the moment. His friends looked like he had just swallowed a crazy pill while Anko was gleaming with delight. Shikamaru had a bad feeling bubbling up in his stomach as did Sai and it got even worse when Mido was actually considering it. Shikamaru's father had told him a bit about the sadist of the interrogation unit and he didn't look like he wanted to deal with someone with her kind of reputation. 
Before Mito could accept, Anko jumped up from her sitting position to land on her two feet and happily cracked her knuckles. Well since you ask so nicely. I think I can show them a thing or two. Anko then proceeded to pull up her top, revealing a sports bra underneath, along with her pants which revealed tight spandex shorts. Anko, why do you have that on underneath your clothes? Naruto asked as he put his hand in his palm, something that was mimicked by Itachi. Hana and Shizuka both rolled their eyes. Shikamaru was trying to look everywhere except the near-naked woman with Sai trying to do the same. Mito looked at Anko bust before she looked down at her own. Will I grow like that? She thought before she felt Naruto flick her forehead. Hey, I know what you're thinking. None of that is allowed for another five years at least. He told her getting another annoyed look from his sister as he patted her head as if she was a pet. Anko stretched arms and legs before she sauntered towards the middle of the field, swaying her hips hypnotically as she did that caught the attention of Hana and Naruto. I thought I would spar with you guys later, but I guess teaching the kitties a thing or two can work too. Who knows maybe Hana-chan would like to join me later in showing them how a real shinobi fights. Anko teased giving her girlfriend a wink. All the others ignored the comment Mito rushed towards the middle of the field with her sword already drawn. I'm going to show you how strong I am Anko Nisan. Don't take me lightly or I'll cut you for sure. Behind her Shikamaru and Sai gingerly stepped onto the field with the pineapple-haired boy, trying to find a way out of the situation. Everyone heard Anko chuckle as a kunai suddenly appeared in her hand and watched her lick the side of the metal with an elongated tongue. How cute. You'll find I'm the one who will be cutting Mito-chan today. Anko spoke, which made shivers go down Mito's back, and her teammates took one large step back. What have you gotten us into Mito? Naruto leaned up against a tree with his arms folder, though an uneasy look was clear on his face. Well at least this will prepare her for what's to come. Chapter 28 So how is she doing me chan? Naruto asked as he leaned over the chair Shizun was sitting on as said woman was going over a few pieces of paperwork Tsunade had once again claimed she forgot to do. Naruto's hand was resting beneath his head while he stared over at Sakura, who had her hands held over a fish that rested on a small table. Her face was furrowed in concentration as the familiar green aura of the healing palm technique washed over the fish. Mina doesn't touch that. We don't want it smashing on the ground. Mina Namakas stared into one of the many jars that rested on the enormous bookcase which inside contained what looked like a pale pinky finger. It grossed her out at first yet her eyes kept going back to it. Okay on e chan she called out before she skipped over and as usual jumped into the embrace of her big brother, wrapping her arms around his neck while his arms came from underneath her to keep her steady. She giggled as her feet swayed around in the air. Shizun smiled at the interaction while trying her best to keep working on the paperwork. Sakura's doing well. She was a bit rocky during the first week, but she began adapting very well. Thankfully her chakra reserves have grown in the last three months and I'm proud to say is now firmly at a genin level. Her control grew as well and has one of the best chakra control I've seen for someone her age. So it was a good idea to bring her to you. A very good idea. Naruto sighed happily. I'm glad. We could all see she wanted to contribute in some way, but her bad habits and mindset was really getting in the way. Though I hear she hasn't spoken much to Sasuke as of late. Naruto admitted. In fact I think Mito has said Sakura has been spending more time with her, Ino and Hinata. It's a good sign. It is. The idea someone could act that way over a boy at such a young age was quite unsettling. Though from the improvements she has made I think she will go very far in this field. She's memorized everything I have told her and taught her and the patients she assists me with seem to like her. The nurses too have taken a shine to her through her temper can sometimes get the better of her. Naruto chuckled. Well it's a good first step and I'm sure her parents are happy that she's taking her career as a shinobi more seriously. Ani-chan what's she doing? Mina asked as she stared over at Sakura who was still focusing on the fish on the table. Mina's face scrunched up since she recognized the green aura around her hands and knew her brother had done something similar in the past with his hands. Well Mina Sakura is currently learning the healing palm technique. You remember that Shizun and Tsunade are medical shinobi right? Naruto asked and saw Mina's face scrunch up while nodding. Yeah I remember Ani-chan. She responded back as she looked to and from Naruto and Sakura. Well Sakura is currently learning to be a medical shinobi like them. Instead of fighting enemies her primary goal when she is out on missions will be to heal her friends and comrades when they get hurt. Plus when she's not on mission she will help out at the hospital and help Tsunade and Shizun Nichan with patients. Mina understood. You can't do it on your own Nichan. She asked with Naruto smiling and holding up his free hand to show the healing palm technique. I can though I'm not a medical shinobi like Nichan is. It's just something they taught me just in case I got hurt and there was no one with the skills to heal me. It's very handy to have. He admitted. Why do you ask Mina-chan? Mina kept looking back and forth between Naruto and Sakura before he saw a timid look appear on her face. Shizun saw it too and put down her papers. What is Mina? What's wrong? 
Naruto asked as took a seat beside Shizun, a frown on his face at the face Mina was pulling. Can I tell you a secret? She asked and saw both nod their heads. Of course Mina-chan. You can tell me anything. What's on your mind? Naruto asked as Mina shuffled around a bit on his lap. Oni-chan I don't like fighting. I don't think I want to be a shinobi like you, Aiji, Mido, Ka-san and Tu-san. She told them. Mina expected both Naruto and Shizun to look surprised or stunned, but instead they both looked at her in gentle understanding and both gave her a comforting smile. She felt Naruto's arms wrap tighter around her and felt him kiss the side of her head. Is that all? That's nothing to be ashamed of, Mina Naruto told her. I know a lot of people who are like that. Believe it or not Mina I'm like that in a way. Though I may fight from time to time deep down I hate it. It's why I chose to be a medical shinobi and trained under Lady Tsunade. The idea of primarily looking after other shinobi and healing them helped me find my place in the shinobi system. Shizun explained. In fact you don't have to fight at all as a medical shinobi if you don't want to. You can choose to be stationed in the hospital and sometimes in the exams. So I could be a nurse and still use chakra. Shizun nodded. Is that something you could be interested in? Naruto asked her. I think you would make a wonderful medical ninja Mina. You're very smart and you have very steady hands. Naruto told her. Do Kasan and Tusan know about these feelings? Mina shook her head which made Naruto chuckle. Do you want me to be with you to tell them later? Again she nodded her head. Never be ashamed about something of this nature Mina. You could never make me matter upset okay? Okay on each an. Mina whispered before the two hugged and Naruto gently rocked them side to side. Do you think they'll be mad? No Mina not at all. In fact I bet they will be proud of you for wanting to be a medical shinobi. It's nice to have someone in the family break the mold. Naruto said. In fact if you learn to be a medical shinobi then Mido and Aiji can finally have someone to nurse them back to health when they've gone and got themselves hurt. Naruto chucked while Mina giggled. Aiji and Mido were always getting in scraps. Ahh why is this so frustrating? Sakura yelled out as she began waving her fist at the fish before punching it. Bits of fish scales and guts went all over the table and onto the floor, prompting Shizun to sigh and shake her head. That's the third one this week. She muttered before everyone heard the door open and Itachi walked inside. He immediately looked straight towards Naruto and beckoned him over. Naruto, can I speak with you for a moment? Itachi asked surprising Naruto, but he nodded that it was fine. He got up while putting Mina on the seat next to Shizun. I'm going to go talk with Itachi for a minute, Mina. Shizun Nichan can tell you more about being a medical shinobi. I'll be back soon. He told her and got a nod from Mina before Mina and Shizun began to converse. He left the room following Itachi out before both stopped in the hallway. Itachi looked pretty serious and crossed his arms as his black eyes met with his violet ones. What's this about Itachi? I've decided Sasuke's attitude has gone on long enough. It's time for some tough love in order to stop him from going down this path he's decided to take. Naruto snorted. About time, don't you think? I've always said you and Sensei were too soft on him. He saw his friend Sai and Naruto could tell Itachi had finally realized what needed to be done. Naruto didn't want to see their family get torn apart because Sasuke's hatred was beginning to take control of his life. The boy was too prideful and arrogant for his own good. I know and that's why I need your help with this. He and mother just had another argument which left my mother close to tears. I'm done with this attitude. Itachi explained to which Naruto was all ears. He was all for a good ass whooping. Especially if it was for Itachi's brother. Later that day Ichiha compound, a sound of fists hitting against a wooden post, rang through the Ichiha compound training ground as Sasuke Ichiha slammed his clenched fist against a hardwood, a look of determination etched onto his face. He had a bead of sweat running down his forehead and wore his usual blue top and white shorts. The skin on his knuckles were red raw from how hard he was punching his target, yet he forced himself through the pain he was feeling in order to help reach his goal. Since the night his father and many of his clansmen had been killed all he felt was the swirl of rage building up in his stomach. The need to prove his worth to everyone had only gotten stronger over the last few years, and it showed in his performance both at the academy and when he was with his team. It annoyed him that he was forced to stay at the academy until the age of 13, as he felt he was more than ready to be put on active duty a year earlier. It was only because of the Hokage and his family that it was never allowed. It didn't help that he knew his brother and his brother's best friend were the two mostly responsible for slaughtering his father and his clan. He didn't understand how people could just accept it and go on with their life. Why was there no justice for their family? Why were they never punished for their actions? He didn't understand and it made his blood boil. He wasn't like Itachi or his friend Naruto. He had heard what people would whisper around the village and how they compared him to them. It burned him to the core when they did that. He wasn't Itachi and he certainly wasn't Naruto. He was Sasuke Ichiha, youngest son of Yugaku Ichiha, and the man that would one day defeat his brother to take the title of leader of the Ichiha clan. 
He would make their family prosperous again. You know there's not much point in punching a target that doesn't move or tries to fight back. Sasuke heard. He turned around and narrowed his eyes when he saw Naruto standing 10 meters away from him, with his usual calm expression on his face and hands in his pockets. He wasn't in his shinobi clothes and instead in his everyday clothing. He's fast. I didn't even sense him. Sasuke thought before he spoke to the blonde jonin. What do you want? Itachi's not here. I know. Naruto responded. I'm not here to see Itachi. I'm here to see you. Sasuke held his head high before going to turn around. I'm busy. Go bug someone else. Well that's a shame. Here I thought you would like to have a spar with me. Naruto asked and grinned when he saw Sasuke's body stop mid-turn. I was quite impressed with what I saw from you on the bridge back in waves. You've got your Sharingan now and I have been hearing from the civilians that you're making quite a little name for yourself recently. It's impressive for someone who has only been a genin for six months. Naruto's answer got the reaction he had wanted. He saw a small smirk appear on Ichiha's face. He looked incredibly smug. I'm an Ichiha. Do you expect anything less? True. Ichihas are quite frightening. Itachi is proof of that and I know what kind of a monster he is when he's fighting. So how about it? Slowly he saw the gears winding in Sasuke's head. In Sasuke's mind he saw this as the perfect chance to test just how far he had come. Whether he wanted to admit it or not, the man in front of him was very powerful and therefore a great way to see just how far he had come in the last six months. He had seen the match against the Sandame and it had caused a rush of excitement to run through his veins. He wanted that kind of battle with someone one day. In his mind at least Itachi was the only one that could do it for him. Fine but I won't take it easy on you. And Ichiha doesn't back down from a fight. Everyone knows only an Ichiha can beat another Ichiha. Really? Well that's funny since I have beaten Itachi a number of times. How do you explain that? Naruto asked and saw an angry look make its way onto Sasuke's face. Obviously he didn't like that little comment. It was nothing but luck. Sasuke growled out as he took a fighting stance. The classic Ichiha interceptor style that Naruto recognized all too well. Sasuke waited for Naruto to get into his own stance, but instead saw him remain in his current posture with his hand still in his pocket. Get in your stance so we can begin. Naruto in return gave him a grin. No need. I'm confident I can hold my own as I am. The words boiled Sasuke's blood at how lightly he was being taken and felt his nails begin to dig into his own palms. He would not be looked down on like this. Fine, suit yourself. Sasuke exclaimed before throwing a barrage on kunai towards his opponent. When all of the kunai were released he rushed forward. He didn't understand what had happened, but he watched as Naruto very subtly shifted his legs, shoulder and neck around just enough and watched in surprise all of his kunai go right past him. None of them even scratched him nor caught a piece of his clothing. It was similar to the first time he thought of Kakashi and how nonchalant the copy ninja had acted with him the first time they fought. Sasuke jumped into the air and tried to land a blow onto Naruto's face, but was promptly blocked by one of Naruto's hands. Sasuke thought didn't stop and then swung his right leg down as he twisted his body in the air. Again though Naruto blocked it this time by bringing his elbow up and stopping his leg from going any further. Before Sasuke could twist himself around again and try with his other fist, he felt his body begin to swing in the air and get launched towards the ground. Sasuke recovered as he skidded on the ground and saw that Naruto had barely moved a muscle. Narrowing his eyes Sasuke raced through some hand signs before saying fire style. Fireball jutsu. The fire flew straight towards Naruto and he watched as the fire engulfed Naruto completely as well as the area of earth that lay around him. Sasuke would have smirked if not for the voice behind him. Not bad. Sasuke turned around only to meet a strong foot connected with his stomach. The boy skidded across the ground and clasped his stomach as he felt the wind knock right out of him. He struggled to stand upright and shakily managed to stand up after a minute of trying to catch his breath. Are you ready to keep going? I thought we were just getting started. Naruto asked and grinned once more when he saw Sasuke activate his Sharingan, a glare on his face, as he tried to burn Naruto alive with it. He rushed forward again, but quickly stopped and fell to the ground when Naruto suddenly appeared in front of him. His speed is off the charts. Naruto slammed his fist into Sasuke's stomach only for the Ichiha to use the substitute. Sasuke appeared a few meters away on his left and saw him rushing hand signs again. Fire style phoenix flower jutsu. Multiple flower shaped fireballs flew towards Naruto only for Sasuke to watch as Naruto did the impossible in his eyes and extinguished them with simple punches. His hand smoked slightly but he saw no pain register on the blonde's face. Itachi's version of that is at least five times more powerful and far more widespread. He watched rage contort on Sasuke's face as he mentioned Itachi again. You should really learn to master yours before beginning to learn more. Stop comparing me to Itachi. 
Sasuke roared out as ninja wire appeared in his hand, and Naruto watched as Sasuke ran at his top speed, which Naruto had to admit wasn't bad and was probably low level at best, and wrapped Naruto's body in firm ninja wire. Sasuke's feet pressed against Naruto's shoulders before he pushed off into the air. The kunai with an explosive tag appeared in his hand before throwing a tried in front of Naruto. Sasuke's Sharingan looked down at the captured Naruto, and yet before the explosion could even happen, he watched in disbelief as Chakra wrapped around Naruto's hands and promptly swiped and cut straight through the ninja wire like a hot knife went through butter. And then as if he was trying to mock Sasuke, he planted his foot on the exploding tag on the kunai and deactivated it with a quick surge of Chakra. Your speed isn't bad. Naruto admitted as Sasuke landed on the ground. But you should be mindful of your surroundings and not focus so heavily on one person in such a big field. Sasuke looked confused, but before he could ask a hissing sound came from underneath him. Looking down he panicked when he spotted a live exploding tag beneath and jumped out of the way as quick as he could. The tag exploded and the force of the shock wave pushed Sasuke further through the air and slammed him hard into the ground. Sasuke didn't get a chance to act as Naruto appeared right above him and brought his right foot down on top of him. Sasuke narrowly avoided and rolled out of the way as Naruto created a small crater in the ground as his foot hit the ground. Why are you running? Itachi never runs away from a fight. Sasuke's anger began to spike again as his Sharingan spun wildly in his eyes and his whole body shook with anger. Why isn't he taking me seriously? Does he think he's better than me? You're not better than me. I will not be looked down on by the likes of you. He rushed Naruto and without thinking got a kunai out from his pouch and began swiping madly at his opponent. To Sasuke's extreme annoyance Naruto simply sidestepped every single swipe. That lasted for a good minute as Sasuke let his anger and frustration bend from his body. He couldn't believe how powerful this guy was that none of his attacks were working. Even his Sharingan was completely useless against him. Eventually Naruto was fed up with the lazy fighting from Sasuke and decided to end the fight. He grabbed Sasuke's wrist mid-swipe before with one movement of his hand he broke Sasuke's wrist, a loud snap being heard across the field that dropped Sasuke to the ground. He fell to his knees in pain, but before he could shout at Naruto, the blonde delivered a powerful knee to the face, breaking a nose and dropping Sasuke completely to the ground onto his back. Sasuke held his nose with his good arm before he felt a firm foot get placed on his foot. Naruto stood above him with a look of disgust and annoyance on his face as he shook his head in disappointment. I honestly expected better from you. Even IG on his own could give me a better effort than what you gave me. Don't put me in the same class as him. I'm stronger than that idiot. Do you know why I'm hearing beating you into the ground? Naruto asked. Sasuke would have snorted, but feared it would cause his nose to hurt even more than it already did. It was already bent at a funny angle from the knee to the face. Because you think you are better than me? Sasuke sneered yet Naruto shook his head. The foot on his chest got heavier as more weight was pressed against his chest. No you little fool. I'm doing this because Itachi asked me. Naruto watched as Sasuke's face turn from hateful to one of complete confusion. He saw Naruto turn his head and look to the left of them, and to Sasuke's surprise there was Itachi standing a few meters from them with an impassive look on his face. Itachi's eyes stared down at Sasuke, not showing any emotion as he began walking towards them. You can take your foot off Naruto now. I think you have roughed him up enough. Sasuke heard Itachi say and watched as Naruto nodded his head and lifted his foot off the ground. Sasuke didn't move as the two older boys stood above him, both looking down at him with impassive looks. Why? Why did you have him do this to me? Sasuke asked as he looked directly at Itachi with a hateful look. Itachi wasn't affected by the gaze. It's simple. This attitude you have carried with you for the last few years stops today and it's time you started to grow up. Itachi told him. I have this attitude because of what you did to our family. Why did you kill our father? Sasuke said back trying to stand up but saw Itachi shake his head at him. Do you know why I'm as strong as I am today Sasuke? Do you know why I have got the level I am currently at? This time Sasuke did snort though he regretted it as pain filled his nose. Because you're a prodigy and your mother's precious eldest. Hey. Naruto barked at him. Show your mother the respect she rightfully deserves. You should feel lucky that Makoto-sensei is your mother. Many would kill to have a woman like her as their parent. You are wrong about that. It's true being a prodigy does help in becoming a strong shinobi, but it will only get you so far. I am strong today because I chose to surround myself with friends who care for me and would have my back whenever I asked it off them. Friends. Friends make you weak. We are Ichiha. We are the strongest. Sasuke barked out as Itachi shook his head. That's where you are wrong again Sasuke. Being alone doesn't make you strong. In fact, being alone will only limit and hinder your progress as a shinobi. If you continue the way you are I can guarantee you will not reach past a certain level of strength and you will be left behind while everyone else in your generation only further expands their abilities and remain far ahead of you. Lies. 
Sasuke barked back, but Itachi wasn't finished. Do you think Kaiji and Mito are as strong as they are because they did it all alone? Naruto asked and saw Sasuke had no comment for a response. They had our parents. They had their friends. They had their teachers. True as of now they're only genin just like you but in a few years. Who knows? A lot can happen in a couple of years. Do you really want to see my siblings and the friends you chose to abandon for a life of solitude to surpass you every way imaginable? Very slowly they saw Sasuke shake his head. Itachi went down on one knee as he stared towards his younger brother. I understand why you're angry with Sasuke. You feel betrayed with what happened that night. The way our father died. Sasuke tried to look away, but Itachi's hand grabbed his chin and forced him to look at him. He was so focused on my training and you felt like he didn't pay enough attention to you. That I took him away from you at a time where he was finally beginning to show interest in your development. He was the one who taught you the fireball right. Sasuke nodded. A lot happened that night Sasuke. I see now that perhaps it wasn't a good idea to keep you the truth of why it happened away from you. He saw Sasuke's eyebrows suddenly lift up in surprise, not fully understanding what he meant. I asked Naruto to beat you like this because you needed to see that even though we are Ichiha that does not make us invincible. Madara thought he was invincible and looked where it got him. I guess. Sasuke admitted. But what do you mean by the truth? I will tell you all about it and I won't spare any details Sasuke. However I want you to promise me here and now that this attitude you have carried around for so long will finally end and you open up more. You will start reconnecting with your friends, you will cease trying to frighten our sister who just wants to spend time with her big brother, and you will stop ignoring our mother who cares and loves you too much to see you shut her out. Sasuke tried to look annoyed, but the look Itachi gave him stopped that from happening. He didn't look too pleased about it, but after a moment's silence he nodded his head. I'll try. Thank you. Itachi said before turning his head to Naruto. Could you do something about his nose? Sure. Naruto got down on one knee next to Itachi before grabbing Sasuke's head in his hands and putting his thumbs in front of his nose. This is going to hurt. Are you ready? Sasuke nodded his head before Naruto pushed his thumbs down on Sasuke's nose and pushed it back back into place. The sound was sickening and Sasuke grunted in pain though managed to tough it out. I let you guys talk though I will say one thing before I leave. Naruto drew Shusui out of the seal in his wrist and stuck the tip of the blade directly underneath Sasuke's chin, frightening the boy at how close it was to his skin and how quick it appeared. I hear you have had a bit of an obsession with my sister Mito and have been giving looks that have been making her feel uncomfortable. Naruto's eyes grew colder by the second that made Sasuke gulp, forgetting about his previous attitude. If I find out you tried anything and I mean anything without her consent, I will personally gut you like a fish and feed you to my tigers. Is that understood? Understood. Sasuke muttered out before Naruto disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Once he was gone Sasuke tried to glare but stopped when he saw Itachi looking at him. What? I take the threat seriously. I've seen him gut people and feed them to his tigers. Be very careful. Sasuke's face paled before he reluctantly nodded. Come with me. I believe I owe you a conversation. Itachi helped Sasuke up before they both disappear in a swirl of leaves, leaving the training ground empty. Next day, Naruto sat in the packed Jonin Hall right beside Hana and Hade as they all sat on the cushioned ground with every other Jonin of the Leaf Village. Across the room sitting on the ground he could see Kakashi with his usual gravity-defying silver hair and as usual was sat with Asuma, Kurenai and Guy. They all knew they were all gathered together to discuss the up-and-coming Chunin exams that were only two weeks away. Itachi wasn't with them due to being on an Anbu mission and Makoto was at home since she was still classed as a retired Jonin. Kishina sat off with Tsum and Yuzuka at the front of the gathering. They sat patiently before the side door at the front of the room opened up with Minato, Hiruzen, Kaharu, Himura and the Jonin commander Shikaku Nara walking into the room and taking the seats at the front of the room. Minato wore Hisho Kage hat while Hiruzen took the spot next to him. Unsurprisingly Danzo was nowhere to be seen which was no surprise since the man rarely left his own personal quarters though he and Itachi Booth knew the man was likely in the hidden root bunker somewhere in the village. The Jonin in the room were quiet as they entered the room and waited for the meeting to begin. After a few moments everyone watched Minato stand up while placing Hisho Kage hat on the desk in front of him. Good morning everyone. I'm sure you're all aware what this meeting is about and are all aware that the Chunin exams will be taking place in the next two weeks. Naruto watched everyone nod their head and heard some whispers and murmurs among some of his fellow Jonin. Since it's so close it's time to let everyone know what will be happening this year. First off the first exam will of course be the written exam which will take place at the academy. I plan on having two of us set up on the lower level to try to trick the genin. If they can't see through it then we will be weeding out those not ready very early on. The proctor for the first exam will be Ibiki Marino, head of the interrogation corps. Many shivered at that as Ibiki stood up from his seat and bowed to Thehokage and the elders whilst giving some of the others a glare. 
It had its desired effect as some looked away as he sat back down. Some of the jonin were already starting to pay their respects to the genin that would have to face him. The second exam will be a survival exercise that will take place in the forest of death. The genin will have five days to collect two scrolls, one of which will be given to them, after passing the first exam and the second which they will need to retrieve. Once they have both they will need to go directly to the tower located in the heart of the forest. The proctor for the second exam will be Anko Midarashi of the Interrogation Corps. By Kabiki, Anko stood up and bowed to Theho Kage, and the elders wore a very pleased look on her face, while waving at everyone else in the room. Her friends had to chuckle at her antics and were happy to show her excitement. Some whispered some harsh words about the purple-haired Kinoichi, but were quickly silenced by Hana and Naruto who had heard them. Finally the third exam will of course be the annual one-on-one -on -one tournament. As always it will be held in the Kanoha Stadium that was fixed up after the field was partially destroyed by Sandame and my son. Naruto heard chuckles ring out from through the room making him get embarrassed. It didn't help that he heard his mother chuckle the loudest and Anko got him in a headlock and ruffled his hair. The proctor for the third exam will be Genma. As before Genma stood up and did his part before sitting back down. Now would the Jonin senseis all stand up and give us the names of the genin in your team that you are putting forward. Minato sat back down and got a pen and paper as he began preparing to list down the teams and the names of those from the leaf that would be competing. Naruto watched as five of the Jonin senseis stood up, one of which was his mother who had a proud grin on her face. I, Kakashi Haddock nominate Sasuke Ichiha, Sakura Haruno and Aiji Namikas of Team 7. I, Kurana Yuhi nominated Hinata Hayuga, Yakumu Kurama and Shino Aburam for Team Team 8. I, Might Guy nominate Rock Lee, Ten Ten and Niji Hayuga of Team 9. I, Asuma Saratobi of Team 10, nominate Choji Akimichi, Ino Yamanaka and Kiba and Yuzuka of Team 10. Ashina Namikas of Team 11, nominated Mito Namikas, Shikamara Nara and Sai of Team 11. The room broke out into whispers at the nominations. Everyone seemed surprised that the rookies of the village were already being placed into the exam so soon. After only six months they had to wonder how far they could have come in that space of time. But Naruto knew how far they had come. He had seen firsthand Aiji manage to defeat Haku with Sasuke, and Sakura was progressing nicely in her medical ninja training. Plus Mito and her team were gelling nicely even if they bickered a lot. He had a feeling they would be surprising everyone for these exams. Okajama. Naruto heard as everyone looked towards the one that had spoken up. What other villages will be sending teams this year? That got everyone curious since everyone knew they had to be on their guard when other villages sent teams to Konoha. Well we have quite a number this year. We have multiple teams from Kusagakur, Takigakur, Atagakur, Amegakur and even some from Sunagakur. From what the Kazakiyaj has informed me his children will be participating this year and no doubt to help spice up the exams this year. Some accepting murmurs were heard in the hall. Suna had been a relatively positive ally in the last two decades, though there was always going to be some distrust. No one seemed to bothered with the teams from the smaller villages. Naruto felt a little downtrodden at not hearing one of the other great shinobi, but before he could dwell on it his father continued. However, that's not all. Naruto's head snapped up and looked towards his father. I received two messages over the past three days before this meeting. It seems the Kurigakur will also be taking part and will be sending two teams to compete. Not only that but Awagakur will also be sending multiple teams this year. Along with the teams Awagakur has decided to finally reach out to us and put together some kind of alliance between the two villages. The Tsuchikij will be present during the final exam but will be sending his granddaughter to begin talks. When he finished speaking, many of the Kanoha shinobi looked angry and were muttering obscene words, especially towards Iwa. Many had lost family and loved ones in the Third Shinobi War, and everyone knew there was still some kind of bad blood between their two villages. Even Kashina was frowning. She didn't like the thought of so many potential threats in Kanoha, especially near her babies. It was a thought that was going through many of the Kanoha mothers in the room. Naruto though ignored everyone else in the room and wore a megawatt smile on his face. He tried to hide it, but he just couldn't do so. He was very happy. Kurisuchi was coming to Kanoha at last and was doing so to begin peace talks and an alliance between their two villages. The time for their reveal might have been closer than he realized. No one seemed to notice the smile since most were too busy talking about the exams. Everyone except the always observant Sandame Hokage. Well what's got him so happy? Chapter 29 Now we'll look at how cute they all look. Anko smiled as she and Naruto stood in the treetops overlooking a small alleyway in the southern part of the Kanoha. They stood together side by side and hid their presence from the genin that was down below. They had been passing by when they noticed Aiji chasing after an irate looking Sakura who was running full force after Konohamaru Suratobi. The young boy looked scared out of his wits when the pink haired girl managed to grab his blue scarf and slowly pulled him towards her clenched fist. Somehow the boy managed to get out of her grasp but ended up running into a team of Suna Shinobi. 
The male of the two wore all black with a large bandaged object draped over his back. His face was covered in purple paint and wore a cocky smirk on his face as he hoisted Kanohimaru up in the air by the hem of his shirt. The girl next to him was the same height though clearly looked like the more mature of the two. Blonde hair was tied in four ponytails and wore a purple top that went down to her things with fishnets covering part of her shoulders. A red sash was tightly secured around her waist and on her back was a large fan almost the same size as her. Definitely a wind user in Naruto's mind. They watched as the two groups met with Aiji stepping forward and telling the boy, whose name was revealed to be Kankuro to let Konohamaru down, otherwise he would be sorry. The threat got a laugh from the blonde girl, who was revealed to be called Tamari. Naruto and Anko could see Kankuro look intrigued to start a fight with Aiji. As the son of the Kazakiage I'm looking forward to testing how weak the son of the Indema Hokage is. So that's the Kazakiage's kids. Not bad I guess. Though neither of them are higher than a high genin level. Anko muttered as they continued to watch the little display in front of them. Aiji glared at one another, and Naruto could see him toy with one of the tri-pronged kunai he kept in his shinobi pouch. Ankuro dropped Konohamaru who scrambled up and ran behind Sakura, forgetting about his earlier fear of the girl, as said girl gently moved him behind her as she kept her eyes on the sunanins. Ankuro now is not the time to start a fight with a leaf shinobi. You know Baki-sensei will hide if we cause any trouble. Tamari warned though Kankuro didn't look in the listening mood as his hands were grabbing a hold of the object on his back. You want to use Crow? P -I, I I I I I I I I I I Everyone heard causing Naruto to sigh. He had hoped no trouble broke out, but now that chance had gone up a notch now that his sister was here. Mito landed beside Aiji jumping around like she had too much sugar for lunch. Old man Tucci said we can have all the Raymond we want since the Chunin exams are tomorrow. Come on she started but stopped when she saw the sun bins. Who are the weirdos? The two soon and in formed tick marks on their foreheads while Kankuro glared at the blonde-haired girl. He looked between the two siblings as he realized who she was. Ha. Even better. My two cents said the Hokage had twins, but I didn't know for sure until now. Kankuro took the bandaged object on his back and slammed it on the ground as Mido understood why Aiji looked so confrontational. She frowned and put her hands on her hips, moving her sword that was strapped to her back forward a little so the Sunanin could catch the glint from the handle. Should we step in? Anko asked but saw Naruto shaking his head. Only if things get out of hand. We don't really need any incident between two shinobi of two different villages getting serious. Even if Suna are our allies these are still the children of their cage. Vice versa for our village. Naruto explained as he leaned against the side of the tree. When do you think the gourd boy is going to stop hiding and actually show himself? Anko asked as they looked at the red-haired boy who was watching silently from the top of the trees. His attire screamed Suna Shinobi and wondered how the boy could carry such a heavy-looking gourd with his skinny body. The kid looked like he hadn't slept for years with dark black bags under his eyes. They saw the boy begin shuffling around and lean forward just a smidge. Now it looks like. Pankuro. Stop being an embarrassment. The red-haired boy said, making everyone in the alleyway jump at his sudden voice and look up in the trees. They saw the red-haired boy glare down at them, while Mido and Aiji looked surprised that neither sensed him or noticed he was there. Georgia Gara. Kankuro stammered as they all watched Gara jump down from the tree and land next to Kankuro. There was no emotion on his face, only a completely impassive look which chilled the leaf gen in spine. Naruto narrowed his eyes on him as he got a feel on his chakra and felt how malicious it felt. Something about the chakra felt familiar, but he couldn't place where. Peculiar. He whispered as he watched Gara talk down to his teammates, while also revealing to the genin he was also their brother. Aki-sensei is probably waiting for us at the hotel. Gara said and went to leave, but they all watched him stop and now stare over at the leaf genin. You. What is your name? Aiji raised an eyebrow at him but stepped forward, gently pushing his sister's hand down when she tried to stop him. My name is. No, not you. Gara spoke, causing Aiji to suddenly go quiet and frown as he saw Gara point towards Mido. You. Who are you? My name? My name is Mido Namikaze and don't ever forget it. I'm the one that will be winning the exam this year just like my Ani san Mido said proudly, causing Naruto in the trees to break a smile. Why? Want to know you will be wiping the floor with you. No I care nothing about that and I will spill you blood on the ground as easily as all the rest I have encountered. He told her to make the twins and Sakura pale slightly at the declaration. No mother what's you dead. She doesn't like what you house. What you contain. She wants you dead. His voice slowly turned into a whisper before he began walking away. I will abide by mother. As he left Amari and Kankuro followed after him as Kankuro put the bandaged object back onto his back. He shot the leaf gen in a dirty look before they left. Once they were gone they all let out a breath of relief, inwardly thankful a fight had not occurred that night. Mother. What a whack job.
Sakura said before she turned her attention back on Konohamaru who had a fearful look on his face when he saw the look she was giving him before bringing down her fist on the top of his head. Ah. How did he know? Nito whispered as her hand went to the seal on her stomach as her eyes followed after the retreating boy. No one supposed to know. Next to her Ijia wrapped his arm around his twins as he watched her earlier confidence wane wanting to comfort before letting his gaze rest on the retreating Sunanin that slowly morphed into a frightful glare. Up in the trees the playful humor between the two friends were now long gone as they witnessed what just transpired. Naruto. Anko said with her playful act gone and the serious Kanoichi now present. Both their eyes were focused on Gara as he left. He knows about her. How? Naruto wasn't sure at first either, but after mentioning how his mother spoke to him and the gourd that on his back which he had an idea of what was inside, he came to the only logical conclusion he could think of. He wondered if his parents knew about this. Anko what lies with Suna? The one tail. Anko spoke before warning bells went off in her head. You think? Yeah I think so. That boy is the one of one tail Shukaku and he's just picked Mido as his target for the exams. Next day, good luck to both of you. I know you're both going to do great. Naruto smiled as he double-hugged the twins who were happy to reciprocate the hug. Behind him were Minato and Kishina who had just given them both their good luck speeches and told them to pay attention to their proctors and to expect the unexpected. Mina was over at the hospital having her weekly lesson with Shizun. Of course we are. We're gonna kick ass and take names. Just you wait, Ani-chan will be at the top in no time. Mido informed him as both she and Iji crossed their arms and grinned. It was scary when they both copied each other's movements so organically. It must have been one of those weird twin things. Well still I want you both to look out for each other. Even if you might be opposite teams I still want you both to look out for each other when you come across one another. No being too rough on each other you hear. IG nodded though Mido punched her left hand into the palm of her right. I'll try but I can't promise. It caused Naruto to sigh and ruffle their hair though both quickly smacked it away in annoyance. Alright you two you better get going. I know you don't want to be late. Minato spoke as he stepped forward. I know you both make us all proud. Give them hell. Yes, sir. Both chorused before they took off running to meet up with their teams. The three watched them go before they disappeared out of sight. The area was quiet without the voices of the twins. Dusan, did you know the Kazakija's son was a Naruto asked as he turned to look at his father. He heard him sigh and watched as he nodded his head. By the expression on Kishina's face Naruto knew she was aware as well. We knew. As part of our alliance with Suna the name of the villages had to be known in order for the trust between our two villages to have a foundation. The identity of a Jinchuriki is a big deal even if some villages hide it and others don't. Minato informed me. Only myself, your mother and the elders are aware, while the Kazakiyaj and their elders are aware of Mido. And the Kazakiyaj's son. He informed them, making them both look alarmed. He seemed to know when they encountered one another yesterday. It shocked her that he knew and said she was now a target for his mother. Jeez. Minato moaned as he ran a hand through his hair. I had heard the youngest of the Kazakiyaj was a troubled kid, but this sounds worse than I thought. The Shukaku has been known to be one of the more violent of the. We'll have to keep a close eye on him during the exams. Unless he does something that will get Mito or a Leaf Shinobi killed, then all we can do is observe for now. So did everyone turn up in the end? The Iwa group and Kiri group. Naruto asked prodding his father for information. They did. They all arrived yesterday afternoon and evening. Minato told him before Kishina spoke up. Naruto, are you sure you want to be the Iwa representative's escort while she's in Konoha? I imagine she might be a little sore still about you beating her during your exams in Suna. She expressed a not very happy look on her face when she spoke. She had not been very keen on the idea of Naruto volunteering to be the escort for the Tsuchikage's granddaughter while she was in Konoha for the peace talks. This was a routine job when an outsider came to the village, but she didn't like Naruto having to be that person. It was public knowledge what I thought about Konoha and Minato. Even if they were here for peace talks it didn't ease her one bit. Naruto however waved off his mother's comments, knowing full well he didn't have anything to worry about their representative. At least he hoped he didn't. Don't don't worry about it Kachan. I think I can handle her. His words didn't do much for Kishina, but she accepted it for the time being. However inwardly she was already making plans on keeping an eye on them herself the first chance she got. No way was she going to let a Kinoichi from Iwa get the jump on her son and try anything funny. Naruto though didn't notice the determined look on his mother's face and instead made a turn to begin leaving. He was something he needed to look into before he met his hot-tempered, fiery other half. As he made a few steps away from the house he heard his father's voice call out to him. I will be at my office in 30 minutes Naruto to meet with Naruto. Don't be late. Minato told him and got a salute from his son in response. Ada to san I'll see you then. Once Naruto left Minato stretched his arms before sending Horatian to his office. 
he would need to be there to meet with the representative before his son made his way over. Deep down he was really hoping for the best and was tired of the animosity between their two villages. If he could finally be the one to bring about a peace between Iwa and Kanoha, then he would do whatever necessary. Before he could though he felt the arms of his wife wrap around his stomach and saw the sly look on her face when he turned to look at her. Hashina. We have the house all to ourselves for a short while. Let's make good use of it. She whispered into his ear. Before Minato could respond he felt his wife grab the hem of his pants and begin leading him into the house, slamming the door shut before the sound of clothes being removed and playful laughter began appearing. But rookie Jenin, come on guys keep up. Mito told her twin as she ran towards the room where the exam was supposed to begin. Behind her IG and Team 7 along with Team 11, walked at a much slower pace than the excited blonde girl who had a certain spring to her step, excitement over the day they were about to have. She felt she was ready to take the next step in her shinobi career and was eagerly awaiting for the chance to elevate to the level. She knew Naruto was able to do so in only a year and at such a young age, and she wanted to try and top that. I'm coming to Mito, please slow down. We have five minutes before the exam is set to start. Aiji told her to walk side by side with Shikamaru and Sakura. Behind them walked Sai with his even present smile on his face and Sasuke a few paces behind him. Everyone had noticed there was something a little different with their Ichiha friend and teammate when they all greeted one another this morning. He seemed a lot less tense and the air around him felt far more calm than the usual stern and hazy one he had carried for so long. Though he barely said anything since they grouped up he did at least keep any negative opinions to himself and didn't try to belittle any of his team members or the other team. They weren't sure what had changed, but whatever it was it had made the dark-haired boy less of a pain in their minds. He even helped them figure out the room on the floor beneath them was not the room for the exams, but instead a room with a place over it to trick Jenin into being late for the exams. The revelation surprised them, but Sakura voiced that they shouldn't be surprised that they were being tested even before the exam started. It was just another way to weed out the weak and those not ready for the next step in their shinobi careers. Someone sure excited. Shikamaru voiced before sighing. Just looking at Mito being so excited made him exhausted. I can already tell this is going to be a drag. I should have just stayed in bed. Next to him IG looked at him with a raised eyebrow. If you think that then why are you taking part? IG got an insane look back from Nara. You're kidding right? I don't want to have my mother, your mother and my teammate constantly hounding me if I said no thanks. Have you met them? They're all completely insane. IG turned his head and saw his sister barely keeping her excitement with a gleam in her eye that resembled their mother when something was getting her blood pumping. Thinking about it, he really couldn't blame Shikamaru. He was used to Mito and her overly excited tendencies. Shikamaru was her natural opposite. Yeah I can understand that. IG admitted before turning his head around and now looking toward Sakura. Are you okay Sakura? You've been kinda quiet. Said pink haired girl was off in her own little world as thoughts ran through her mind all about the exams. It wasn't until IG asked a second time that she realized he was trying to get her attention. Turning to look at him she chuckled nervously as scratched her forehead with her index finger in embarrassment. I'm okay IG. I'm just thinking about the exams. Nervous. A little. She admitted. Do you really think we are ready for this? We really haven't been Jenin for all that long. She sounded nervous and IG picked up on it quickly, putting his arms behind his head as they walked towards the exam room. I'm honestly not sure, but I don't think Kakashi-sensei or my parents would let us compete if they didn't think we were ready. We already know how dangerous mission can be. After all, with everything that happened in Wave, I think the three of us have all had that drilled into our heads. Sakura nodded. The Wave mission had been an eye-opener for all of them. But then again the three of us have trained a lot in three months. I'm a lot faster and stronger than when I was back in the Waves, and so is Sasuke. Said boy was still a few paces behind them though was listening in on what they were saying. And you have been studying and training with Miss Shizune. That means you have definitely got stronger too right. I guess that's true. Well what she had learned from Shizune was far from perfected or mastered, she could now tell people she could use the Shosun to a sufficient degree where it could benefit her and her team. She had also become quite proficient in dodging now having Kakashi Sensei help her in that regard by having IG and Sasuke throw kunai and shurikens towards her around a training field. Her control was flawless as usual, even with her chakra reserves taking a good sized boost and her fixation on Sasuke finally waning. Don't worry Sakura. As long as we stick together we will make it through these exams. That's a promise. IG reassured and placed an arm around her shoulders, briefly making Sakura's eyes widen in surprise. She swallowed her fear and nerves and tried to look more confident. She didn't want to let her teammates down. Finally getting to the door, Mito grabbed the door handle and pushed the door open, leading the group of six inside the room where all the other teams were waiting. Once they entered they all stopped and all took a big gulp. 
filling up the entire room were genin from all across the elemental nations, all crammed into a single room, leaving little breathing room between individuals and their teams. Most looked older than the group of Konoha shinobi, easily making them the youngest members of the exam. The oldest looking was a group of Kusa shinobi who looked to be in their late teens, possibly early twenties. Every single head turned in their direction, and every face either had an emotionless face or a look of annoyance. Some were even sneering at them, likely due to their age and stature in comparison. That's a lot of people. Sakura murmured as she scanned the room. Well my two san did say there were a lot of entrants this year. Almost every country sent Jen in this year. Iji told her. He tried not to show it, but he was feeling a little intimidated at all the older genin that were looking in their direction. Hey guys. About time you all got here. The six all turned their heads and felt themselves breathe a little easier, noticing that Team 8 and Team 10 were standing off to the side. Kiba had called out to them and waved them over with a grin settled on his face, while little Akamaru stood by his feet. Behind him Ino and Choji waved over to the group as did Kurumu and Hinata. Shino stood silent as always though did not over to them in acknowledgement. Close to where they were stood was another genin team from Kanoha, though stood a few meters away from them. I'm glad to see you guys here. Iji admitted as he high-fived Kiba. Behind Kiba he saw Ino looking in his direction and gave the blonde girl a short wave. Hey Ino-chan. The girl smiled brightly in his direction and stepped close to her crush, her hands behind her back. Hi Iji kun As the group conversed they tried to ignore the looks the other groups were giving them, trying to punk out and scare off the youngest members of the exams. On the opposite side of the room the sand siblings of Sun stood with their backs against the wall, looking over towards the members of the rookies 12 they met earlier that day, especially the twin Namikazes. Do you think brats like them would be in the exams? I bet they won't last the first round. Kankuro muttered, his hands in his pockets with a lazy look on his face. He wasn't worried about the exams in the slightest. At least as long as his younger sibling didn't try to turn him into one of his latest victims. I dunno about that. Two of them are the children of Theho Kage and his famed Yuzumaki wife. And I hear the rest of them are children from noticeable clans. They could be more than just a thorn in our side. Tamari wondered aloud whilst responding to her younger brother. What do you think Gar? The red-haired boy didn't answer his sister and instead kept his gaze firmly in the blonde twins he met earlier in the day. Especially towards Mido with whom he felt a great deal of power emanating from. You. You will prove my existence. Outside, that's one packed room. I think there's even more genin in there than when we were in the exams. Naruto wondered as he stared into the room from the building across the street. He stood beside Itachi who was ever stoic and calm. Anko was elsewhere and already preparing to make a big entrance to the genin that managed to pass the first exam. You know you think they would come up with something different for the first examination instead of the same written test. Itachi shrugged. It's a useful first test. Help to weed out the ones who are not ready to take the next step and become a Itachi, scanned the large group of genin and gazed at them for a few seconds before stopping on the trio of sand siblings. That one. Yeah, that's him. Naruto looked towards Gara with a cautious look. I have a feeling he might be someone who will cause our siblings some trouble throughout the test. He doesn't strike me as someone who will allow fear or caution to hinder him. I think he's already decided to lock onto Mido from their earlier meeting. It didn't sit well with Naruto that another Jinchuriki and taking an interest in his sister, but there wasn't much he could do about it for the time being. My sensory skills might not be as pinpoint as yours, but I can tell he has an enormous amount of chakra, which is likely due to the bijuu he carries. I hope Sasuke does nothing to antagonize him. Well you said Sasuke seems to be changing himself for the better since being told the truth about that night. Perhaps if he is as good as he thinks he is then he can tell Gara is not someone he wants to try to push and shove so to speak. Despite the slow change in the youngest son of the Achiha, the boy could still be a bit of a snob when it came to his own abilities and still made sure he was better than everyone else. Though his teamwork skills according to Kakashi were improving and he and Iji had not bickered or fought nearly as much as they used to. The fact that Sakura didn't bother him anymore also seemed to lighten Sasuke's mood. The boy was still a miserable git in most people's opinions, but at least to his family, he had come out of the shell he had created around him. Makoto was simply glad to have her son back. Here comes Ibiki. Naruto said as he sensed Ibiki walking through the building with his calm and rather dark chakra signature and neared the exam room. Behind him were a large group of people who would all help to officiate the test and follow the instructions Ibiki gave them. Guess we should get going. Agreed. I need to be back at Anbu HQ. If I leave now I should still make it on time. As much as the raven haired Ichiha wanted to stay and continue to watch over Sasuke as he prepared for the first exam he had duties elsewhere. Are you still planning on watching exam 2 in the forest? Naruto saw his longtime friend nod before he watched Itachi disappear in a flock of crows, a mode of transportation he had gotten used to the Ichiha using since his return to the village. Guess I should get going too. 
I got an Iwa Shinobi to see. He quickly turned away and soon headed over towards the Hokage building. Five minutes later a casual Naruto walked through the door to his father's office and met with a sight that he honestly was not all that surprised to see. His father behind his desk with his fingers laced together while to his left Hiruzen stood looking outside of the window and looking out over the village. The reason for their serious persona Naruto knew was due to the young woman that sat in the seat directly opposite of Minato. He did his absolute best not to let a smile break on his face while in front of his father and grandfather figure. Kuritsuchi sat with her left leg thrown over her right leg while her arms were crossed. Her eyes were currently closed and looked to be in deep thought. She wore her usual Iwa Shinobi attire and looked nearly the same as she did when they had met up in Wave Country. Close to where she was sat was a large man much taller and wider in weight who stood to her side, slightly behind her, likely acting as her bodyguard. The silence in the Hokage office was almost at its peak the moment Naruto walked through the doors. Negotiations had been slow so far not much progress was made, though it was to be expected at the start of what was going to be a series of meetings over the course of the exams. Iwa were known to be quite hard-headed and stubborn when they wanted to be along with being quite nitpicky. Though he had never met the Tsuchikage he had an idea what he was like from Kuritsuchi. I hope I'm on time. He spoke as he walked towards the office desk, watching as Hiruzen turned his head to give him a smile, while Minato stood up and began to speak. You're just in time. It's been some years since you last met, but I'm sure you remember the Tsuchikage's granddaughter Kuritsuchi. Said girl slowly opened up her eyes and looked up towards Naruto, giving the younger blonde a glance at the pink eyes that he loved so much. He could see the corners of her lips fighting off the urge to smile similar to himself through her eyes, did have a look of playfulness to them, something he could recognize from their time spent with one another. As she stood up her bodyguard stood up straighter and ensured that he was close to his cage's granddaughter. Kurisuchi turned her head and looked up at Naruto, while keeping her arms crossed against her chest. The Hokage and his predecessor watched as Kurisuchi appeared to be sizing Naruto up in their minds, completely unaware that what she was doing was simply an act. They tensed for a brief moment when her index finger poked Naruto in the chest a couple of times before finally speaking. You look far more flaky than you did back in Suna. If they weren't here on official business, then both Minato and Hiruzen would have fallen flat on their faces at the remark. They were honestly expecting her to say something a bit more rude or even offensive to Naruto, and not something so minor or even playful in a sense. When they looked at Naruto he didn't seem offended by it and instead chuckled and tucked his hands into his pockets. Well it's nice to see you too. You look like you've got stronger since we last met. Kuritsuchi let a grin grace her and hold her head high. I had hoped that defeat I handed you hadn't left too much of a mark on you. He inwardly laughed at the annoyed look that appeared on her face. What can I say, defeat only pushes someone to become stronger. Give us a purpose. Her eyes narrowed. My grandfather and father upped my training in the last few years. You'll find I'm in a very different league back then. I have no doubt. Kuritsuchi tapped the floor with her foot. And I have no doubt you have been training too. After all, you managed to get into the bingo book as an S-rank shinobi. How very impressive. Well you should know. Your grandfather was the one that put me in there. To emphasize this he took the bingo book that usually sat on his father's desk and flipped it open to the page he was on. He then turned it towards Kuritsuchi and made her look at the contents. I feel flattered Iwa would hold me in such high esteem. It's no problem at all. I would know when to look out for any potential threats. Her earlier grin turned into a smirk which only made him smirk back at her. Despite the facade the two had no problems challenging one another in such a way. After all, when they met they were trying to beat the snot out of one another. Their auras when together always held a sense that one another was trying to one-up the other. Even if it was something so trivial. Perhaps a future spar is in order. I think that might be in order. Behind Kuritsuchi her bodyguard took a step forward towards them, watching Naruto intently to ensure he didn't try anything. Kuritsuchi was known to be a bit of a hothead back in Iowa, and he knew her mouth sometimes got her into trouble. While well, he had no doubt she could hold her own against Mat Kanoha Shinobi, the young man in front of her was not any ordinary shinobi. Feeling as if the tension in the room was becoming a bit much and not wanting his son and their guest to begin speaking more with fists, then their words Minato quickly voiced an idea in his mind. Well perhaps we could arrange something of that nature at a later date. Minato offered to stand up from his chair. Kuritsuchi-san, how about we continue our meetings tomorrow? We have a lot to discuss, and I expect we will be having many long discussions in the coming weeks during your stay. He looked over at his son. Perhaps Naruto could show you around the village. Hmm. I suppose we can do that. I'll be here for some time so I may as well get to know the village, especially if our two villages are going to be civil towards one another from now on. I guess I can get a good look at what makes the village of tree huggers so special. Kuritsuchi looks back up at Naruto with an expected look. Well. What do you say? The grin laced Naruto's face as he gave her a short bow. This way Milady. 
Chapter 30 So is the village to your liking Kanoichi-chan? Naruto asked as he wove in and out of the crowd as he led Kuritsuchi and her bodyguard through the Konoha marketplace. The market was booming with local and foreign traders and markets mostly thanks to the Chunin exams being brought to Konoha this year. Every time a Chunin exam came to any of the shinobi villages, so did the businesses and travelers who understand the amount of attention the exams bring across the land and how many people get brought in. Though the tournament would not be starting for another month, many had already arrived in the village and set up shop. From fabrics to fruits the entire marketplace shined with color and rich smells, leaving Naruto less than surprised at how big of attraction it had become. With so many people coming into the village it was only natural security got increased, even with many of their ranks either on missions or having some part in the Chunin exams. Though no one could see them he could sense the stationed Anbu all in their hidden locations. The civilians were none the wiser that they were being watched. Kuritsuchi meanwhile watched as the people went about their day, and it was exactly how Naruto had always described to her in their times together or the letters they exchanged via summons. It was bright with plenty of warmth that simply radiated from the people that lived in it. The style of the houses along with the bright colors of the acres of trees that were both inside the village and surrounding the village felt like she was looking at some kind of living painting. As a shinobi of Iwa, Konoha had always been described to them in a certain way and what they should expect from it should they ever see. However after finally being able to say she stood on leaf soil, she could honestly say the place wasn't so bad. Sure to her Iwa was always going to be her favorite place in the world, which had a charm to it that only someone who lived there could truly understand, she could see Kanoha coming in second place. Though she would never admit it to the blonde idiot she was in love with otherwise she would never hear the end of it. I suppose the village is quite nice. It's no Iwa, but then again Iwa is unique in itself. Kanoha isn't so bad. She saw him turn his head briefly and saw his lips quirk up into a grin before quickly turning back around. I guess that's the best I can receive so I'll take it. What about you Shinobi-san? What do you think of my humble home? The gruff-looking Iwa Shinobi only gave a loud grunt and didn't bother looking towards him. In fact, he had kept his eyes in front of him and was not straying from the path Kuritsuchi was on. Not really interested in what the man's opinion was, he spoke again to Kuritsuchi. Is there anywhere you would like to visit? Perhaps the hot springs. Kanoha is known to have some of the best in the land. Anywhere will be fine. Wherever you decide will be adequate. Besides, I wouldn't want people peeking at me while I go to the springs. I hear Kanoha has a bad habit of people peeping on women here. She smirked and a playful glint was evident in her eyes. I wouldn't want the wrong person getting a sneak peek. No, but I can bet there's someone you wouldn't mind teasing with that very idea. He thought before he went to answer her. Of course. Perhaps the top of the Hokage Mountain would be a good choice to visit next. The view of the village from the top is second to none. Then please lead the way. Then again by how slow you walk we likely won't get to the top until it's dark. He did his best to ignore her little jab but still ended up rolling his eyes at the comment. Unbeknownst to Kuritsuchi and her bodyguard the two were, in fact, being watched from a short distance away by the unlikeliest person who was keeping to the shadows of the village, making sure to stay out of Naruto's line of sight and not getting picked up by his sensory abilities. It was only luck that Naruto was currently only using his sensory abilities those clothes and around himself and Kuritsuchi. Peeping up from behind a wooden crate belonging to one of the many market traders, the violet eyes of Mina Namikas glinted as she stared off towards her brother and the two he was escorting around the village. She had caught sight of them as she was passing the Hokage building after leaving a friend's house. She had thought about going to visit her father but instead spotted Naruto and his guests. She didn't care much for who the man was that was paying little attention to Naruto, but instead was focusing on the black-haired girl that seemed to be walking a little too close to her beloved Nai-chan for her liking. She couldn't hear what they were saying yet she didn't want to get too close with the chance of being spotted. So she hung back and kept an eye on them both. Naruto however, despite not showing it, was fully aware of Mina tailing them from a distance away. He didn't need his sensory abilities to tell someone was falling. There were only two people with that shade of red hair in Konoha, and they were too short to be his mother. That left only his youngest sister. I almost feel bad for spotting her straight away. Then again I know Mina better than most. Both his sisters could get a little jealous when his attention wasn't on them, and no doubt him being seen with a girl neither recognized likely would not have been initially well received. At least, she is quieter than Mido. She'd be shouting it to the entire village. What are you looking for? He heard as he turned his head to look back towards Kuritsuchi and saw her leaning in close. His eyes immediately went over towards the bodyguard but quickly saw he was distracted by a few young women that were grouped around one of the many market stalls. Seeing a brief moment to not have to act around Kuritsuchi, he quickly jumped into the conversation. Turn behind you and look straight down the road we walked. He watched her turn her head and saw her eyes beginning to scan the road. 
Now look towards the stall we passed a half a minute ago with the bright purple fabrics decorating the top. What about Kuritsuchi started before quickly stopping when she watched a small head pop out to the side of the stall. The red hair couldn't be missed now that it had been seen. Is that who I think it is? Yep, that's Mina. She's been tailing us since we left the Hokage building. I noticed her when we left but didn't want to say anything. Despite her usual tough girl appearance even Kuritsuchi couldn't help but let her softer side appear at what Naruto just said. She was also glad she could finally put a face to the little girl that Naruto had told her so much about. The red hair really did make her stand out against the crowd and she was surprised she didn't notice her sooner. No, how sweet. Little Nichan trying to protect her big Ani san She lifted her hand and very swiftly pinched his cheek before retracting it back to her side. I bet you're like a giant marshmallow when it comes to her aren't you? She grinned when he didn't answer and knew she had hit the nail right on the head. She could see a picture now with Mina commanding her brother to do her bidding for her and Naruto following her orders like a good little puppy. The women in Naruto life really had him well trained and it was nice to see it wasn't just her that had him wrapped around her finger. All Naruto did was groan in annoyance as he rubbed a spot on his cheek that got pulled before quickly they fell back into their act as Kuritsuchi's bodyguard who had finally taken his eyes away from the group of women and focused back onto Kuritsuchi. He grunted when he noticed Naruto was looking at him prompting Naruto to shrug and look back towards him. Both he and Kuritsuchi wore a smile as they went to their next destination. Junin exam, congratulations, you all passed the first test, Ibiki announced as he looked out across the room and saw all the remaining teams. The sound of the genin letting out sighs of relief was echoed throughout the room as every genin slumped back into their chair, feeling like they had just managed to avoid getting hit in the face with an exploding paper tag. That was. More intense than I thought it was going to be, Sakura admitted as she ran a hand across her forehead. Her hands and her forehead were all clammy from the sweat that had built up in the last five minutes when the true task of the written test had been revealed. Never in her life had a written test been built up with so much tension and worry before which made the written exam for the genin test look like a cakewalk. She wondered what those that chose not to take the tenth question must have been feeling or would be feeling once they found out that the true test was to take the question. Whether they were willing to push forward despite the odds being stacked against them. There was more than one occasion during the last five minutes where Sakura had wanted to lift her hand in the air and not to take the question. Yet something inside of her was stopping her. She didn't want to fail her team nor let those that believed in her down. She had seen both Ig and Sasuke when the announcement had been made and it amazed her at how calm they both were able to keep themselves. Some like Ino, Kiba and Tamari had voiced their displeasure but still stuck to taking the question. No one wanted to let the other down, nor be the one to get left behind, while everyone else continued to climb forward. You okay Sakura? She heard Iji ask from two rows behind her and turn her head to look at him. His hands were behind his head and his breathing was hard telling her he was more worried than she realized. She smiled and gave him a small thumbs up. I'm okay. Mentally exhausted but I'm okay. That was more intense than I thought. I know what you mean. I'm glad we managed to stick through it though. Iji then looked over toward Sasuke who had turned his gaze in that direction at the same time. The two boys' eyes met for a brief moment before both just gave the other a quick nod. Across the room the team that was left quickly grouped together to celebrate their passing of the first exam, however brief they could. None was more excited than Mito who was punching the air in delight and quickly grabbed Shikamaru and Sai into tight headlocks, much to Nara's ire. We kick as much butt. She voiced as a megawatt grin was on her face that lit up the entire room. She was on her way to the top and there was not going to be anyone who would stop her. Moments later the window to the side of the room smashed and everyone watched as a figure came through the window, rolled across the ground and stopped just in front of Ibiki, who looked more annoyed than he had been during the entire hour. With her hands on her hips and a smirk that promised pain, Anko stood in front of the entire exam hall in her usual attire, looking out across the large room with a sick gleam in her eyes. Behind her, a banner appeared being held up together by two kunai sticking into the ceiling that read here comes the second test's proctor. The wonderful and sexy Anko Midarashi. Across the room most were looking at the woman in shock at how she entered the room, while others blushed at her attire, seeing the curve of her breasts through the mesh shirt. The only ones not reacting in either way were Mido and Aiji who gulped at the sight of their Ani-chan's longtime friend and comrade. They both remembered what happened the last time they sparred with the purple-haired woman. Though both saw it more as being tortured by the crazed Kanoichi. They still remembered all the bites they had on their arms from the snakes chasing them. Why did it have to be her? Looking out across the room Anko couldn't help but let her look drop when she saw how many of the teams were left. She thought Ibiki's test would have at least got rid of two-thirds of them, yet instead, almost half the room was still filled. She guessed there must have been about 70 to 80 people left, therefore leaving around 25 teams still participating in the exams. I think you're beginning to lose your touch with Ibiki. There's still a whole load of them left. 
I guess we just have a good crop of potential tunins this year. Was all Ibiki said before turning around and quickly leaving the room, his long black jacket whipping into the air as he turned around. Yeah well I guess it's up to me to weed out the weaklings that somehow managed to get past you. Putting her hands on her hips, Anko stared out across the room and began speaking to all the genin. Alright, you maggots listen up and listen well. I don't how you all managed to get past Ibiki's test, but if I had to I'd say it was nothing but luck. You will all find very quickly that your luck has just run out. A genin from Kusa called out, what's that supposed to mean? It means what I have planned for all of you in the second test will make this test look like a cakewalk in comparison. I'm not having any pencil pushers think they're ready to become a chunin. Now just so we're clear my name is Anko Midarashi, Jonin of Kanoha and all around Badis. From this point on what I say goes. If I tell you to jump off a bridge then you jump off a bridge. Are we clear? There was an audible mumble throughout the room that quickly bugged Anko. I said are we clear? Yes, Midarashi-san. Grinning Anko scanned the room and quickly zeroed in on two very familiar blondes and one duck-haired emo. Well looky here. Naru and Tachi's baby siblings are still with us. She swept across the and quickly planted her in the seat next to Mito, who gulped at how close she was sitting next to her. Nor are you scared of me? I don't bite. At least not that much. Mustering up the courage, Mito stood up from her seat and pointed her finger in Anko's face. You don't scare me Anko Nichan. I'm gonna be a tune in whether you're the proctor or not. Just you wait and see. The people around the room thought Mito was either very brave or very stupid. I don't scare you huh? Anko asked before smirking. Iji could only shudder as he wondered what kind of untold horror his sister had just unleashed upon herself. Well then let's put that to the test shall we? Anko leaned in and pulled Mito closer to her as everyone watched as Anko began whispering something into her ear. Everyone watched as Anko whispered some unknown words into her ear while Mito's face slowly turned redder and redder, eyes widening to the size of dinner plates. A moment later Mito managed to break away from Anko and threw her hands over her ears. La 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 I'm not listening la 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 la. Was what she repeated aloud as Anko cackled, glee evident on her face at how Mito reacted. La 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 that's disgusting la la la. Steadily Iji raised his hand in the air. Anko-san, what did you tell Mito to get her to act that way? Iji asked though dreading what the answer was going to be. Anko turned around and looked at the other twin. Mo I told her about the night your brother and I had hot and passionate sex. Immediately Iji went ghost white and followed his sister's actions, throwing his hands to ears and yelling out anything to stop Anko's voice from getting through. All the others genin made gagging noises, except for Sakura who secretly began imagining the two together and hit her blush. The sight of the twins looking and sounding mortified warmed her to her heart, and yet she had one more thing she needed to say to fully get that warm fuzzy feeling she loved so much. Now before I take you to where the second task will be held, I have one thing to say. Anko pointed her finger straight towards Kiba who looked surprised to see her pointing his way. You. Hana's little brother. Just so you know. I'm having your sister tonight. Laughing as Kiba followed suit to the Namika's twins, Anko headed towards the window where she crouched onto the window and prepared to jump towards the building just opposite them. I want every single one of you to be at training ground 44 in 30 minutes. Anyone not there will be eliminated from the exams and will find a snake in their bed tomorrow morning. Letting the warning hang there, Anko left the room leaving behind the scared-looking Jenin and three members of the Kanoha rookies, wishing they could forget what she had told them. Okage Monument, so what do you think? Nice view huh? Naruto said as he stood at the top of the Hokage Monument with Kuritsuchi and her bodyguard looking over the entire village. Beside him, Kuritsuchi stood looking over the village for the first time and allowed a smile to grace her face. It was very beautiful the way the sun hit the tops of the trees that surrounded the village and enhanced the warmth of the gravel and stone around them. Naruto didn't sense Mina in the nearby area and instead could sense her heading back home where their mother was likely preparing dinner. No doubt she would fill in Kashina of what she had seen today. Who knows, maybe Kachan planned to have her tail me. Now that was a thought. Yes. It's very nice. It wasn't a lie and didn't need to act a certain way with her bodyguard hanging back. He too was staring out at the village and while would not admit it found the view to be rewarding and mentally saved a picture for future thoughts. Do you come up here often? Naruto nodded. I do though I normally sit on the stone faces of cage. Usually on top of the sandame's head. I come up here a few times a week to watch the sunset. That must be a great view. It is. Perhaps sometime during your stay you could see it. It's not a sight one could forget very easily. No, I imagine it's not. She breathed calmly and wished her bodyguard was not with her right now. Despite not being overly affectionate in public, she did feel the urge to lean into the young man that stood beside her, to feel his warmth against the sun that bore down on them. We have a place similar to this that allows us to look over the village. I could compare the sight in the same way to this one. Really? Yeah. 
Right in the center of the village is the Hokage Tower, a tall building higher than the other buildings. The Tsuchikage is located at the very top and looks over the entire village in a full 360 degree view. She said, I would go there a lot when I was younger or when I spent the day with my grandfather. You could follow the entire trail of the sun from dawn to dusk. That sounds nice. If these meetings go well then perhaps I could get to see it one day too. Guratushi shrugged. Maybe but who really knows. Besides, I haven't agreed to anything yet when it comes to our two villages. These meetings could go belly up for all we know. That's true. Naruto smiled, not taking his eyes off the village. Unknown to Kuritsuchi's bodyguard who was once again not paying attention to his charge, Naruto and Karachi's hand edged closer together just enough to where their fingers rubbed against one another. The entire time they were up on the cage monument they kept touched and held the other's hand for as long as possible without raising any suspicion. Training Ground 44 This is Training Ground 44. I've never been here before. Iji muttered as he looked through the chain fence that spread all the way across the front of the Forest of Death. He stood at the front of his team while Sasuke and Sakura hung back yet stared straight back at the forest. Just at first glance, all the genin knew this was no ordinary forest, while well, Aiji, Nido and some of the other clan children had heard about the famed forest that Fushinobi and Kanoha would dare to enter. They had heard many stories about those that went in and never came out. Those creatures, far larger and more dangerous than any other animals, lived and spawned here. Hachan would never let us come anywhere close to this place. She said we could easily get hurt here. Even worse if we went too far in. Nido added as she stood beside Shikamaru who this time had a thoughtful look on his face as they looked at the dark and dangerous forest. Alright, all you kitties listen up. Here are the rules for the second task. If you ignore or don't listen to what I'm about to tell you then it could mean certain death. Anko told them jumping up onto a wooden crate and looking down on all the genin. For this task, each team will be given one of two scrolls, the Heaven Scroll and the Earth Scroll. Digging into the pockets of her trench coat, Anko pulled out one blue scroll and one white scroll. Then each team will enter through one of the gates along the fence of Training Ground 44, where you will then enter the forest. Gasps could be heard and shocked looks appeared on the faces of the genin, but Anko continued. You will spend five days in the forest of death where you must survive and gain the opposite scroll that you have been given. Meaning if you have a heaven scroll then you need to acquire an earth scroll. Once you have obtained both you must make your way straight to the tower located in the center of the forest. What do we do for food? Choji asked, looking horrified at the prospect of no food for five days. Then you find some. Once you're in that forest it's all up to you and your team. Scavenger, hunt, whatever it takes. Sounds intriguing. I look forward to it. A feminine voice spoke, making Anko look over towards the Kusa Shinobi. It came from the tall girl that stood in front of her two teammates. There was a gleam to her eye that made Anko believe she was looking forward to the idea of being in the forest of death. She didn't look like anything unique and wore a standard kusan in attire. Yet looking at her it made Anko feel a bubble of anxiety appear in the bottom of her stomach. Nothing major, but it made Anko look twice at the girl before looking back towards the rest of the genin. Something about her feelings. Off. Now line up with your teams and get your scrolls. Once you receive them head straight towards your designated gate. Come on guys let's get started. We do this, we will be one step closer to being chunin. Nido declared before racing towards the tent where the scrolls were being handed out. Everyone else followed slowly after her, none looking in any rush to go into the forest where they could potentially die. Thirty minutes passed by quickly as the teams all stood at their chosen gates. Aiji, Sasuke, and Sakura all stood beside one another and readied themselves as they waited for the gates to open. Team 7 found themselves waiting in front of gate 6, while further down the line Nido, Shikamaru and Sai waited outside of gate 13. All the other teams did exactly the same and waited for their respective gate to open. Team 7 and Team 11 both got a hold of a heaven scroll, though were not allowed to tell anyone outside of their teams. I can do this. I won't fall behind. Nido and Aiji both thought. Both hoped both their teams had the same scroll as each other, as neither one wanted to have to fight one another. Soon enough the buzzer went off and all teams immediately shot into the forest, leaving only small dust trails behind them. Anko watched all the teams vanish from sight as other Chunins and special Jonins went to fulfill their duties, now that the second exam had fully started. She, however, intended to stay for the duration of the five days due to being the proctor. However the feeling from earlier hadn't gone away, and she felt something clawing away in the back of her mind. It didn't sit well with her and decided she needed to act. Itachi. A moment later Itachi appeared next to her in his Anbu gear and face covered by the crow mask. She knew her longtime friend was in the area and had been assigned to look over the exam in secret. She was going to need him for this. The Kusa Kanoichi that spoke out during the explanation. Something isn't right about her. Keep an eye on her. Got it. 
He disappeared as quick as he appeared leaving Anko looking out through the forest, as the sound of Jenin battling for the scrolls could already be heard not just a few minutes from entering. Golden Leaf Hotel. As the day came to an end Kuritsuchi hummed to herself as she began drawing a bath for herself in her hotel suite. The rest of the afternoon had gone fairly well and kept up her act with Naruto for the duration of their time together. No one expected a thing or, at least, she hoped no one could see through the charade. Though she enjoyed her time with the blonde knucklehead that somehow won over her heart, it still felt incomplete being unable to act normally around one another. Touring the village was nice, but she just wished she could have done it as herself and not behind a mask. The Hokage had the sense to make her stay in the village as lavish as possible and to ensure she was comfortable. That reason alone showed that Kanoha was serious about wanting to begin building bridges with Iwa. The Yellow Flash, though infamous and greatly hated for his part in the many lost shinobis her village faced during the Third War, had thus far been generous towards her. Her bodyguard Jiru passed out asleep in the next room, out like a light the moment his head hit the pillow. In all honesty she wasn't sure why her grandfather had assigned him as her bodyguard during her stay in the Leaf, but she had no say in the matter. While she would have preferred her old teammate Akatsuchi, since she could reprimand and keep him in the dark far easier due to being rather clumsy and somewhat dim, she made do and ensured Jiru saw and heard nothing of her time with Naruto. Kuritsuchi. She heard making a smile flicker on her face as she turned around. The window could be heard latching shut again before she felt the warmth of Naruto's arms wrap around her. She fell back against the embrace before turning and wrapping her arms around his neck while his snake around her waist. They leaned in and pressed their lips together while slowly leaning against the wall. They stayed that way for a few minutes as they relished in being able to properly touch and embrace one another after being so close to each other the entire day. It was driving them both nuts and planned on enjoying what time they had this evening. No one saw you come in. No one. I made sure to slip and while the Anbu that has been keeping an eye on you since you got to your room switched over. We have about five minutes. Five minutes was hardly enough and Kurisuchi showed her displeasure by sighing unhappily. She leaned forward and pressed her forehead against his shoulder. I know it's not easy, but these talks between Kanoha and Iwa could be the bridge we need to finally go public with our relationship. I know. It's just hard. She felt his head lower and sat on top of her own while they stayed together in a tight hug. I'm tired of all the secrecy. I just want us to be a normal couple and be able to go out in the street and do things couples usually do. We will. Once these tune-in exams are all over with and the talks begin to go more positively, then we can reveal it to everyone. Naruto cupped her face between his hands. No one wants to reveal our relationship to everyone more than I do, but I know if we do it too soon, then it could have a harmful effect on how these talks go. I know we have talked about this before, but we need to think about the well-being of the village before we make this announcement. Her hands came up and rested on top of his. Yeah I guess that is true. Our villages will likely feel the effect of this relationship. The son of the Hokage dating the Tsuchikage's granddaughter. Sounds like something out of our village's nightmares. Naruto laughed which prompted her to laugh as well. Despite their talk, it did humor them at wondering how their families would take it. Some would undoubtedly take it better than others. I guess it would be a big deal huh? Yeah, the biggest. Both laughed as they held one another as they enjoyed the thoughts. A moment later Naruto peeked through the door to the bathroom and saw the bath still running. Are you running a bath? A sly grin appeared on Kuritsuchi's face as she played with the hem of the white bathrobe, pressing herself against his chest. I might have been. Why? An equal-looking smirk appeared on Naruto's face as he enjoyed her current action. Well, I have noticed I am beginning to smell a bit. Maybe due to all that touring I've been doing today. I think a bath might be in order. Well we can't have that now can we? I guess I might have to give you a good scrub down with the soap. Only if I can do the same with you. She took his hand and began leading him into the bathroom and pushed the door open with her free hand. She stopped momentarily and looked at him. Won't it be a little suspicious if you suddenly walk out of here with your Anbu watching? Don't worry about that. I know how to snake my way around them and I can sense everything around the hotel. We will be fine. Before she could say anything else Kuritsuchi suddenly released a high-pitched yelp as Naruto suddenly pulled her towards him and lifted her up with his hands resting on her barely robed bottom. Besides, I'm not missing out on our quality time together. Their lips then met together and slowly Naruto walked inside the bathroom as Kuritsuchi slowly peeled off her robe. As they spent their quality time together and basked in each other's long-awaited warmth and desire, a pair of wrinkled onyx eyes looked over at the hotel from the top of the cage building, his hands behind his back and standing as stiff as a board. He had seen the young blonde sneak into the hotel, having been keeping an eye on him since he had left the cage building earlier in the afternoon. He felt something was off and didn't want to pry, but felt it was his duty to do so as someone who loved and cared for Naruto. He was now glad he did. Naruto what have you done? 
Chapter 31, Naruto had a spring in his step as he entered his apartment, a smile gracing his face as he returned having finally spent some time with Kuritsuchi in his own village. Granted it was all still in complete secrecy, but it was still a good step forward. They got to enjoy a good soak in the bath, a bit of personal time and a short meal after Kuritsuchi ordered room service. He checked it wasn't poison just to be on the safe side. He stayed for nearly two hours before he called it a night. He didn't want to push his luck and stay the night despite how enticing it was. Kuritsuchi didn't make it easy either, having slipped into bed patting the spot next to her. As tempted as he was he knew it was better for him to go home. They had already pushed their luck enough for one night. Good evening Naruto. Naruto almost jumped out of his skin as he whirled around and saw Hiruzen sitting down in the armchair Itachi would regularly use when he was with them. The Sandane was in his usual daily wear, with his arms crossed against his chest with his head down and eyes closed. If Naruto hadn't known any better he would have said he had fallen asleep in the chair, but he did know better when it came to his grandfather figure. He was also surprised that he couldn't sense him yet he knew if there was anyone that could mask their chakra signature and hide it from him, then it was going to be Hiruzen. He was known as the professor for a reason. Hey Gigi, you scared me there. What are you doing sitting here in the dark? Naruto asked as he took his jacket off and hung it on one of the hooks beside the door. We didn't make plans did we? If we did, I'm really sorry that I forgot. Hiruzen shook his head. No Naruto we did not have plans. I simply decided to stop by. I have something I would like to talk to you about. Intrigued, Naruto walked over and sat on the side of the sofa closest to Hiruzen. He was curious about what he wanted to talk about so late at night. You sure you should be up Gigi? Normally you're in bed by 9. You sure that's good for your old bones? You'll find Naruto these old bones still have some kick in them yet if you'd like to get another demonstration. Hiruzen asked, but Naruto shook his head. He wasn't looking for a rematch of their battle in the Chunin Stadium anytime soon. No, I was wondering where you have been tonight. Hiruzen watched him like a hawk, but Naruto didn't let anything slip. I was with Anko over at the Forest of Death. I wanted to ask her how the twins were doing when she saw them. I left a little while ago when Itachi came to ask the same for Sasuke. Is that so? Yeah, that's right. Naruto clarified yet Hiruzen didn't look very convinced. He just continued to look at Naruto with stern eyes, bringing his hands up and placing them together underneath his chin. Naruto leaned back in the chair and not thinking anything was wrong, yet Hiruzen began to lean towards him. He motioned for Naruto to lean closer, prompting the blonde to return forward. Tell me Naruto why are you lying to me? Naruto's eyebrows shot up in surprise as he tried to defend himself. A frown appeared on his face and began scratching the back of his head. Gigi I'm not lying. Why would you think I'm lying? Hiruzen felt like smirking yet instead kept a cool facade on his face, something that always worried Naruto whenever he got into trouble. His grandfather had ways of finding out if someone was lying, which was something Naruto thought he was good at. Or at least, he had been relatively good at up to this point. Because Naruto. I visited Anko shortly after the genin went into the forest of death for their second exam and was told she sent Itachi inside the forest to keep an eye on some unsavory character that didn't sit well with her. Panda quickly built up in Naruto's chest and felt a lump forming in his throat. That and I saw Hana heading over towards her location an hour ago. I doubt you spoke to her while they were likely having one of their more intimate moments. Naruto swallowed the lump in his throat and shuffled nervously in his seat. He thought he had been so careful. He snuck past the Anbu with little problem and made no sound as he went in and out of the window, yet somehow he had failed to notice Hiruzen had been watching him the whole time. Am I slipping up? Is the gap between us that much still? Naruto. Tell me the truth. Or should I take a guess as to why you snuck into the Tsuchikage's granddaughter's room at the Golden Leaf Hotel? If Hiruzen was much of a gambling man, then he would have won the grand prize at any casino, from the pale shade Naruto's face suddenly turned a deathly shade of pale that didn't suit him. Hiruzen knew he had hit the mark and now only had to wait for Naruto to admit to what he was suspecting. I. I've slipped up. What should I do? Naruto thought as he looked back at the state Hiruzen was giving him. As much as he had wanted to tell people about their relationship he had hoped it would have been on his own terms and not suddenly sprung on him in such a manner. Yet in a sense, what he was currently feeling with the surprise and the shock would likely be what the people they were going to tell would feel. Especially with members of his family. I don't know what to do. I'm not prepared for this. At least not like this. Just tell me the truth. I'll only find out by some other means, my boy. Hiruzen responded as if he was reading his mind. If it helps then I will keep this conversation between us. This secret you have that ties you to the Iwa Kinoichi will remain a secret until you both decide to share it with others. However right now I am asking you Naruto. Is there something going on between the two of you? Yeah, Jiji, Naruto whispered. There is something between us. What is that my boy? Hiruzen asked softly and put his hand on his shoulder. 
The two stared at one another as silence ran across the room as it waited for Naruto to speak. The silence felt like it lasted forever, but Hiruzen waited patiently for Naruto to speak. An internal fight was going on in Naruto's head as he tried to weigh the pros and cons yet couldn't come to any kind of resolution. It was all so sudden that he said the only words he could think of. Gigi. I love her. Like a chain reaction, the look on Hiruzen's face softened as did his eyes as he slowly brought his arm back to being crossed against his chest. Naruto watched Hiruzen from the corners of his eyes as he looked down at the ground, still shuffling in his seat as he now waited for the next words to come out of Hiruzen. He wasn't sure how he was going to react. In all honesty, he wasn't sure how he felt towards Iwa. The conversation never really came up past the basic information. Naruto. Hiruzen eventually spoke while taking a deep breath. Start from the beginning Naruto. How did this all start? Well, Jiji. It went like this. It started I guess when I was on a mission with Makoto-sensei and Anko four years ago where I encountered Raiga Kurosuki. Over the next 20 minutes, Naruto told Hiruzen everything. From encountering Kurosuki in the field against Raiga to their meeting at the Fire Daimyo's palace during his first year at being one of the Guardian 12. How they grew closer during her brief time there and how they remained in contact for the next two years, thanks to the use of his summons, so they could meet up when it was at all possible. Naruto made sure to include how careful they were not to raise suspicion when they were together, not wanting Hiruzen to think he was always sloppy when it came to Kuritsuchi. Naruto told Hiruzen how Kuritsuchi made him feel. How she brought out the best in him and how she motivates him to get stronger not only for her but for his family and vice versa. How she constantly keeps him on his toes and how much he loved her laugh when she shared it with the world. Unknowingly to Naruto the more he talked about Kuritsuchi, the more Hiruzen began to understand and the less concerned he was becoming towards this issue. Hiruzen didn't say anything and just listened to what Naruto had to say. I see. That's a lot to take in. Hiruzen admitted. It was a lot to wrap around in the old cage's head, but he had to go back to what Naruto said earlier. You really do love her don't you? Yeah Jiji, I really do. She means more to me than anything in the world. Naruto whispered as he ran a hand through his hair, yet a smile was on his face as he spoke about her. I've never felt this way about anyone else before. He really is in love. Hiruzen thought as he nodded his head. The way he speaks about her, it's... It's how I speak about my Bawako. His eyes aren't lying. Not about any of it. Why did you keep a secret all this time? Why have you kept this secret for the last two years? Hiruzen asked. Did you think we wouldn't approve? That we would be angry? Honestly yes I did Jiji. I'm not ashamed of my relationship with Kuro-chan, far from it in fact. But could you imagine what would happen if word about us got out when neither of us is ready to tell people? Naruto spoke. A Konoha shinobi dating an Iwa shinobi. It's unheard of. There are a lot of people in both our villages that would sooner see hell freeze over than let that happen. Jiji. Are you angry at me for keeping this for you? Naruto whispered. Do. Do you disapprove of us? Hiruzen let out another sigh as he rubbed his forehead. This was honestly not a situation he thought he was going to be in concerning Naruto. I'm not mad at Naruto. I'm honestly just surprised. In all my years I thought you would have eventually found a nice girl in the leaf to settle down with one day, to fall in love and start a family with. You falling in love with an Iwa shinobi, the granddaughter of their current Tsuchikage no less, is a lot for these old bones to take in. I know it's hard to imagine Jiji, I never thought I would fall in love with her either. When it happened I was just as surprised as you are right now. I didn't know how it was going to work or how we would prove to everyone that it's real, but none of that really matters to me anymore. I love her Jiji and I don't want to be with anyone else. Naruto admitted. She's just. When I'm with her I just feel whole, as if when she's next to me everything around me just looks and feels clear. Do you understand what I mean? He did understand what Naruto meant. He understood what Naruto described as how he felt with Bawako. Yes Naruto. I understand what you mean. Naruto, you understand that with this relationship the potential outcomes of revealing it not only to your family but to her family and both your respective villages might not be a happy one given our history. I know. It's why we have been waiting for the right time. Naruto told him. With Kuritsuchi acting as the envoy and voice of her grandfather in peace talks, what better time is there to reveal our relationship? It could even help the peace talks between our villages. Or it could destroy any hope of peace, Hiruzen told him, causing Naruto to deflate a little but I can't deny the optimism. It could have potential success if handled correctly, and a lot of explaining is given to your families. So when do I get to meet her? Hiruzen asked surprising Naruto who gawked at him. Do you want to meet her? Naruto asked in a higher tone than he usually spoke. Of course. Now that I know it would be rude of you not to introduce me to her. Hiruzen told him. Bring her to the Saratobi compound in two days for dinner. I'll prepare my signature stew for us. To the Saratobi compound. Won't that be a little suspicious if we enter in nice clothes together? 
Won't the other Saratobi clan members talk? Well he was happy that his grandfather figure wanted to meet his girlfriend, he was still a little concerned with other people finding out without their knowledge. They already slipped up once, and he hoped to call me above that Kuritsuchi wouldn't get mad at him for them being discovered by Hiruzen. Well if your secrecy skills are as good as they were tonight, then perhaps you need to start practicing more on your espionage skills, my boy. Or would you prefer we have another lesson? Perhaps even Kuritsuchi can join us since it appears she will be sticking around for a while. No no no, that's okay Jiji. It's all good. I'll make sure to be more stealthy. I promise. Good. I expect no more secrets of this magnitude between us from now on Naruto. Understood. He asked, but the tone of his voice was clearly in Hishokage voice that Naruto recognized. Yes Jiji. You got it. Forest of death. You okay Sakura? Iji called out as he stood over the unconscious body of an aimed shinobi who was face down on the ground, breathing ragged breaths through his breathing mask. He kept one of his tri-pronged kunai pointed towards the downed genin and kept an eye on him from the corner of his eye as he looked over towards his pink-haired teammate. Sakura had a few scratches on her and her clothes had gotten torn in a few places but were relatively fine. Her training with Shizune had come into full effect when they encountered the aimed genin and it got put to good use when one of the aimed genin quickly began targeting her as his teammates focused on Iji and Sasuke. I'm okay Iji. A little out of breath, but I'm okay. Sakura responded as she looked down at the dead genin at her feet. It was her first kill as a shinobi and could already feel her hands shaking as she just stared down at the body. The blood was seeping out of the genin's neck where she had managed to cut his throat after he got distracted from Iji and Sasuke taking out his comrades. She had watched as his hands went straight to his throat but it did little to stop the bleeding. Soon enough he collapsed to the ground and stopped moving entirely as his life slipped away. It was bound to happen eventually. You. You can cry later when you're on your own. I don't see Iji and Sasuke. This was her first kill. Iji thought, noticing a similar look on her face. He had his first kill two months ago. He remembered getting home and crying into his mother's arms, who had deduced what had happened when she saw the look on his face. She had held him for about 10 minutes before she began talking to him about it. His father did the same when he got home and made sure he knew what he did was justifiable, that he was following orders and protecting himself. Sasuke, have you got the scroll? Sasuke had his opponent beaten and tied to a tree with ninja wire, looking a little out of breath, but otherwise unharmed. He put his hand in his pocket and pulled out the earth scroll for his teammates to see. Iji grinned while Sakura smiled. That was the hard part done in their minds. Now all they had to do was get to the tower in the middle of the forest. Iji had made a clone to scout the tops of the trees, who had managed to see the tower some ways off in the distance. If Sakura's maths was right which it normally was then it would take them about 20 minutes to reach if they pushed themselves. None of them had the desire to stay in the monster-filled forest any longer than they needed, so the choice was easy for them. We'll go straight to the tower. There's no point for us being out here any longer. We have what we came for so let's finish the second task before any of the other teams find us. Sasuke told them as he put away his weapons. Sakura did the same while Iji thumped the down aim shinobi in the back of the head, knocking him out and no longer making him a viable threat. I know we've only been out here since yesterday, but I'm already missing my bed. Keeping an eye open for bandits in the middle of the night is way different to looking out for giant snakes and spiders in the night. Sakura told her teammates as they picked up some of their loose equipment they had used and lost during the battle. You and I are both Sakura. Iji agreed as did Sasuke who merely nodded. Now let's get out of here. The trio stood together and leaped up into the trees and were about to begin running at top speed when a voice appeared out of nowhere. I'm afraid it won't be so easy. All three of them whipped their heads to the side to find one of the Kusa shinobi from earlier leaning against the tree with her arms folded, looking right at them. Her voice made a shiver go down their spines and noticed she was looking at them in a way a snake looked at a mouse. Immediately the three genins jumped away and landed on a thick branch a few meters away, with Sasuke and Iji both standing in front of Sakura, can eyes drawn and pointing towards what do you want Iji demanded. Do you want our scrolls? Well, you can't have them. Yeah, Sakura added. You have to go through us if you want them. To their surprise, however, the girls simply laughed. Her laugh though made the hairs on the back of their neck stand on edge. It sounded so menacing. So eerie that the trio couldn't help but take a small step back. She's not scared. We outnumber her three to one and she's not scared in any way. Iji thought. Is she like Haku? Have we met someone of that level? I don't like this. Something about her feels off. Sasuke thought. Deciding it was wise not to let their guard down around this person, Sasuke activates his Sharingan, his eyes now spinning with two red eyes with one Tomo in one eye and two in the other. To their surprise however as soon as Sasuke activated his Sharingan, a large smile appeared on the girl's face and they watched as a long tongue appeared out of the girl's mouth. 
She was practically salivating at the mere sight of Sasuke Sharingan. What do I want you to ask? She chuckled again before the trio watched in panic and disgust as her hands came up to her face and peeled off a small portion of her face, revealing skin so white it could match snow and golden eyes with a slit for a pupil. I want you, Sasuke. Before Sasuke, Sakura and Iji could say a single word the girl was suddenly in front of them in the blink of an eye and kicked Iji square in the gut, knocking him off the branch and down to the ground. Passed. I didn't even see him move. Sasuke thought before jumping away when the girl's attention turned to him. She paid no mind to Sakura and instead just followed after Sasuke. Sakura watched as the dangerous girl chased after Sasuke before stealing her nerves and going after her. Down below Iji winced as he slowly got up, holding his stomach with the wind knocked out of him. She's no normal genin. Her kicks are like iron. Weaving in and out of the tree Sasuke watched as the girl chased after him and was quickly catching up with him. Going through a few hand signs, he shouted fire style. Fireball jutsu. A large fireball shot straight towards the girl however to his surprise the girl simply endured it and came out of the fireball with blackened skin that was burned all over. You'll have to do better than that, she said, a sick smile on her face before lunging towards him. Sasuke reacted as fast as he could and pulled out multiple kunai and threw them towards her. They hit their mark and a small explosion went off that knocked Sasuke back. Looking up from his down position Sasuke watched as gulped when he saw the girl come out of the explosion again looking exactly the same as before. Gripping his fist tightly, Sasuke went through more hand signs. Fire style Phoenix Flower Jutsu. The fire streamed through the air with multiple flower shaped fireballs going towards the girl, however, instead, she gracefully dodged all of the attacks. She made it look so easy that Sasuke couldn't help but wonder who she was. Before Sasuke could let out another attack, the girl lunged at him again, but this time managed to grab him and pin him to the tree with a hand wrapped around his throat. Sasuke struggled to breathe as her grip was iron tight. He felt her other hand come up and pull down his collar to expose his neck. Opening her mouth wide, Sasuke's eyes grew wide when a freakishly large set of fangs appeared in her mouth and aimed for the side of his neck. He tried to struggle, but with his throat being crushed, he didn't get the sufficient air supply to keep moving. Just as the fangs were about to touch the skin the sound of swirling could be heard. The girl growled in annoyance before jumping away as IG appeared. Rasengan. He shouted as aimed for the girl's chest. Before it could land however the girl grabbed his hand before it could make contact and swung him through the air. IG was suddenly thrown into the air but somehow managed to land on the side of the tree, sticking to the bark tanks to the tree walking technique. Why might to know such a technique at such a young age? I see your parents have taught you well. The girl said in a mocking tone. But you're not the one I want. Leave and I might let you live. Stay and you will die. Sakura appeared next to Sasuke and checked his throat for any kind of damage while IG glared at the girl. Forget it. No way am I leaving a teammate behind. I'm a shinobi of the leaf and we don't leave our comrades behind. You want him to go through me. The girl sighed as IG summoned two clones around him. So young. What a pity you had to die too soon. Bringing up her thumb she bit into the skin where she then drew a line of her own blood on a tattoo that was on her wrist. Summoning Jutsu. A large puff of smoke appeared knocking IG and destroying his two clones immediately. Putting a hand over his face, he waved away some of the smoke, but quickly regretted it a moment later when a large pair of golden eyes was looking back at him. Snake. IG shouted when the snake lunged right at him, jaws open wide. IG tried to get away, but instead found the girl suddenly beside him and kicked him hard once again directly into the snake's mouth. IG's eyes went wide as fear gripped his heart as the world around him began going dark before he found himself landing and sliding down the throat of the enormous snake. IG. Sakura shouted as Sasuke looked at the snake in shock. Neither could believe what had just happened as they watched the snake turn its attention to them. Its tongue flicked out of its mouth as the girl landed on top of its head, looking right back at Sasuke. Girl if I were you I would run. I want to say it a third time. The bodies of Sasuke and Sakura both shook and both fell to their knees when a huge amount of killing intent suddenly hit them like a boulder. Both couldn't move as the force was just too much for either of them to bear. It was like Zabuza back in wave country yet ten times greater. So great they could barely breathe. As the girl was about to step off a snake once again a swirling sound could be heard, but this time, it came from beneath them. Sakura and Sasuke both looked down and watched as the side of the snake's stomach suddenly burst open in a shower of blood and guts. Both covered their eyes as some of its body contents rained down through the air and splashed over the trees and the ground. However, Sakura and even Sasuke felt a wave of relief when they watched Iji push himself out of the now dead snake and fall to the ground along with the snake. Iji coughed and spat out some of the blood from the snake that had gotten into his mouth. I'm never doing that again, he muttered before steadily standing up. His legs were shaking as the shock of what happened ran through him. 
a mix of fear and adrenaline was currently coursing through his body before he focused his attention back on the girl that had caused the gross incident that just happened. My coach Anne doesn't like it when I swear, but since she's not around I think I can get away with it, he said before grabbing one of his kunai tightly. Get the hell away from them you bitch. My my what a mouth you have. She taunted before Iji bolted towards her and began engaging into jutsu. He aimed to kill, specifically towards her neck and heart. He was tired of what was supposed to be an easy pass to the next task. He threw punches and kicks towards her head only for the girl to either block or dodge the swipes, pushing him away a moment later, but IG didn't stop as he kept going. The two remained in that state for about two minutes, and IG felt his temper spiking at how easy this girl was blocking his strikes. It was like she was putting no effort into her movements. Water style. Water bullet jutsu. Dozens of large glumps of water shot out of IG's mouth towards his opponent, fully intent on hurting this girl or worse. However, like with the fire jutsu, the girl dodged the bullets gracefully, and instead the attacks just impacted the trees and the ground. Sasuke, we need to help Iji. Sakura told her teammate, but saw Sasuke was in a state of shock and fear, barely moving his body at all, as his eyes just watched his teammate fight a battle he couldn't win. We can't win. She's too strong. We're gonna die. Sasuke whispered, but Sakura had heard him. She looked ready to cry as those words came out his mouth. Had Sasuke really given up just like that? The boy she had a crush on for so long was just giving up like that while their teammate was fighting an impossible battle. She wasn't. She couldn't just give up so Sakura did something she thought she would never do. She raised her hands and she slapped Sasuke across the face, stunning him out of his fear and looking at her in surprise. You might have given up but I won't. I won't let our teammate fight this battle alone. She shouted at him before slowly standing up and going towards the fight. She knew she didn't stand a chance, but she wasn't going to let her fear control her while her teammate fought an impossible battle. She grabbed a kunai from her pouch and got involved. Sakura. Sasuke thought as he watched Sakura jump in. As soon as she did, the Kusa shinobi showed no interest in fighting her. If anything, Sasuke thought she looked more annoyed at the battle she was stuck in. Her gaze flickered back towards him, clearly not taking the battle seriously. Hey. Don't ignore us. IG shouted, going through hand signs as he prepared to fire a jutsu. Water style wa. IG stopped mid-sentence and felt his entire body suddenly go numb as a rush of pain that he had never felt before engulfed his stomach. He vaguely heard Sakura scream bloody murder, and his gaze flickered momentarily towards Sasuke, whose face morphed into one of horror. His gaze slowly went down to his stomach and coughed out a glob of blood that landed on the tree branch. Going straight through his stomach was a sword with a gold handle that was being wielded by the lengthy tongue of his opponent. The girl showed no interest in him, looking back only at Sasuke, as if further mocking just how insignificant she found him. The horrid sound of the blade coming out of his stomach made his hands reach for the wound before he fell to his knees as he felt his body shut down from shock. He fell to the side and ended up falling off the tree they were standing on. All Iji could hear as his vision began to blur and darken was Sakura screaming his name and the dark eerie chuckle coming from the Kusa shinobi. Iji. Mito whispered as she looked off to the left, stopping at the top of a nearby tree. Shikamaru and Sai both saw her suddenly stop and stopped as well a moment later. Mito wasn't sure why she stopped, but this shiver went up her spine that brought the hairs up on the back of her neck. She held her hand to her chest, her eyes going soft and looking concerned as she looked off in the distance. Her heart felt like something was gripping it tightly and was actually causing her some discomfort. She felt fine just a moment ago, but as if out of nowhere the thought of her twin suddenly popped into her mind and the pain started. Mito. What is it? Shikamaru asked, appearing beside her. Sai said nothing and just watched. I don't know. She admitted and she really didn't know. I just. Something feels wrong. I can't explain it. I think something happened to Iji. Naruto's entire body froze mid-stride as he made his way towards the Hokage Tower. He was on his way to visit his father, who at this time was likely still having talks with Kuritsuchi and was taking over a bento box his mother had prepared for him. The day had gone pretty normal and he had gotten some training done in the morning after a rather stressful night's sleep. The whole thing with Hiruzen having kept him up for a few hours before managing to eventually get some sleep. He knew his brother and sister were somewhere in the forest of death at this moment of time and had been making sporadic checks up on them with his sensory skills to check they were okay. Everything so far felt fine and he guessed they were doing okay. At least, that was until just a moment ago. IG. His chakra just dropped hard. It's gone so low. Dangerously low. He thought. Someone's chakra only goes that way when. IG. He shouted, scaring the people around him. He threw the bento box on the ground and took off at full speed towards the forest of death. IG. 
Sakura screamed and went to jump after him, however, she, Sasuke and the Kusa Shinobi were all surprised when Iji's limp body suddenly vanished from midair, leaving no trace of where it had gone. Where did the body go? The Kusa Shinobi thought before a rare feeling went up her spine. A chill. Where did that come? She stopped and slowly turned her head when a powerful chakra signature suddenly appeared just a few meters from her. She slowly turned her head and for the first time today she let her nerves get tested as a pair of fully matured Sharingan spun dangerously at her. Sasuke turned his head to his right and for the first time in a very long time, Sasuke let out a choked sob at who stood next to him. Even Sakura who quickly jumped over to them was letting a few tears leak out as hope finally showed itself to them. Itachi Uchiha, dressed in his anbu gear and mask resting on top of his head, stood next to his younger brother with an unconscious and wounded Iji Namikaze, gently held in his arms. The boy was breathing, but it was shallow, and the blood was still leaking out of the wound. He looked down and felt pain grip his heart as he looked at the wounded little brother of his best friend. I should have got here sooner. He was able to give me the slip, and my mistake has had consequences. Sasuke, Itachi spoke, getting Sasuke's attention. Go with the clone towards the tower. The clones will heal Iji as much as he can to keep him alive before medics can see to him. I want you and Sakura to run as fast as you can to the tower. Do not stop for anyone or anything. Once you are at the tower tell the nearest or what happened and tell them to get the Hokage and his wife. Is that understood? Both Jenin couldn't speak, but just nodded as Itachi handed Iji over to the clone. As soon as he did, the clone bolted through the tree straight to the tower. He would be there in a minute or two at top speed while behind him Sasuke and Sakura quickly followed, briefly looking behind back at Itachi for a moment before looking back straight ahead. Knowing they were now out of harm's way, or at least away from this shinobi that stood in front of him, Itachi's hand that was soaked in Iji's blood went to his side and quickly turned into a fist that lightly shook. Itachi wasn't someone who liked his emotions getting the better of him, but now was one of those moments where despite his calm appearance and stoic face, he felt his blood boil and his anger pushing against will. Arachimaru, he whispered as looked right into the golden eye of who was truly lying behind that skin. My, my so you know who I am? Kusa Shinobi asked. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised by the genius of the Ichiha clan. Perhaps now I can finally get out of this skin. Bringing his hand up the shinobi ripped away the other side of the tanned skin until what was left was the face of a shinobi that the entire world was fully aware of. He threw off the headband and ran a hand through his long black hair before grinning towards Itachi. It was so stuffy behind that skin. You made a mistake coming here. Itachi told him, but all he got was a chuckle from the pale shinobi. My only mistake was not finishing the blonde brat quicker. Perhaps I should have aimed for the throat or the heart. Either way, it does not matter. Well I would have preferred Sasuke since he's so young I guess you will have to do it. Though this might take a little longer than I planned, given your reputation. Arachimaru's gaze fixed itself on Itachi as he looked hungrily towards the red eyes that bore down on him. His tongue licked his lips and yet Itachi showed no signs of being intimidated admitting that you came here for Sasuke and gloated that you hurt a child I have known since he was a baby. Was the biggest mistake you could have made. Was all Itachi whispered before Rachimaru flew through the air with a sword that had wounded Aichi sticking out of his mouth. It all happened in a matter of seconds, and yet it was all that it took for the tables to be turned. One second Rachimaru had all the confidence in the world as he felt the prize that he had wanted for so long was finally in his grasp. The next however that confidence was shattered as the shape of a black pinwheel suddenly engulfed him. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.